Well, what impeccable timing. Just in time for spook... Oh, thank you, computer. Oh, they're already trying to get me. I know what you're up to, CIA. I can see you glowing in the dark. You're not going to stop me. Just in time for Spooktober. For spooky, scary skeleton day. We have a little bit of an info drop from the FBI. Now, I was going to do a stream talking about just other things. There's a lot of shit going on. Uh, but this kind of dropped right into my lap, and I'd be remiss if we didn't cover it. I've got one hell of a story for you today. We're going to be taking a look at a FBI report of declassified information that was released. 300 pages! Pertaining to a certain white slavery child abduction cult. Yes, that's really how they describe them. A white slavery child sex abduction cult called the Finders. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We've got, we've got so much to go over, and I want to try to ease us into it a little bit. Now, like I said, there were, there were other things I wanted to cover. You know, Destiny, having this little R-word argument with all the communists over on Twitch. Have to do that another time. BlizzCon, just a, a little reminder, I guess, for everybody. Hey, don't forget, <laughs> the Winnie the Pooh celebration's going on starting October 31st till November 2nd. So if you want to show your appreciation for a lovable childhood character, Winnie the Pooh, feel free to swing on by BlizzCon so you can be disappointed in real time as they explain to you that Diablo is now a third-person shooter <laughs> and Overwatch is a mobile game. Oh, that sounds fun. I want to celebrate that. Nothing gets my dick harder than watching video games be fucking murdered in front of me, strangled to death, and I can't do anything about it. Oh, so sad. So sad. That's why you need to go there as uh, Winnie the Pooh. Cheer everybody up. Put on a nice little show for the people. Where do I even start with this? You know, let's let's work our way backwards. I think, you know, that's probably the best approach. Let's work our way backwards. I'm sure you recognize this handsome individual. That's Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein, if you've forgotten who that was, was a man that was at the center of a sex scandal who did a backward somersault off a three-foot bunk and somehow broke his neck. I don't know. I don't think anybody could even pull that off in the Olympics. They need to start a sport called Mr. Epstein's Suicide. Because that takes some athletic skill to pull off. Now, I'm not saying this is a conspiracy. That would be crazy. I'd have to put on some tinfoil. Just a typical, everyday experience in a prison. There you are, a multi-billionaire, locked in your prison cell. And the cameras mysteriously malfunction. And the guards who aren't actual guards all fall asleep at the same time and then you tie some toilet paper around your neck and you do a somersault to your death you know it happens all the time sure it seems a little suspicious to people considering you ran a giant child fucking island and were friends with people that were presidents and prime ministers and princes from around the world allegations that you were providing child prostitutes to high-powered individuals all swept under the rug when you did your amazing suicide dive off the top bunk of your fucking prison cell. Now, people watched that happen, and they were incredulous, I think would be a fair way to put it, that Mr. Epstein was killed and didn't commit suicide. But he's just a recent example of something that's been going on for a while now. So here you have Mr. Epstein, a very, very rich man connected to very, very powerful people, accused of being involved in a child sex trafficking ring with those who were in power. There's another story that came up a while ago. Nixvim, Nivigvigzim, I don't know how you pronounce the name of this one. It was run by a financial guru with the help of different people from Hollywood and the financial sector, different investors and bankers. He would actually brand women. And again, what a shocking surprise. We have another case of an extraordinarily rich man at the head of a massive organization full of rich and powerful people that are dealing in white slavery. That's a, that's a term, it's a weird term, but it's one you should get used to. You know, Jeffrey Epstein, I don't remember hearing any of those girls were black, so let's just say that was white slavery too. So here we have Nivixum, another cult run by a rich man, who, uh, I don't know what he did, brainwashed people, branded him with a cattle prod, he's pulling out all the stops. Doing all sorts of fun stuff. Now he's looking at some prison time, I wouldn't be surprised either if he does a backward somersault off the top of his bunk as well. It's very weird. You know, in the 80s and 90s, there was this term that was bandied about when people were talking about extraordinary things like this. The idea that there might be rich men or powerful people involved in 
child prostitution, and slavery, and all sorts of nefarious things. They called it the Satanic Panic. You're crazy. You fucking Christians, you're nuts. That's not happening. Your children aren't being diddled by degenerate fucks. There aren't rich people out there organizing cults to molest your kids. That's not real. That's a Satanic Panic. And yet here we are in the year of our Lord, 2019, and I can show you two examples of basically cults that are taking in underage girls, branding them and selling them to rich people to be used as playthings by the elite. If you were to show that evidence to somebody in the 90s, they'd be like, God damn it, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not some crazy soccer mom over here. I know my wife. I know my wife Karen's a bitch. Nobody likes talking to her at the Best Buy. All right, she's always bitching at managers. But I think we may be on to something here. So this term was loosely thrown around. Well, in the 80s and the 90s, there were a couple examples of why that term came into popularity. What do you know? We're going to be reading a FBI report related to one such thing. A group, an organization, a cult, by the name of the Finders. I know, and what a fantastic name. I don't know, what is, what is that? <laughs> the Finders. I think you're going to like all the code names involved in this. I guess maybe they're hide-and-seek champions. I mean, if you're a little kid running from your life for you know from perverts as they're trying to drag you into a van to get fucked by powerful people, you try to hide. And who's going to win hide-and-seek? The finders are. The big, bad finders are going to come and get you. Well, the FBI decides, what the fuck? Hey, you know, it's been a slow news week with the uh, Civil War brewing in the background. Hey, I know. Why don't we just dump this into the laps of the public? Here you guys go. We're going to open up the vaults and just give you 300 pages of semi-classified material regarding our investigation into this organization. And there's some there's some interesting things in there. Now I thought, how am I going to do this? Well, how are we going to look through this? It's going to be a long stream. We're going to be reading a lot. So I hope you're comfortable. Get yourself a nice, a nice drink or a coffee. I'm not sure what you're going to need to get through this, but... Uh, we'll make it. Now, I found a video. We'll watch part of it. It's a documentary kind of dealing with the finders. Pretty well put together. And I think the first five or so minutes kind of highlight how this started. So we'll watch a portion of that, and then we're going to go right into the FBI documents. And we're just going to read through them. We're going we're gonna to investigate ourselves, Just like that picture shows you. That picture right there. We need to find a clue. A blues clues or a blue body of a young boy buried in a ditch because the finders murdered him. I don't know. I don't know what our adventure is going to find. I suspect some shocking things. I'd almost wager you're going to see some things you probably wouldn't have believed are real if they weren't in a fucking FBI report in black and white. There's some uh, opinions from law enforcement, from the intelligence community that... I. Let's just say if those had gone public in the 80s and 90s during the Satanic Panic, it wouldn't have been called a Satanic Panic. It would have been called a scary as fuck reality. Oh my God, we need to protect our children. There's some fucked up shit going on. But of course, this information, for whatever reason, was held back and not really widely dispersed. And so now here we are. What is it? 30 years later? Reading about it. Because it, I guess it had to be kept under lock and key. Who knows what the exact reasoning behind that was, but buckle up, because we're going to be taking a look. Well, let me just, let me get a few things ready here. Oh, you know, actually, well, we'll do that later. So let's start with this. Let us start with the very opening of who will find what the finders hide, which is a little documentary somebody put together. But again, it's a nice opening summation of probably the most notorious case involved in this. The thing that brought it to most people's attention. Now, I want you to pay attention to the date mentioned because <laughs> you're going to be amazed when we go through the FBI documents. Just keep your ear out for it and just put it put it in your brain somewhere. Because I think you're going to be uh, widely surprised at what we come across here. So let me, let me pull this up. Oh, there we go. What a great way to start off a documentary with a picture of Mr. Epstein. Obviously something I highly agree with because he is most definitely connected to this sort of shit but let's give it a listen in our last documentary we talked about powerful billionaire and registered sex offender jeffrey epstein and showed how epstein and his co-conspirators were able to escape punishment for their role in abusing over 40 young girls 
We noted that Epstein and people like him do not act alone in their efforts to feed their depraved desires. In Epstein's case, he had an inner circle of people who helped him acquire young girls. Which is very much true. Mr. Epstein did have quite a few associates and people who worked directly under him that helped to supply him with a steady stream of young women. A steady stream of young women, which he flew around the country to other people. And he did very much get away with it. I mean, he went to prison once and got a slap on the wrist, home arrest. Could you ask yourself, how many sexual predators that prey on children get, get six months of wearing an ankle bracelet at their home and then are let free to go? That's what happened initially to Mr. Epstein. And then people got so offended by the outcome of the first investigation, they brought his ass back into court. And it looked like some real shit was going down, and what do you know? Suddenly, Mr. Epstein has a barbell fall on his head. In other cases, there exist networks of individuals helping to pressure or even kidnap young children and force them into sexual bondage. This time, we are going to explore the story of a cult that was suspected of international human trafficking in 1987. The Finders Cult was a young group of men, women, and children who claimed to be nothing more than former hippies living an alternative lifestyle and practicing alternative parenting. All right, two quick things, because I, I want to give some commentary as we go through the opening five minutes or so of this. All right, 1987, that's a date, chat, that I want you to keep in your mind. 1987 is when this uh, cult came into prominence. Just remember that date. It's going to be important when we go through the FBI documentation. But also, listen to how they're described. And this is described in the Tallahassee police reports, the Metro PD police reports, the FBI reports, as a group of alternative individuals, intellectuals, living together in a different kind of uh, co-op, uh, co uh, hippie kind of lifestyle. Oh my God, they're just so alternative. Fuck the government, man. That's how they were kind of... Uh, described. You know what else was described similar to that? This guy's cult, the Vixen. They referred to him as a guru, a leader, an enlightened individual that were going to lead them into the promised land. It's really kind of spooky, actually, how many parallels are uh, there are between uh, things in the Finder's case and things in the Vixen case. Uh, we'll talk about that probably a little later on. But again, 1987 is the date you want to keep in, you know, keep in your mind. The Finders were founded by a mysterious man with military connections, nicknamed the Game Caller, who believed in turning his life and the lives of those around him into a constant game or experiment. The fucking Game Caller. Rise up. Rise up. Do you think this guy sat around in Joker makeup? I mean, this is the 1980s. Maybe he was a really big Bruce Keaton fan. <laughs> maybe, maybe he loved Mr. Nicholson. I want you to call me the Game Caller. I want you to kidnap children. Because society needs to learn a lesson. Although more than 30 years have passed since the Finders made their way to the front page of newspapers all over the world, questions still remain. Did the Game Caller's games involve trafficking of children? What exactly were the Finders finding? Why did this story make mainstream headlines and then disappear in less than a week? Was the story part of the moral panic of the night? You notice something else too, not just a similarity between how the uh, the finders are described in parallel to Navixum cult or whatever the however you want to pronounce it. That company, that corporation, the corporate cult that was run by, I'm just going to call him Mr. Reindeer. I can't remember exactly how to pronounce his name. It's good enough. But did you hear that? It became mainstream media, got a ton of attention, and then just sort of disappeared. Remind you of anybody? of you? Can you think of any modern examples of a massive child sex cult that got exposed and then, what do you know? Everybody suddenly forgot. Oh, shit, a week's passed? What was that? Epstein got killed in this fucking jail cell so people don't know that princes and presidents and prime ministers fuck toddlers? Oh, what are you talking about? Hey, haven't you seen that Greta girl? She told me I need to eat bugs. Get that off my paper's main page. 1980s or something more? We will answer these questions, and most importantly, we ask, Who will find what the finders hide? As we examine the story of the Finder's Cult, I would like to make all of our viewers aware that everything in this film is documented and can be confirmed by looking at our transcript and sources. This story deals with accusations of satanic activity, child trafficking, and intelligence operations. We take these claims seriously and went to great lengths to confirm the information we are about to present to you. On a chilly February morning in 1987, an anonymous caller tells the Tallahassee Police Department that two well-dressed men are at a local park with six kids and a blue van. The children are described as looking disheveled with potential signs of abuse. 
Tallahassee police arrive and question Douglas E. Ammerman and Michael Houlihan. The two men say they are taking the kids to a school for brilliant children in Mexico. You know, that's where all the brilliant children go. Hey, I know it's three in the morning and I've got these six kids wearing potato sacks with their teeth falling out. But we're taking them on a magical fucking adventure to the smart kid school in Mexico. (laughs) No, officer, I swear to God. I swear to God. What are those belt marks on them? Well, that's just how they learn to be so smart. Hey, kids, tell them, show them your arithmetic. Oh, they're so smart. Officer, I swear we're going to the genius school in Mexico. The men also say the children are being weaned from their mothers. Authorities eventually take the men and children into custody. A search of the van turns up 20 floppy computer disks, a TSR-80 computer, and a, quote, device that police say could be used to hook into a computer in another location by a telephone, end quote. Immediately, it becomes clear this case is not like any other. Following the arrest, the Associated Press reports that police had moved the six children from a shelter after receiving a half dozen phone calls threatening the kids. You know, that's that's a typical thing. I think that was a school in Mexico. You know, those educators in Tijuana take the uh, their job very seriously. And when they heard, hey, we've got some high IQ students that have been detained by the police. I know the best way to get them out. Let's call the police station and tell the cops we're going to murder the children. Just nothing about this initial story makes any fucking sense. Not a lick of it makes any sense. This is people's first introduction to the finders, by the way. 1987 in Tallahassee. Police come across two men leading a group of children to a Mexican school for the gifted. They're all disheveled. They're all fucked up. The men tell them they're bringing them to the school for the gifted, and they're weaning them off their mothers. These are really young kids, by the way, like eight and nine. We're weaning them off their mothers and bringing them to the educational paradise known as fucking Mexico. And then when the cops are investigating it, they get a phone call, phone calls, multiple plural, saying they're, the kids are going to be fucking murdered. And so they have to put them in uh, protective custody with armed guards. Now that's a wild story on its own. I mean, just that on its own is fucking crazy. But it's going to get real bizarre. The children were moved to an undisclosed location where they were being protected by armed guards. When interviewed by the police, the kids say the men are their teachers, that they have been living in a house with other children and adults. The police report also notes the kids are eating a raw food diet, covered in bug bites, and only fed as a reward for good behavior. The children are unaware of modern technology, including phones, televisions, hot water, staplers, typewriters, and electricity. What sort of primitive fucking despair-filled dungeon lifestyle are you living in? Where somebody shows you a stapler... And you're like, oh my god, is that magic? I've never seen a stapler before. They don't let me see staplers where I live. And I'm only fed when I behave. I just put yourself in the position of these poor fucking cops that have six children telling them the craziest shit they've ever heard. Two strange men are their teachers. They're fed when they behave. They're going to Mexico to the smart kid, or smart kid school. They've never seen a stapler. And people are calling up saying, we're going to murder them. The oldest child, Mary, says they receive instructions from a man they call a game caller or a game leader, the founder of the fine. Okay, do you see these kids? This is the age we're talking about. Look how fucking young they are. It's back in the day when the press didn't give a shit. Oh, do we do we have sex victims? Are these kids being abused? Give me their picture. I want to put it on the front page. Finders, also known as Marion Petty. By Thursday, February 5th, Tallahassee police confirm the children and men are a part of a group known as the Finders. U.S. District Court records in Washington indicate a confidential police source previously told authorities... I, I, can I just... I, I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but can you read this, sec, this second paragraph here? I, what kind of journalist are you, Larry King, from the Times Staff Writers Association? You're talking about a story about children that are potentially abused, stolen trafficked and are being threatened with death and you introduce them as the six ragamuffin tykes <laughs> oh oh look at those whippersnappers don't oh those kids they're a heck of a kid they don't even know what a stapler is back in my day the finders were a cult 
that conducted brainwashing techniques at a warehouse and apartment in Washington, D.C. This source tells of being recruited by the finders with promises of, quote, financial reward and sexual gratification, end quote, and of being invited by one member to explore Satanism with them. At this point, officials with the U.S. Customs Service Agency joined the investigation due to suspicion that the potential crimes may have crossed state or national borders. The U.S. Attorney's Office and the Federal Bureau of Investigations are also said to be investigating the case. After learning the children are based in the D.C. area, the Tallahassee Police Department contacts D.C. Metropolitan Police to establish the identities of the children. Tallahassee Police learn that D.C. Police are already aware of the finders. On Friday, February 6th, Virginia State Police raid a 90-acre farm owned by Marion Petty in rural Madison County, Virginia. Neighbors of the farm say children were often brought to the farm in vans, usually crying. <laughs> you know, school for the gifted! Oh, so you're a neighbor of Marion Petty, a.k.a. the game changer of the Finders cult? Can you tell us anything about the kids? Well, usually at about midnight, a van pulls up full of children screaming and bleeding. And they're dragged in there by the Game Finder. Nothing truly out of the ordinary. I also like how, remember, they were found in Tallahassee, Florida, but they were going to Mexico. Who the fuck goes through Florida to get to Mexico from Washington, D.C.? I want you to just pull up Google Maps, chat, and just try to plot a route right now from Washington, D.C. to fucking Mexico. And what, what, what reason would you have to go to Florida to make it to Mexico? An FBI report states that, quote, evidence of a satanic cult ritual was discovered, end quote. The same report notes that all reports regarding finders are to be classified secret. Meanwhile, D.C. Metro Police and U.S. Customs Service agents raid other finders' properties, including a duplex apartment building and a warehouse in Washington, D.C. Police reports and articles from 1987 indicate that the D.C. police removed large plastic bags filled with color slides, photographs, and photographic contact sheets from the warehouse. Some of the photos were of naked children. U.S. Customs spokesman David Hoover tells the Post, quote, We're not saying it's pornographic, but it has all the earmarks. And well, I don't want to comment too ahead of the case here. I mean, sure, there, there are a bajillion photos of naked, crying, screaming children. But we don't know if those are pornographic or not. Maybe that's how they learn to read. Remember, these are all gifted children headed to Mexico for their bright intellectual futures. End quote. A U.S. Customs Service report describes some of the photos as showing blood rituals involving children slaughtering goats while adults in white robes watch. Uh, by the way, I, I checked this. Now, this guy put together this video, and I was like, all right. I knew a bit about the finders, but he had a nice summary kind of at the beginning of what I want to show you. But I was like, is there really an article from the Associated Press from 1987 saying the children were involved in goat-killing rituals? Yes. Go ahead and enter and Google the fucking uh, title Finder's photo album shows children killing goats, and this article is real. All right, I just I want to sum up where we are right now, because it, it's still not even close to crazy yet. Six er, disheveled children, lacking in nutrition, looking all fucked up, unfamiliar with the outside world, with technology, with uh, television and radio, didn't even know what a stapler was, in the middle of the night are being led through Tallahassee, Florida. Somebody happens to see this and contacts the Tallahassee Police Department. They take the children, bring them in. Immediately upon bringing them into the police station, they start receiving death threats saying the kids are going to die. The police don't know what the fuck is going on, put armed guards on them. Now all of a sudden the uh, customs officials and the FBI are involved. They find out that this group is based in Washington. When they talk to the neighbors, they find out that van loads of children are driven onto the property crying children in the middle of the night in vans are driven onto their property when they raid and find uh, materials possess, you know, possessed by these people they find videos and films of children naked and crying and now we get reports of photo albums where people are dressed in weird robes with children being asked to murder goats Remember, they tried to make people, when, you know, when this shit is going on and people are getting freaked out hearing stuff like this, they told them they're being uh, just stupid, a satanic panic. What are you guys talking about? They have photo albums with kids killing goats at the Mexican Intellectual School in Washington, D.C. with the game changer 
in a fucking white robe. I don't even know what's under that robe. Maybe he's just got his dick hanging out. Who knows? This is some weird fucking shit. We've got a little bit more to watch, and then we're going to get into the FBI report. And I want you to just compare the dates and the information they have to what's being publicly available through the news reports and the uh, police reports. It also describes that they found instructions on how to purchase children. The importance of this report, written by U.S. Customs Service agent Raymond J. Martinez, will become clear as we move. Come on. They had, they had guides on how to purchase children. Just an alternative lifestyle group of hippies living on a commune, teaching kids how to be smart. Move on. The Customs Service then claimed to be looking into allegations of child pornography. Police spokesman Scott Hunt states that the finders may have, quote, been accustomed to selling or smuggling the children of its members out of the country, end quote. Then Captain William White of the D.C. Police Department declines to speculate on what the possibilities might be, but reports written by D.C. Police state that law enforcement believe the possibilities include kidnapping or some type of international market for children. Police investigator Cheryl Wigman says more than one of the children has been sexually abused, but she won't say exactly how many. Genghis Plato, also known as Robert Gardner Terrell, was the spokesperson for the finders and the owner of a D.C. house that police say was used by... Okay, you know who this guy looks like? What was the name of that cult? Uh, the ones that wanted to ride on the comet? Do you, do you remember the ones I'm talking about? They all killed themselves and they put a purple blanket over their heads and wore Nike shoes? And they castrated... They are all eunuchs. They castrated themselves. He thought he was a reincarnated alien? That's This guy looks exactly like him. If you took that beard away and compared his picture to the other crazy guy, they look like twins. ...by members of the group. Terrell tells reporters the group are simply, quote, rational people and not devil worshippers or child molesters. Then another spokesman for the finders named Diane Sherwood states the group are, quote, hardworking with a Protestant ethic. We don't even think we are a group, she says. We are just a network of co-operators. By Monday, February 9th, five days after the children and their two male chaperones were arrested, Washington Metro Police announced they have found no evidence of wrongdoing or satanic activity by the finders. Health officials in Florida then say they have no evidence of sexual abuse of the children. D.C. Metro Police Chief Maurice Turner Jr. states that the department has not uncovered any evidence to, quote, corroborate allegations made by an informant that the organization is a cult and that its activities involve satanic rituals, end quote. By Thursday, February 12th, Gary Shepard of the FBI's Washington Field Office says the FBI investigation has, quote, not uncovered any evidence of federal violations, end quote. But according to the New York Times, I, I you tell me, Chad, you just heard uh, this is compiled from the police reports and the news reports about what was going on. It quoted officials. They found pamphlets on how to buy children. They found pictures of naked children, kids that were underfed and beaten, kids that were uh, held back and weren't shown what the outside world was like. Children that were going to special schools in Mexico. Uh, one woman, uh, one of the officials said they looked like more than one of the kids had been sexually molested. You've got uh, death threats are being le- sent against these children at the Tallahassee Police Department. You've got all that going on. And in the span of four days, all the investigations stop. In the span of a week, every law enforcement official and every government entity involved in this says, hey, no, no, no harm, no foul. You guys can go. Nothing to see here, folks. Everybody look the other way. Does that seem to make any sense to anybody who's just watched this? Who even just knows a little bit about this information? Does that make any fucking sense to any of you? Well, we can't find any evidence of anything. Except for the naked pictures of screaming children. <laughs> we have no evidence! except this how-to manual on how to buy children illegally. We've got no evidence except the medical exam that shows they've been molested. Let them go. This is America. (laughs) Let those people go. They're not a cult. They're just a a commune of co-operators. They don't even think they're a group. You thought the Epstein stuff was bad. Could you imagine if that kind of evidence? Could you imagine if Jeffrey Epstein sitting in his fucking jail cell, if they found how-to manuals on how to buy children and pictures of crying naked children? What do you think would have happened to Mr. Epstein? It wouldn't have been people saying, well, maybe he's guilty. Oh, no, they would have been certain he was guilty. But this group totally let go. Never explained, never touched upon or commented on 
Who the fuck is calling the Tallahassee Police Department and threatening to kill the children? Does does nobody find that a little fucking bizarre? Why would why would they threaten to kill the kids but not the two men holding the children? Now the FBI and the Metro PD and Customs and Tallahassee apparently they they tracked down the mothers and fathers on this commune and the parents said no 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 it's totally okay. We gave those men permission to take our children on a a fucking uh, international uh, adventure to Mexican education. Everything about this is just rotten as shit. But I thought this was good. It's a good introduction. It gives you an idea of the prominent case that really brought it to people's attention. 1987. In Tallahassee, Florida. Now we're going to look at the FBI report. I hope you're ready. It's a lot to go through. But I promise you, there's some shit in this fucking FBI report that you're just, I don't know, I'm excited to show you. Because you wouldn't believe me if I just told you. If I didn't show it to you and talk about it, you would not believe me. If I told you what is connected to this group of people and how far back in time it goes. Now I had somebody else contact me before I did this stream. Uh, somebody that's uh, researching to write a book on this. Apparently they have more information I'll probably do a follow-up stream. I'll have them on as guests to talk about it. But today, for this stream, I want to focus on that FBI report. I want to see what's in here. What were government officials talking about while they were looking into this? What's going on? You're going to see a lot of stuff. You're going to see political pressure to make it go away. You're going to see different government agencies involved in it. You're going to see conflicting reports from different police departments about what they think is happening and evidence that was held back. And you're going to see something even fucking crazier than that. You're going to see something that's not supposed to be related to the finders. But in the middle of the report, it's there. And when you see what it is, you're going to... I don't even... I I don't want to speculate too hard on what's going on. But let's just say it's fucked up. The fact that they decided this should be included is really fucking bizarre. Now let me... uh, I'm going to try to catch up on some of these super chats here. And then we're going to jump into the FBI report. Because I'm, I'm going to be reading a lot of it. I can't tell you how long this uh, stream's going to go. It's probably going to go for a while. So let me try to crank a few of these out. We'll do like five minutes of them. And then we're going to jump into the FBI stuff. Mario Carter 13. Can't uh, can't be too hard to find. They glow in the dark. Very true. Very true. Uh, I will say this right off the, the top here. In fact, I, I have something prepared for it. There we are. There's a lot of glowing in the dark involved with this particular story. And that's I'm not even joking. It's not even a meme. You're going to see what I mean. Literal involvement by Glow in the Dark. From Camille Taggart, are you saying that this was an actual Glow in the Dark nibba? Uh, well, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to spoil what we're going to find. But yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. In fact, that's what the Metro PD said. You'll you'll find out when we reach, I think it's page 67. From Camara, hey Jim, whatever happened to fake Ross? Did he re himself into another dimension or what? I don't know what's happened to him. I know that he... Uh, He was having a tough time after telling people he wanted to molest and kill children. I don't know what he's doing. From uh, Niger, 1488, what do you think of the shit show with Funimation localizing anime they obtain with the whole feminism, faggotry, prison, dragon, you know, and some others? I I have no idea. I've been reading manga. I gave up on anime. The memes of destruction. A slip of the lip can sink a ship. Medicare's Lunicorn Archive. Despite being only 13% of the population, run, clown! You need to run. From Moon Man, Jeff Stream when he is legit screwing special girls. From Bubblegum Gun, China fascism is better than Hong Kong liberal juocracy. From Ishak Zamani, Jim, any opinions on Wayne Lambright? The future is bright. It's Lambright. From Veggie Bat, I have the best way to bring A-Chan back. We just need Trump to tweet Gamergate 2.0. Sargon says so, guys. From KTTK, uh, Ni Hao, Wo Ai Zong Kuo. Wu Ah Zi Jingping. I probably butchered that, but there you go. From Hans Handsome, let the darkness grow like Jim's love for Asian VJJ. Be Valento 591, Taiwan number one. Backslide Dan, we gotta find, find, find the N word pass. Alu Katbar is not true. From Reluctant Realist, England to win the Rugby World Cup. Moderator Marcy Cog has been involved with a meth thought. And got cucked when she cheated on him with five guys on the internet. She also cheated on him with her ex-husband and her new boyfriend. What would your advice be for him to cope? Probably don't fuck meth heads. 
then you don't have to worry about that situation. From Josh Sketch Show. Good afternoon, Jim. What a perfect time to fire up a stream while I go for a jog. Since you admitted to being a filthy weeaboo in the E3 streams, what's your opinion on Haruhi or Haruhi Suzumiya? I don't even know who that is. That's your answer. I can't even pronounce the name, so I guess I shouldn't have an opinion on it. From Dustin D. Hayes, Tiananmen Square, also Taiwan number one. Read five more of these, and we'll get to the FBI. From Rude Dude, CIA child injured anally. Mike Testa, hey Jim, did you hear the photon episodes were taken down one by one uh, by the one who uploaded them? Quickly private them before they are lost to time. Nine are left. I'm not sure why they would be taken down. They're fucking great. From Gojira, play Outer Worlds, Goyim, it's good stuff. From Will's son, hey Jim, just wanted to give you a shout out to, or just wanted to give a shout out to my sister Tara. She ran the Dublin Marathon today. Well, well done, Tara. And uh, we'll finish it with these two here. The Great Con, what can I do to make my pee pee bigger? Uh, well, think of a pretty girl would be the start. And finally, from Joseph Jimenez. All right, guys, I'm going to take a break now for about five minutes. I've been talking for a while, so go get yourself a drink. Use the bathroom, whatever, and we'll be back shortly. Not nah, Probably not for another half an hour. Then I'll take a, a small break and let everybody go to the bathroom. But right now, right now we're going into the big shit. We're jumping head first into the CIA glow-in-the-dark operations. The FBI report released on the finders two days ago from the FBI vault. Uh, not all of it. It's going to be readable. Some of it's in really shitty handwriting. But we're just going to go through bit by bit, and we're going to try to piece it together. So again, what do we know going into this? Six kids on a midnight excursion with two unidentified men to go to a special school in Mexico. They look all fucked up. They don't know anything about the outside world. Everybody gets involved to, uh, to try to figure out what's going on. Death threats are called in against a kid. Neighbors are saying that the people on these communes are having van loads of children show up screaming. There are guides on how to buy children. There are multiple binders worth bags full of pictures of naked children. And the government, for whatever reason, decides, hey, you know what? Let them go. <laughs> Let them go. So that's where we're starting. And remember, 1987. That's the important date. So let's take a look at the FBI. Here we are. Uh, well, you know, I'll start at the very beginning. Not that it really matters. Federal Bureau of Investigation. It shows you all the information, the data sheets, how many pages there are. Lots of fucking pages with this. 424. I've only got access to 324. I'm wondering if that's because that we're talking about duplicates. I don't know. But let's uh, let's just go through and see what we can find. We're going to read them as we go through, and we'll see what we can find out. I like to, when they're talking to each other, this is something you're going to see a lot uh, when this information is filed, whether it's from Metro PD or if it's from Tallahassee or the FBI. They always use this subject. Finders Group, White Slave Traffic Act, uh, activity, sexual exploitation of children, obstruction of justice. So that's how they're describing this when they're investigating it as a white slave traffic cult that sexually exploits children. <clears throat> okay, let's begin. The Department of Justice has requested the FBI conduct a prim or preliminary inquiry into the allegations made by Redacted concerning child sexual abuse by a group known as the Finders, and what role, if any, was played by the United States intelligence community. Oh, why would the U.S. intelligence community be involved with a group of people trafficking in child sex slaves? It's a question you should keep in the back of your minds. It'll become apparent quickly. By separate communication, WMFO will be provided available documentation received to date from the Department of Justice concerning so-and-so's allegations. United States Customs Services, uh, USCS Headquarters, Washington, D.C., also possess documentations concerning finders, which is yet to be obtained by our organization. The following information is being provided as background in the matter for WMFO and Miami. And then here we go. In 1987, redacted for some reason, were convicted of sexually abusing children. One of the children who attended the school during the time of the alleged sexual abuse was doing business as, <laughs> this is all redacted, after the imposition of prison sentences on both of these, became convinced that numerous other children had been abused and that the abuse was part of a large, well-organized scheme. Subsequently, has attempted to uh, interest uh, congressional members and the USCS in his efforts to enhance efforts in the area of child sexual abuse and investigating claims of organized sexual abuse. 
During October of 1993, Redacted met with United States Congressman Rose from Florida to discuss allegations concerning a group known as the Finders. Both Congressman Rose and subsequently uh, and Redacted subsequently provided information concerning these allegations. So already we've got something fucking weird going on here, aside from the numerous redacted information. So the FBI is investigating or reinvestigating this because a congressman from Florida has been provided information. And apparently there's testimony coming from somebody who's not identified, saying that two people that were convicted of child sexual abuse were part of a larger group, and that larger group were the finders. The same group from 1987 in Tallahassee, Florida, that they let go. So you can see, well, this is this is kind of bizarre. Misdemeanor child sexual abuse charges resulting from a complaint that six children playing in a park were unkempt and neglected. The two subjects with the children could not initially provide sufficient information as to their legal custody of the children and were uncooperative regarding their identity and the children's identity. As a result of information developed during these arrests, uh, the Tallahassee Police Department contacted the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C. and provided information concerning Redacted and their association with a group known as the Finders that were based in Washington, D.C. on February 5, 1987. The MPD executed search warrants prepared by the United States Attorney's Office in the District of Columbia on two properties owned by the Finders in Washington, D.C. Special agent uh, and then somebody else redacted participated in these searches. A joint investigation conducted by the w, or, uh, Metropolitan Police Department and WMFO led to the investigator identification and interview of the mothers of the six children, two of the fathers, and several other key members of the Finders Group. On February 18, 1987, WMFO presented the results of their investigation to Assistant United States Attorney and his office for the District of Columbia, uh, who declined prosecution for violation of Title 18, Section 1201, kidnapping, and 225, sexual exploitation of children. Uh, redacted was the case agent in this matter. Department of Justice review of documents indicated that during the execution of the search warrant by the, <clears throat> sorry, by the Metropolitan Police Department at the two finders' properties, uh, redacted claims to have observed a substantial amount of computer equipment and document or documents purportedly containing instructions for <laughs> updating children for unspecified purposes. The instructions allegedly included. The, imp the impregnation of female members of the community, purchasing children, trading, and kidnapping them. Redacted claims, and they blocked all of this out. All right, so one of the people involved in the investigation says, we found a how-to manual on how to forcibly impregnate women in the community, kidnap and trade children. And then it gets to the really good shit, it's all gone. All of it's redacted. Redacted has alleged that the finders are involved in a well-organized child abuse scheme and that Redacted, in conjunction with the State Department and the FBI's Foreign Counterintelligence Section, conspired to cover up those abuses. Uh, redacted should be contacted by a WMFO to obtain complete documentation concerning finders. Investigation by us in this matter will also include the interview of uh, both Redacted and the review of any new documentation in the possession of the State Department Passport Office and the Foreign Counterintelligence FBI Headquarters. So it already seems like we've got a little bit more information that was just initially out there in the police reports and the news reports that were publicly available. Remember, 1987, Tallahassee, group of kids with two strange men, death threats getting alleged, talking about child pornography, weird manuals being found. But now, behind the scenes, as they're talking to each other, they're mentioning <clears throat> they're mentioning different government agencies, counter counterintelligence operations, and saying that this was covered up by the Federal Bureau of Investigation because it involved their activities with foreign counterintelligence services. What the fuck is going on with the finders? Well, let's let's read on. Let's find out more information. Uh, again, white slave traffic activity, sexual exploitation of children. It is noted that a member of Congress has indicated to the Department of Justice that blank, due to the finder's investigation, investigation should be conducted promptly in this matter, and WMFO will submit results by teletype to the Violent Crimes Fugitives Unit 
Violent Crimes and Major Offenders Section, Criminal Investigation Division. And it talks about the leads that were involved, who was interviewing people, but it's all redacted information. There's nothing we can glean from these documents. Now, here's the, uh, the note from the, uh, yeah, the Acting Assistant Attorney General, John C. Keeney, from the Criminal Division, Department of Justice. And this is to somebody else. On uh, November 2nd, 1993, this matter was coordinated with the Unit Chief, Office of Professional Responsibility, who opined that absent additional facts being developed, there is no operational issue involved in this matter. So we've got another official in the government. He's opining, he's bitching, because information is not being forthcoming. I don't know, Chad. Are you starting to pick up on some things involved in this finder shit? You've got government officials in the uh, Justice Department, a different district attorneys, people in the police investigation, people in the intelligence community, who are talking back and forth to each other in their paperwork, who are saying, God, it's really weird that counterintelligence is involved. It's really weird that we're not getting the information we need because... Different organizations don't want to provide it. Why aren't they doing that? It's a good question. Why aren't government intelligence agencies providing that information? Maybe if we read on, we'll find out. <laughs> you know, maybe there's something going on here. I don't know. And then I believe this is this is just information logged on evidence they had and uh, interviews that they did. But there's nothing really that we can use here. Uh, these are receipts for for evidence. And unless we can actually go look at the evidence, it does us no good. And I can't read this for the life of me. Maybe maybe you can. I, I don't know. All FBI information contained herein is unclassified. This is unclassified as of 2014. But look at this. Look at right here. You can see it in here. Why is the CIA getting interviewed? What What in the fuck is going on? Why are this many government agencies involved in this? If it had just been the Tallahassee Police Department, which would make sense, that the crime happened in their district, in their area, and the Metro Police Department, because these people are originally from Washington, D.C., again, that makes sense. But why all of a sudden was Customs involved? Why is the FBI involved? Why is the Department of Justice involved? And what the fuck is the CIA doing around this? I wish I could de decipher this. <laughs> I can't. I guess I got too much too much Irish in me. I can't read I can't read the hidden white people language of cursive. More receipts. Trust me, it gets it gets good once we get past the numerous fucking receipts. Uh, the FBI facsimile cover sheet from the Washington Metropolitan Field Office. Again talking about some information, but here we go. National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Uh, and it gives the address not important. Uh, provided the writer with the attached memorandum. Uh, redacted related, she had received the memorandum from Customs. A review of the memorandum reflects obvious, observed, and what was in fact recovered by the Metropolitan Police Department during the execution of her warrants. Okay. Okay. This is fucking weird. So, a writer, maybe they mean a journalist. What's the date on this? February 18th. So, on February, we could track this down. In fact, here's a challenge for you. Let's say this is a journalist they're talking about, chat. So there should be a news article from sometime around February 18th of 1987 where a reporter receives information from the customs office or a customs official and these people at the Metropolitan Field Office are saying that a review of the information provided by this reporter was in fact recovered by the Metropolitan Police. So whatever they potentially wrote about is actually true. So if there's an article out there from February 18th, 1987, speculating about information they received from an anonymous source, saying that this was what was recovered, here's the Metropolitan Field Office, the Washington, D.C. Field Office, saying, yeah, no, that's actually true. That's actually what we found. On February 28th, 1987, this memorandum was brought to the attention of Redacted. The redacted handling captioned uh, matter for MPD advised the writer that a thorough review of all evidence obtained at the two aforementioned locations did not produce any items described in the examples cited above. Okay, 
They told the person that gave them this information they didn't find shit. But a paragraph above it, it says, observed and what was in fact recovered by the Metropolitan Police Department during the execution of the warrants. This police memorandum admits to lying. They're saying the information that this person was trying to corroborate was in fact obtained with the execution of the search warrant. But here, later on, they tell this person... Uh, a review of all evidence obtained at the aforementioned locations did not produce any of the items described in the example cited above. Are you getting a little spooked out, chat? Why are the police covering up information? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Yeah, no, they were totally right. We found that, but we told them we didn't find it because fuck them. <laughs> Shut it down! It's a paragraph apart from itself. And then there's a bunch of redacteds, of course. Why wouldn't there be? <clears throat> so I'm getting a, over a bit of a cold here, chat. Let me light up a cigarette. That'll help. Uh, here's another one. This memo is material provided to WMFO by FBI headquarters uh, on November 2nd, 1993, me meeting concerning captioned material held at the FBI headquarters. SSA uh, redacted indicated that this investigation was to be a preliminary inquiry, focusing primarily on the finders. SSA stated that he or another FBI headquarters representative would arrange for review of files, documents in the possession of the, F or the State Department and Intelligence Division of the FBI and advise WMFO accordingly. Uh, two unit chief from, I'm guessing, the same individual. Uh, I met with SSA blank Division 5 special staff and SSA blank Office of Liaison and International Affairs. FBI headquarters is who is the FBI li or liaison with the State Department. I'd previously provided with a packet of documents concerning the finder's preliminary inquiry. The three of them will determine the best manner of request for records checks by redacted DOS for finders. Redacted will conduct a search of Division 5 records to determine if there are any documentation concerning finders. And then here are the preliminary inquiry allegations. On November 1st, 1993, a representative from the Violent Crimes Unit uh, and Major of uh, Offenders Section, Criminal Investigation Unit, prepared a packet of documents received to date in this matter for review by WMFO. A representative from there and SSA had scheduled a meeting between representatives of Violent Crimes SSA and the WMFO case agent on November 2nd. On November, or November 1st, a representative from the Violent Criminal uh, Crimes Unit met with FBI uh, Office of Liaison and International Affairs. Uh, they discussed this pertaining to the finders. It is noted that the Department of Justice requested that an FBI agent review relevant documents firsthand from the relevant intelligence agencies as opposed to having to rely on the agency's summaries of reviews. During a meeting with the, uh, or at the Department of Justice, uh, with the Department of Justice attorney on October 28, 93, it was pointed out that a written request from the FBI or DOJ would be required before the records could be obtained from the DOS for review by the FBI. During that meeting, Mr. Beargrasser requested that the FBI prepare a communication and let him review it before it was sent to those agencies. I believe this is, again, going over the information of them meeting together to discuss the information that multiple agencies had. And boy, look at all that information. All of it redacted. Bergrasser noted in 1987, Stewart, Florida, a nothing. Here, here's more of it, uh, but this is probably more interesting. He's concerned that several congressional subcommittees may be looking at the finders matter and that a TV documentary 48 hours plans to air a segment on it. So if you're wondering... Why in October and November of 93 were these people suddenly so interested in looking into this again? It's because Congressman Rose from Florida and television networks like producers of 48 Hours had been receiving information and they were going to do a fucking special on it. I don't think they were meeting because they wanted to investigate who the finders were or what was going on with this particular group of people. I think they were meeting because they wanted to cover their asses. I think they were scared that information might be leaked out and they didn't know how to handle it. Uh, it going into more file interviews, talks about the uh, interview with the mother of the children, talks about the results of talking to the district attorney, 
and talks about turning over information to the Department of Justice, as discussed at the meeting earlier. It's surreal, but it gets weirder. An, in er, an indices check by the Strategic Information and Operations Center identified four FBI HQ files. Uh, I don't know if these are present in this because they're not they're not titled this, uh, but these are the four files as having references to finders and three FBI files. Uh, again, can't really corroborate this containing references to redacted. They were references to redacted. These files have been obtained and will be reviewed by the Violent Crimes Unit. Identified 16 articles in the LexisNexis database concerning the finders. These articles indicate that on uh, February 4th, 1987, the Tallahassee Police Department, Tallahassee, Florida, conducted a traffic stop on a van containing two men and six small children. The two men were arrested and were each charged with one count of child abuse. And then it goes, it just follows the information we already know on what was kind of going on. I'm trying to, we're, okay, we're getting close to the really fun shot here. Let me just, <laughs> uh, it talks about the joint investigation between Tallahassee and Metro PD. Uh, that's something we've already covered. Talks about some of the information that was included in that investigation. I think it's page 46 or 47. Might be, okay. Okay. So we're going to get into some real shit now. <laughs> we're going to get into some really weird shit. And just a minute. Uh, this is going over the U.S. Customs Department and their investigations into child pornography. But what comes up next uh, is a doozy. Remember, this FBI uh, report is concerning the finders. That's just a group from 1987, right? That's one traffic stop in Tallahassee, Florida. Now, all of a sudden, the Congress is getting involved. The press want to report on it in the 90s. Suddenly, they want to review their information again. So part of the information they've got revolves around, yeah, I'm going to keep it a surprise. You know what? I'm going to keep that a surprise. We're going to take a quick break, and then I, I'm going to drop something on you. <laughs> I'm going to drop something on you I don't think you expect. So let me let me just get this set up here. Okay. I'll put on a little, a little mood music for everybody. Let them digest what they've read, what we've been going over, before we get into the really fucked up shit. Because we're about to go down a rabbit hole of insanity. Uh, what, what should I? Uh, let's see here. What what should I put on? Some nice, relaxing jazz music. A fall jazz music. That sounds good. Ah, some nice, nice, relaxing jazz music to deal with the degeneracy of the finders. So, you know, we should probably do a small recap for anybody just picking back up or is coming in at the moment. A group of people hustling children around the country, involved in some very shady shit. Multiple go government organizations all investigate this particular group and decide, hey, you know what, there's nothing here, let them go. And yet, in the information provided in the police reports and behind the scenes, suddenly you've got the FBI, the CIA, customs officials, people in Congress... People at the Department of Justice, everybody's talking to each other behind the scenes about this. You've got one police report from the Metro PD telling, basically admitting that they lied to people about information that somebody was bringing forward saying, hey, is this real? I received this information from a customs official. They told them, no, that's not real. And then a paragraph later in that same report said, oh, no, we totally did find the shit they were talking about when we executed our search warrant. It's a lot of very bizarre things going on with this seemingly random occurrence of six children with two adult males in the middle of the night being whisked off to Mexico to learn to be super smart. I didn't know that's where Mensa hangs out. I guess Mensa in, is in Mexico. Or maybe it's Nambla. <laughs> it's one of those two. One of those two is going on down there. Uh, but we will continue on with the FBI report. Let me read some of these super chats to get caught up a little bit. Uh, any that I don't get to, I will, of course, read at the end of the stream. I don't want to interrupt too much, but I will read some here. Oh, I got one via Streamlabs from Our Lady Camilla. So it truly was a glow-in-the-dark niggers. <laughs> well, uh, we're getting to that, Lady Camilla. From Jason Edward, 30 years later, a YouTube channel exposes the truth more prof more proficiently than the mainstream media. From Alu Catbar Jim, what is your favorite metal band? my favorite metal band 
I, you know, I don't actually know. I'd have to give it a think. I'd have to think on it a little bit. Who do I like the most? I honestly don't know. Give me some time. I'll, I'll come back to it. From Household Dog, we need to talk to this redacted guy. He holds the keys to everything. Uh, very true. Mr. Redacted, where were you on the night of February 18th, 1987? From JD 1989, William Casey, CIA director, and William Sessions, FBI director, are the ones who are responsible for the cover-up of the finders. From A. Clifton, February 18th, 1987, Guatemala newspaper called Prensa Libre published an article that talked about child trafficking and organ harvesting, both to and from the U.S. Cannot confirm it's the same article. All right, so we already have somebody in chat that might have tracked down what we're talking about. Could you imagine if that's what it is? <laughs> Holy shit! Is that the article the Metro PD was referring to when they said a reporter or writer had come to us with information and the article they wrote about was child trafficking and organ harvesting to and from the U.S.? The same date? Come on. That's way too much of a coincidence. From Jason of the Great Awakening. Bigger than we imagine. CPS trafficking clowns, Mexican PRI media politicians. All of them. Find the Keystone Skybridge, Arizona. From Mike Tessa, Jim, I'm scared for your show. I'm scared for you. Show Rakeda this to be safe. From The Real Asami. First time donator but long time fan. Love the vids. And keep doing what you're doing, man. From Waxigan, Jim, you fucking potato. I told you the video and timestamp last time, so you look at it and find what you got that sound clip from. From Zuko Eucherhart, do you remember the fake reporter Bush used that turned out to be a call boy? Some people thought it was a kid who spent or went missing in the 1980s. From Michael Connolly, it makes sense the FBI got involved as it goes between states, and CIA Customs got involved as it goes international to Mexico. The bad info sharing is common because all governments hate each other. Still sucks, but... Well, Michael Connolly, I've got a surprise for you in about 20 pages. Let's just say there's a reason the CIA is involved, and it has jack shit to do with Mexico. <laughs> just wait for it. From Sean uh, Corshell Buns, it'll be my father Halloween, T or T, you two, or you're cucked. Or trick or treat, you're cucked. Uh, read a couple more here and we'll jump back into it. Farmaster Flex, something doesn't smell right, but who knows? From Journal 0401, sounds like we need to start building gu uh, guillotines. And finally, from Beck's Fire, hmm, there's something, uh, <laughs> there's something definitely fishy about this. Okay, uh, again, I'll get, I'll, I'll read through them all. I'm just trying to I hit the most recent ones before we jump back in. All right, where do we leave off here? I think that's where we left off. Let us get back into it. All right, now remember, this is about the finders. This entire fucking document, all of this shit is about the finders. And then we talk about some crime statistics from U.S. Customs. And then in the middle of this, on page 48, there's a map. Well, what, what is this map of? Why do I see a map of uh, this? This obviously looks like something I can make out the word tunnel here. This entire building, it looks like it's been mapped out. There's a tunnel? What, what, the, what would this be about? <clears throat> The tunnels found at McMartin Preschool, a preliminary report. A formal report will be released when forensic tests are concluded. A 45-foot tunnel, 9-foot wide, subterranean entrance found under the west wall of the dog room, classroom 4. Avocado tree roots on both sides of the entrance. Disney bag, copyright 1982, found 4.5 feet below the classroom floor, from 3 to 6 feet in from the entrance and under the foundation of classroom four. Tunnel proceeded south, then east, 45 feet through classrooms four and three, north, then east, 10 feet within classroom four. Tunnels were 30 feet, or I'm sorry, tunnels were 30 inches wide to 44 to 46 inches deep, with the top of the tunnel 30 inches under the classroom floor. The footing between classroom three and four was arched where the tunnel passed beneath and was 12 inches shorter in depth at this location. Four large upright containers were found in the tunnels under the arch, obviously hand-placed. A nine-foot-wide chamber was found along the tunnel under classroom floor, or under ca or classroom four. Top of the chamber and top of sections of the tunnel had layers of plywood. Okay, <laughs> trust me, you'll see what I'm getting at here. Seven-foot tunnel extending into the triplex next door. 
Tunnels extended within the bathrooms of the office and classroom one to the front yard of the triplex next door. Front yard concealed from street by three-car garage. Children described entrance and ex- or entrancing, entering and exiting tunnel in the triplex yard exactly where the tunnel and exit were found. <clears throat> Other significant facts. A small white plastic plate with three pentagrams hand-drawn on top of light green paint was found by the archaeologist and the stratified dirt in the playground. Per historical archaeologists, pentagrams were ha- are hand-drawn by an adult and not part of the manufacturer's design. Many other artifacts found, whose analysis will be released upon completion of the test. No doorknobs were on Classroom 3's door. Only a deadbolt lock. Each classroom had an on and off light switch labeled with fire alarm. System did not connect to fire station, but was used as an alert within the school. More than 2,000 artifacts were found under the school floor, including over 100 animal bones. Okay, so in the finder's report, there's a fucking detailed sketch and information about what was found in a tunnel network under McMartin Preschool. Well, what the fuck is McMartin Preschool? Oh, that was another big fucking sex scandal from the 80s and 90s. An entire group, an entire classroom of children alleged that their teachers had sexually abused them and had them involved in satanic sex rituals. They told police and reporters that they were taken via tunnels under the school and were molested and killed animals and did all sorts of weird satanic shit. And people said, that's satanic panic. These kids have been coached into giving these answers. This never happened. And yet, in the FBI report, there's an archaeologist paper talking about it doesn't speculate that there are tunnels. It said, we went into the tunnels. In the tunnels. He's talking about being in the fucking tunnels. Finding containers in the tunnels. Finding pentagrams and shit in the tunnels. Finding hundreds of animal bones in the fucking tunnels. The tunnel exits exactly where the children said it would exit. I, well, what the fuck is going on? Why is this in the finder's report? <laughs> this was never publicly alleged to be connected with them. And yet, just in the middle, in a random fucking page, page, what is it? Oh, 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 49, page 48 and 49, fucking diagrams of the tunnel network, diagrams and explanations of what was found. Uh, you want me to link the paper? Uh, I'll put this up once more before we continue on so people don't think I'm making this up. Go to at FBI Records Vault, which is a official account, blue check mark, run by the FBI. It will give you a link to the FBI's website under their subsection Vault. You can download the Finders Report on the FBI's Vault page. It is a PDF file, and that PDF file, let me tell you how many pages it is, 324 page PDF file from the FBI. And in this fucking file, in this fucking file, on pages 48 and 40 fucking 9, they talk about McMartin Preschool and the tunnels and pentagrams and animal bones they found. But the press convinced the public that these children had been brainwashed by their parents and hysteria and that no such thing ever happened. No children were molested. None of it ever happened. It was all made up. There are no tunnels. No tunnels ever existed at McMartin Preschool. Folks, there's some fucking weird shit going on. It's weird enough that the Metro PD lied to a reporter and then admitted privately that the information they lied about actually existed. Now, I don't know if it's connected to that super chat. Somebody tracked down an article about this from that exact date that they're referencing, talking about human trafficking of children and organ harvesting. I don't know what the fuck is going on. All I know is multiple intelligence agencies and police departments are all involved in this, not involved as in they're taking part in it, but involved as in they're looking at it. They're involved in talking behind the scenes to one another about it and buried in the middle of it is a fucking thing about McMartin preschool tunnels. What the fuck? Uh, 
we've got a letter here from U.S. Customs. Uh, dear Mr. and Mrs., thank you for your letter dated September 13th, 1991, expressing your concerns regarding the U.S. Customs Service Child Pornography Program. I think this is just going over the statistics we actually looked at on this page. Did they fuck up? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did the, did the FBI fuck up? Did they do a boo-boo? Is this, is this an oopsie by the FBI? Follow my logic on this, chat. In this, okay, the FBI put up information about the finders. Page 47 has the U.S. Customs Crime Statistics, right? And then on page uh, 50, it's a letter talking about the statistics. But for some reason, inserted between those two things are diagrams of tunnels under McMartin Preschool and an explanation of the pentagrams and animal bones they found under there. It's almost like somebody accidentally put this in here. And they didn't fucking mean to. It would make sense to have the U.S. Customs crime statistics followed immediately by a letter from U.S. Customs talking about those crime statistics. And instead, in between those two items, is a detailed archaeological map of the tunnels under McMartin fucking preschool and a discussion of shit they found in the tunnels. Again, read this information. It's not speculated that it was in there. They said it was hand-placed in there. I think the FBI might have done an oopsie. <laughs> I think somebody fucked up on the file system here. Oh, you, lo you win some, you lose some. Oopsie doopsie. Uh, here's another. Finders chronology. Contact of U.S. Customs by Tallahassee PD regarding discovery of unidentified children and an adult male guardians in City Park. Requested contact with Washington MPD for er, assistance and locating possible address and relatives of children. Address located with assistance of MPD Intelligence Division. Second address identified. One residence, one warehouse. Are you ready for this? Buckle up, chat. Just read. I, I, I'm going to read this a few times. This, again, is buried. What page is this? Page 52. Search warrants obtained by Metropolitan Police Department Intelligence. The warehouse site of previous MPD Intel inquiry involving classified maps of underground tunnel sewer system in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> okay. The finders. A group of them got arrested in Florida. They found out that they, had, they were headquartered in Washington, D.C. Neighbors reported to police that van loads of children showed up crying in the middle of the night. A reporter, potentially the same story, contacted them with information from U.S. Customs and wrote an article about child sex exploitation and organ harvesting that the MPD told was not true when in fact it looks like it was true. Now here's the MPD talking about executing a search warrant on the warehouse site and finding classified maps of underground tunnels and sewers in Washington, D.C. Why would a child sex cult have classified maps of an underground tunnel network under Washington, D.C., where they're based? Oh, oh, you guys, Pizzagate. Oh, you Pizzagate's full of shit. Well, apparently in the finder's chronology within the FBI report... They thought it was good enough to make sure people were aware the search warrants obtained by MPD involved classified maps of underground tunnel networks in fucking Washington, D.C. Are you getting spooked out here yet at all? Anybody? Anybody find this kind of fucking weird? And then, like, that's not weird enough, right? Like, this shit isn't weird enough. Let's, on top of that, just throw in archaeological maps of fucking McMartin Preschool. <laughs> Let's just include that for the fun of it. Holy shit. During search warrant staging, disclosure of pending search warrant execution made by Tallahassee PD to local media. Tallahassee Media Representative contacted DC Media for more details. DC Media reps uh, pursue public information at courthouse are waiting at search warrant sites for MPD search teams. Search warrants are executed by MPD and two U.S. Customs agents, one at each site. FBI not involved until walkthrough on following day. Seizure of numerous documents made to include passports, teletexts, computer electronic media, correspondence et al. Uh, see previous description. After search warrant shut down on first day. What? After search warrant was shut down on the first day, 
News reports carried FBI press release announcing FBI is lead investigation agency. Day after one search resumed, FBI agent from Washington field office makes walkthrough of warehouse, but does not examine any seized evidence. Additional search warrant executed on farm in rural Virginia with support by Virginia Police Department. No federal involvement. Evidence of satanic cult rituals discovered. Based on observed documents, custom agents unsuccessfully attempt to gain access to evidence for detailed analysis for use in investigating possibly Export Neutrality Act, Man Act, and child pornography violations. I, okay. Okay. All right. I, I'm trying to, I want to make sure I get the chronology right of this. They execute a search warrant on the Washington, D.C. residents. At the Washington, D.C. residence, MPD comments that there potentially are classified maps of a secret underground tunnel and sewer system in the possession of an alleged child sex cult. Within a day, the search warrant is shut down. Following it being shut down, an FBI agent decides they're going to do a walkthrough, but they don't decide to look at any evidence. They just walk through, say, it looks good to me, and leaves. At the same time, a separate police department in Virginia decide they're going to do their own investigation with no feds involved at all. And when they do their investigation, they find evidence of a satanic cult ritual. Based on this, they try to get a hold of um, other agencies to get help, and nobody will help them. This is very similar to what happened at Tallahassee, where they said they had evidence of abuse and sexual abuse, and it disappeared once the feds got involved. Here we have the same thing happen. Two search warrants, classified information, feds show up, disappear, shut down. Virginia finds evidence of Satan or satanic rituals, shut down. The moment the feds get involved, all that evidence doesn't matter. None of the agents will respond. Shut the fuck down. What the fuck is going on? Contacts at the Metropolitan Police Department Intelligence advise that all reports regarding finders are to be classified at the secret level, also advised that no information was to be turned over to the FBI uh, for investigation and that the WFO would not be advised of the redacted involvement and contact. Children discovered in Tallahassee were eventually turned over to the individuals claiming to be their parents or guardians. No further MPD, FBI, or customs involvement. As far as, is, or as, far as it is known, no details of redacted involvement ever became public. So not, not only did the intelligence community insert itself into this investigation, it basically shut their search warrants down, hid their evidence, and then told them it's classified at the secret level and they can fuck off. And then once they had done that, they took the kids that were obviously victims of abuse and turned them back over to the cult. All right, you, you, there's some shit going on here. So let's just uh, let's continue on our magical journey through uh, fucking U.S. intelligence smart land. Uh, here's uh, more teletypes. Let's see what we got. Subject finders group again. White slave traffic act. Sexual expl. I love that they had all the, all their letters are headed with that. It's like any time the FBI or the uh, Virginia police or anybody's talking about this behind the scenes and they're talking to each other via teletext, it always it always says regarding the white slave traffic ring and the exploitation of children. They know what this is. They fucking know what this is. Uh, for information of FBI HQ review uh, field office information, opened a kidnapping case on February 6, 1987 as a result of the February 4th arrest of two men in Tallahassee uh, for abuse of children. These individuals redacted. 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 And it, it's just going over what happened with Tallahassee. This is a summary of what's going on with Tallahassee. Uh, we've already we've already gone over this. I guess it's a, a duplicate or it's sent from one, another agency to another one. I, I think we're getting to some really fun shit here. Let me see. I think it's coming up. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, Finders Group, uh, Sexual Exploitation of Children. Uh, this is from, uh, this is to SAC from WMFO. Uh, attached to the memo are copies of Metropolitan Police Department investigation file reports, pertinent information obtained during writer's uh, November 4th, 93 review of the MPD case jacket on the finders group. The MPD case jacket was made available for review by Lieutenant Redacted 
MPD Intelligence Division, 300 India, it's their address, doesn't matter, uh, MP, or MPD case jacket did not contain a listing of specific items seized from the uh, February 5th and 6th searches of the Finders Group properties. In addition, there was no indication of the present status of any items seized at these searches or li- what the fuck? So they're saying, okay, what they're saying here, at least my understanding, is all the evidence seized in those initial searches doesn't exist anymore. It's not included in the reports. It vanished. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Oops, we lost some information. Sorry, guys. Uh, synopsis, he's going over the investigation, uh, talking uh, December 1986. Blank called the Intelligence Division and reported that she had information concerning a cult operating in the District of Columbia. Remember, our finder's case in Tallahassee was in 1987. This predates that. So this is a police report to the Metro regarding the finders. Uh, Redacted was advised that the detective redacted of his office handled cult investigations and was currently out of town and would not or would contact her uh, office uh, would contact her after he returned. Was contacted in late December by a detective by telephone and I, I guess mail advised she wished to be interviewed concerning this cult detective and detective of the Maryland Park Police uh, because blank stated a section of this cult was operating in Maryland. Okay. So already in 1986, they're aware of who the finders are. And even more importantly, it's not just, it's operating in the surrounding area. We got Washington, D.C., Virginia, Maryland. We know they're in Tallahassee. It seems like it's a East Coast thing. So, okay. But this person, the police are aware of this in 1986. Whoever's investigating cults at the Metro Police Department in 1986 is well aware of who the finders are. Was advised that although this group was unusual, they were committing no criminal offenses, and the police department would not uh, would only be interf- or interested if this group was involved in criminal activities. In January of '87, again contacted the detective and stated that some of the members were interested in exploring Satanism. Detective again advised that although Satanists are not criminals, detective was interested in ascertaining what activities this group was involved in, and asked redacted to call detective if additional information became available. Law enforcement information. On February 5th, 1987, Detective Redacted received a phone call from the U.S. Customs Service in Tallahassee, Florida. Customs trying to find out if the Intelligence Division had any information containing a group of subjects known as the Finders. The Customs representative stated that six children had been located in Florida along with two men and that the children were dirty, unkept, insect-bitten, underfed, and possibly sexually abused. U.S. Customs stated that they had tried to contact representatives of the Finders uh, without success. And they feared that other children were being abused at that address and were unsure if the children had been kidnapped uh, from their parents. Detective was put in contact with investigator uh, of the Tallahassee Police Department who were the lead investigators in the case. Okay. It, It just gets weirder. It just gets weirder. So this does predate Tallahassee. The police were aware that there's some weird cult activity going on in the area. You've got a lady calling in, concerned. She seems to have first-hand information. I mean, how would she know they're engaging in Satan, Satanistic activities? I, I don't know. Uh, I like this. Children talked about uh, other children in D.C. and stated they were under the control of the game caller. Uh, talks about the search warrants getting issued. There's something I really want to look at, though. Oh, oh shit. Did I, I hope I didn't lose it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Chad, are you fucking ready for this? You're going to like it. Are you ready? This is on page 67. Super Chatter, who said, oh, the CIA is involved. The CIA is involved because it it goes into Mexico. That's why the CIA is involved. Let's hear what the Metro Police Department thinks. It is this writer's belief that the Finders organization is and has been utilized by the Central Intelligence Agency as a disinformation service spreading non-essential, non-critical information to various organizations throughout the United States and overseas. This group, to the most part, is made up of undereducated, uh, I'm sorry, overeducated non-achievers who lack the inborn or inborn initiative to succeed on their own. Therefore, or therefore, they fell in line with a charismatic leader who gave them direction and self-importance. To the most part, this organization individually is harmless. However, when directed and monitored by a controlling factor, they are capable of destructive and illegal activities. As in any cult structure, the main drive is for the group and individual values and ideology is lost. Therefore, when a member is asked to perform a task that hitherto for may have been objectionable, he or she performs his mission for the good of the group. As to the abuse of the children, 
I did not think that child abuse was planned, a tactic of this group, but as in any cross-section of society, sick and demented subjects belong to cults as well. I believe that the shaping of the children is a planned experiment of this group, as is the case of the Nazis. They strove for a perfect society. <laughs> oh, God, what? All right, just to sum up, uh, Metro Police Department that were involved with two investigations into the finders in their summary report says, oh yeah, by the way, this group has been used as an asset by the Central Intelligence Agency and they were trying to brainwash children like the fucking Nazis did. <laughs> what? Can we, can we just take a minute? Let me just, let me pull this back just a second. Just a second, I just... Where is it? Where is it? There we are. Oh, CIA. Oh, my sweet, sweet glow-in-the-dark CIA. Are you telling me? Are you telling me that you created a counterintelligence ring and it accidentally it accidentally turned into a child sex cult that harvests organs? <laughs> and did you try to own the Russians so hard that you ended up creating a sex cult, Mr. Glow-in-the-dark? Is that the feeling I'm getting? Is that why the FBI and Customs and Interpol and everybody involved in this is so fucking embarrassed? Because you colossal fucking idiots created a child sex cult by mistake when you meant to train a, when you meant to train a counterintelligence agent. <laughs> you fucking idiots! Oh, oh God, that's embarrassing. Oh my God! If I worked at the CIA, is that does everybody make fun of you, glow in the darks? Like, do you hang out at like government agency, uh, government intelligence agency parties and get just shit on relentlessly? Does the FBI and NSA and DOJ do they just shit on you, idiots? <laughs> how do you accidentally? How do you accidentally create a child sex cult, CIA? How did you accidentally do that? Oh, oh, oopsie, oopsie. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there, there are tunnels under McMartin Preschool. We're hustling and uh, we're hustling and selling children for their organs and sex around the world. Our bad. We just wanted to teach the Russians a fucking lesson. This is mundane mat levels of retarded. Oh, trigger the libs, own the libs. Trigger the Russians, own the Russians, huh, CIA? <laughs> here, here, here's a better example. Uh, here's a PSA. Here's a public service announcement from normal people. Kids, there's nothing more cool than being hugged by someone you like. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. It's your body. No one has the right to touch you if you don't want them to. So what do you do? First, you say no. Then, you get out of there. Most important, you gotta tell someone you trust. Like your parents, your teacher, a police officer. You know, that would be that would be the PSA, the after school special you show your kid. That's what normal people produce. Let me show you let me show you the CIA's version of a public service announcement. This is this is what they would show your kid instead. Let's have a little reality check to make sure we all got the message. If something like this happens to you, know that it is your fault. You did wrong. And remember, being abused by a male does make you gay. Right. And telling someone about it does make you less of a man. The bottom line if you are molested, you wanted it, you did something to deserve it. That make you weak. No offense. Being molested means you're gay. Oh, oh, what special guys the CIA are. Thank you for that. Oh, all the children feel so much better, CIA. <laughs> oh, that's fucking embarrassing. Oh, that's embarrassing. That's shameful. That's shameful. Oh, you should be embarrassed. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. You know, we're only... We're 68 pages into this. <laughs> 68 pages into this 300-page document by the fucking CIA. Brilliant. Lovely. Well done. Yeah, let me... I'm just going to catch up on some super chats. I might as well make a few bucks off your fucking retardation, huh, CIA? Ha, <laughs> Mr. Glow in the Dark. From Edward Ramirez, when making an omelet, a few kids are going to get raped. So I think they put that up on the placard at the CIA headquarters. From Joni Baloney. Doesn't this line up with the satanic panic that was shot down by uh, as nothing by six hex and hammer six six six? Pizzagate is real. Feds have been doing this for years. From Sean Korshall Buns, Korsh tried to start a Def Leppard cover band as uh, and all he got was this lousy disinformation cover up and a bullet to the head. 
from Big Mike. And Wignets think religion has no value for people. Jesus is gay. From Russell T. Shackelford, watch Conspiracy of Silence Doc on Elite Pedal Rings. From ABC DEFG, Satanism isn't real, Goy. You're so square. From Donkey Show, I trust you're old enough to recall the sleep, rise, and kidnapping, or steep rise, excuse me, and kidnapping in the 1980s, a phenomenon that led to helicopter parenting in the 90s. Is there a connection? Well, maybe, maybe all those stranger danger. Uh, here's, here's, you want to, let's go deep on this. <laughs> let's talk about stranger danger for a minute. Well, let me pull this back. There we go. You know, I want to, I want that front and center. Let me just, there we go. See, oh, look at that beautiful picture. He glows. Absolutely radiant. Uh, okay. Maybe stranger danger. Maybe the strangers in stranger danger when they're like, don't get into vans for can't, maybe that's where this all comes from. I mean, remember that initial report when they're talking about the investigation into the Washington, D.C. residents, when they interviewed the neighbors, they said they'd bring van loads of children in the middle of the night screaming. Maybe that's CIA. Maybe stranger danger should be CIA danger. Remember, kids, don't accept candy from a glow in the dark. Never get a ride with a glow in the dark, kids. It's dangerous. Never trust a glow in the dark ever, 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 ever. I, you may, there might be something to that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, Truth TV, esto tipo de uh, peso. I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry, bro. Uh, hi from Portugal. It is Madeline McCain case. From Joseph Jimenez, this is Clown World Jim. How deep does this rabbit hole go? Jesus fucking Christ, this info is disturbing. My son's stay is thoroughly ruined. Thanks a lot. Vincent Pisano, listening to this glow-in-the-dark shit is making me, or my Halloween season, feel extra spooky. Thanks, Jim. Friendly Neighborhood, Sunwheel. Ted Gunderson Chronicles, let the darkness grow. Uh, high of Tap. Here's some more shekels and the Fed. Lord uh, Chirpy Dip. Did you just uncover a pedo cult live, you mad lad? Eddie Spaghetti. Possible suspect, Tarl. Sticks, X and Hammer, Warwick. Now, I'm not sure what uh, Sticks said. I guess you're, you guys are talking about Pizzagate. I can't comment on Pizzagate. All I'm commenting on right now are the FBI documents released about the Finder's Cult. And I would say, just just from my observations, it's weird. You have kids that are with strangers in the middle of the night in Tallahassee. The police department's receiving death threats for some reason. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, police department's receiving death threats for some reason. Uh, everybody investigates, stops the investigation. You have Metro Police Department uh, official documents saying that when they conducted search warrants, the FBI got in the way. Uh, you have other reports from years later saying that the evidence obtained during those searches disappeared. You've got uh, documents in there that don't make sense, like McMartin Preschool archaeological digs. You've got uh, reporters contacting police and being lied to. It's just, there's a lot of, ri there's smoke here. I'm just going to be very honest. There's a lot of smoke here. Now, I don't know which way that fire is burning. Maybe that Metro Police Department official who wrote that report's right. Maybe the CIA is just so fucking incompetent when they tried to create a counter intel ring to uh, disperse disinformation to the U.S. and foreign assets. They accidentally created a child sex cult. <laughs> I don't know. Is the, CIA, or is the CIA that stupid? Potentially. Maybe they're fucking idiots. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the FBI just felt bad for them and covered it up. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of weird shit happening with this particular thing. Uh, but uh, like I said, that's, that's what we're dealing with. As far as Pizzagate and the connection you might or might not see with this, I will say that when they executed the search warrant in Virginia, they said they were looking for maps of, or they said they either, what was it? Classified maps of underground sewer systems and tunnels. So I know Pizzagate, people look at it like it's crazy. I do too. I love laughing at it. But it makes you wonder if a child sex cult in the 80s had classified maps of tunnel networks under DC, maybe there's something there. I don't know. I would, I would again, hi, don't take my word for it. Maybe I'm misreading this. That's always a potential. Again, you can go to the at FBI Records Vault on Twitter. It'll give you a direct link to their, uh, to their page on the Vault page. And you can download this PDF yourself. It's 300 and some odd pages with all the information from the investigation and the intelligence departments and the police departments. So take a look. Don't take my word for it. I don't know. All I'm saying is there's some, there's some weird shit happening here. And we're only a fifth of the way through. <laughs> I will try to go as long as I can with this before I've got black helicopters overhead. 
from uh, Tony Hoveter. This is potentially the biggest story in the last 50 years. Thanks for doing this. It's guillotine time, my friends. Gamers unironically rise up. From Legato Lega- Mati, is this why Alex Jones had to be removed? He covered from a or he covered for a day, then dropped it completely, as if he was threatened, and says it made it worse. From MJ, let the darkness glow. Sean Kershaw Bonds, who is edit uh, from Ethereal. Ah, I'm no sleepy Jim. Good thing I've got glowing nightlights. I'll read a couple more here, and we'll we'll jump back in. Rocket and Sano, so many people tweeting it sticks right now. From Bexfire, Lil Jim, not uh, de- not definitely fishy. Uh, fishy. It's a fish meatloaf traditionally served as a Sabbath meal. I'm sorry. Uh, gefilte fish. Oh, is that what you're talking about? Gefilte, right? Okay. Oh, oy vey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, from Sean Kershaw, if Styx is the gatekeeper, who's the key master? Or Zool? And finally from uh, John Breeson. Jim, the redacted chronology states that the fighters had passports from the USSR, North Korea, and Vietnam. And that the CIA and FCIA told MPD to stand out. Well, that would fit in line with what I'm seeing. Look, we've got a criminal investigation into a weird end. This all started with one case. You know, if, if you're looking at it like that. 1987, a couple of kids with some strangers in Florida. And all of a sudden, we're finding out that government agencies are involved, that classified information is involved. That they had, they had pretty, pretty decent technology for a group of people living on a farm, fucking kids. I mean, they had uh, uh, access to the internet in '87 or ARPANET, whatever they were using. Uh, they had a, a pretty decent computer. They're, they're, they're sending information to and fro. They've got naked pictures of kids, classified maps. You know, police are saying that basically their, their investigations, their warrant searches are being interfered with. And then later on in '93, after '87 and '93. Five year, or five six years after the warrants were done, they're saying, "Oh yeah, the evidence is gone. It disappeared." So no, it wouldn't surprise me that the fighters would have had passports from Russia, Korea, and Vietnam, and that the CIA was involved, and they told the MPD to stand down. Is it potentially possible that again, the in all seriousness, is it possible that the finders was meant to be an intelligence asset that that went off the farm, so to speak, that they were trained? To, to do disinformation and counterintelligence and somehow, some way, ended up as a child sex cult and the embarrassment of that made the intelligence community cover it up, that's very possible. <laughs> I know if I worked at the CIA and something I created turned into that, I wouldn't want to co-sign my name to it. it it's very possible. Okay. Uh, we'll, uh, again, I'll, I'll read Super Chats bit by bit as we go, and I'll, I'll get to all the ones that I missed. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed yours. Trust me, I'll, I'll keep up with them as best I can. Uh, we've got a lot to read. We've got a lot to read. <sighs> Give me a second here. Good God. Uh, this might be a long stream, chat. I don't know what you all have planned this evening. We're on page, what page are we on? <laughs> We're on page 68 of 300. Oh, you know, let me let me just pull the room here. Now that we're a little bit involved in this chat, I, I've got you pulled up on screen here. Uh, let's see. Let me. I'll, I'll try to pull you guys. How many do we have watching? Fifteen thousand. Uh, okay. Chat. Give me a one. Uh, how do I want to break this down? Okay. Give me a one if you think there's nothing weird with this and it was all blown out of proportion and it was just a satanic panic. Give me a two if you think this is there's smoke here. Not necessarily that we know exactly what's going on, but give me a two if you think there's some weird shit going on and that the truth has been covered up for whatever reason. A one if you think it's all bullshit. A two if you think there's something going on here that's nefarious or weird or being covered up. I'll give you, I know there's a bit of a delay. I'll give you a chance to catch up. Gives me a moment to have a drink and smoke a cigarette. I'm seeing some ones interspersed there, but I'm seeing a lot of twos. And, of course, we've got the rebel. who Who's going to give me a zero? Because fuck you, man. Fuck you, mom and dad. You can't put me in a box. I got you, bro. <laughs> I got you. I feel that zero. Okay. So we've got a lot of twos. All right. All right. Let's see. Okay. Let's put out some possible theories on what might be going on. Possible theories on what's going on. Right now, my initial gut feeling, reading this retarded shit, uh, I'm going to put as theory number one, 
Don't answer yet. Wait till I give you. I'll give you three theories, and then uh, we'll we'll vote on it. Uh, theory number one: the CIA or another intelligence agency within the United States sought to create a counterintelligence network or a propaganda network that would spread disinformation in the U.S. and outside of it to enemies. This was a group that was trained and influenced by whatever this intelligence agency was. And at some point during their operation, for whatever reason, they went rogue and became involved in child sex rings, uh, organ harvesting, and other really illicit and illegal activities. And because of this, the agency that was responsible for maintaining and managing this particular group became embarrassed or afraid of what would happen if that information went public, and so helped to cover it up. That's theory number one. Theory number two. There is a weird group of fucking hippies out there. <laughs> There's a weird group of hippies out there that run a child sex ring. And for whatever reason, they're in, they in possession of classified information, including tunnel networks under Washington, which might imply that they facilitate or trade child sex to people in the government. And because they had blackmail material on government officials, U.S. intelligence and police departments had to cover it up because they were told so from above. Hypothesis number three, all the people involved in this are fucking retards, and anybody who doesn't have their head up their ass can see there's weird shit going on, and it's just human stupidity that allowed it to get this bad. So theory one, CIA fucked up and did a big boo-boo. Theory number two, the finders blackmailed the government with material related to officials' fucking kids. And theory number three, people are retards and they drop the ball on this because they're fucking idiots. What one do you think sounds the most likely so far? Oh, you know what? Let me put uh, while you're voting. I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching as the numbers are flying by. Let me let me put the picture of our boy up again, <laughs> so you can see his face while you vote, chat. Oh, what are you doing there, CIA? All right, I'm seeing a lot of twos. So a lot of people believe. Okay, I'm seeing I'm seeing an equal amount of ones and threes, but a majority seem to be twos. Is what I'm getting. Uh, okay, so. It's all over the place. And again, these are just random theories I'm throwing out. Maybe maybe somebody in chat's got a much better one. And I'm just, I'm way behind the curve on it. I don't know. But we've heard for so many years about weird shit the government does. And we know the government does weird shit. You look at stuff like them dosing people with LSD, uh, people in the health department, allowing people to be sick with things like syphilis just to watch their brain rot without telling them or giving them treatment. You've got shit like MK Ultra. You've got all these weird fucking projects that are going on in the background run by government agencies. So I guess kind of knowing that they do weird, stupid shit makes me at least open to the potential that they have done something very stupid and found themselves in a giant snafu involving a child sex ring. And that I feel bad. I, I'll say I feel bad for the people in the Tallahassee Police Department and I feel bad for the people in the Metro Police Department because they probably they probably didn't want the shit to continue, but probably were bullied about it. And, you know, even if you put all of this aside, even if you say this is all speculation, who was calling the Tallahassee Police Department and threatening to kill children? Right, the group's initial claim was that they were just a cooperative, uh, you know, a commune, that there wasn't anything weird about them. So why then, when the Tallahassee Police Department got a hold of the children, were they receiving anonymous death threats against them? See, if I were a cop, if I was in some government agency, fuck everything else. That's the thing that's going to get my attention. Who threatens to kill children that are seven years old just because the police are concerned about their safety? That feels like a message. That feels like a message being sent that that's our property, we can do what we want with it, and you can't do shit about it. So I feel bad for that. I bet the Tallahassee police officers are like, this is fucked up. And they probably put their faith in customs and the FBI and everybody else, and they were let down. I'm sure it's the same with the Metro guys. I'm sure it's the same with those detectives in violent crime in Virginia. Every time they'd come across this shit, every time they'd encounter this weird group, they, kept, they were repeatedly told to back off for whatever reason. 
again, just out of nowhere, just decide to drop it. Uh, you know, not all of this is classified. Some of this is, you know, open. Uh, some of this was out there. But a lot of it was classified as secret or confidential. A lot of it was uh, internal memos that were never released. But for whatever reason, it's all compiled together, and the FBI put it up and put it out. And they just did it without any fanfare. They just they threw it out there on the 25th. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Maybe, may, I don't, part of the way this is organized is weird. You know, I find it very bizarre that in between the custom statistics and a custom letter talking about the statistics, for no reason at all, which shouldn't have any connection to the finders group, are two documents pertaining to McMartin Preschool and underground tunnels about sex abuse and satanic rituals. That seems really bizarre. That seems like somebody did a boo-boo when they put this together, or maybe there's a federal agent out there that, that thought, you know what, if I'm going to put this out, I'm going to sneak that in there for people. Maybe there's a Fed out there who's on our side and wants people to put pieces together. I don't know. All I know is there's some very strange shit with this entire release, and there's some very strange... You know, it's like Blue said. we got to find some clues here, Chad. And we're going to do it. We're going we're gonna to find some fucking clues. We're going to go through this information. We're going to figure out what the fuck is going on. So let's continue. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Page 68. Finder's involvement with the CIA at approximately 3.30 on uh, February 18th of 87. Detective spoke with Redacted, referencing any contact of the members of the Finders may have had with the agency. Uh, so-and-so was guarded, but frank in his response. He confirmed that Redacted, Isabel, now deceased, was an employee of the agency from 1950 until 1971 when asked if our investigation was treating are treading on anyone's toes out there. Redacted replied, sort of. He acknowledged that they have had someone working on the case since it first broke on the news media. He also stated that uh, the agency is aware that during the period of 69 to 71, Redacted traveled to Moscow, North Korea, and North Vietnam. Also stated that he would contact Detective uh, to arrange to come to his office and further discuss this. <clears throat> The Metro PD talked to somebody in intelligence, and they were told that, yes, investigating the finder's cult is treading on the toes of the CIA. They had an agent involved with this, and that, okay, the dates now, look at this, from the period of 1969 to 1971. This goes back, this goes back another 20 fucking years. It's not just something that's happened for 30 Half a century. For a half a century, this organization, uh, iterations of this organization, have been involved in activities that benefit the CIA and the U.S. government. And they're aware of it. And now you wonder why it is the police departments, every time they enact a search warrant or get involved with kids, are suddenly told to fucking stop. Why their search warrants are shut down, why their information is taken away, why evidence is suddenly lost, while all the victim, why all the victims are suddenly returned to the cult, sort of. You're sort of encroaching on our territory. By the way, these people are involved with traveling to Moscow, North Korea, and North Vietnam. All communist nations. I, I wasn't joking, chat. I was being serious. The, that's, this, is my, this is my strongest theory now. The CAA wanted to trigger the Russians to own the Russians, and the way they did it <laughs> was by creating a child sex cult. Brilliant. Just brilliant, CIA. Holy fuck. All right, let's keep going. As a practical matter, what is not being said, it, uh, said as is important is what Blanket said. Uh, acknowledged that was treading on their toes and that they have said someone working on the case since November 5th when it broke. They apparently have a vested interest in Blank and or the group. All right, this is the cop saying, the CIA has a specific interest in a member of the group and the group, the finders themselves. They have not contacted any of the investigative agencies while well, they've been working on it. Uh, they are also aware that Blank traveled to the prohibited countries during a period of hostilities that could only have been ar uh, arranged by them. Okay. 
this is getting worse. <clears throat> this isn't just some group of, uh, you know, super patriotic Americans teaching those Russians a lesson. This child sex cult, <laughs> this child sex cult is going to fucking communist countries. And it's being arranged, or only could be arranged, by the CIA itself. 1987 Tallahassee is when the public became aware of it. But going on this document, we could be talking as early as 1969 this has been going on. This could explain a lot about the groups running, which may have been unable to docu or document to this point. Uh, Redacted did not know that the person he turned the information over to in Europe was a source of this office and is not aware that the source brought this disc back to the office. Redacted actually transferred the disc to London. Detective Blank then turned the disc over to uh, WFO, FBI, Counterintelligence Office for anal or Analyzation. We have not uh, been appraised of the results of the analysis, nor do we expect to be. Regardless of the type of operation they may have been engaged in, there will be no justification for the way that children have been treated, and the matter will be addressed in family court, Superior, Div <coughs> Superior Division. I'd say this goes in line with what I was saying earlier. You got your local police departments that think that this shit is fucked up. And U.S. intelligence is telling them to shut their fucking mouth. And here's a cop basically saying, you know, we want this to go to court. These kids shouldn't be being abused. Nothing ever happened. Also interesting that this disc of information regarding the fighters and the CIA and all this shit going on is now, it's not just an American thing. Now we're international. Now it's going to London. So does that mean MI6? Does that mean Interpol? Who are we dealing with? Do, do not disseminate confidential. Oopsie. Uh, and then we've got more, more information about Finders Group, uh, the business name, Investigated Information Services, attached your copies of the information. Okay, uh, this is stuff we've already seen. <clears throat> I'll just continue down here. What, what are we even looking at? Let me see if I can see what we've got here. I don't know what this is. Oh, they've got like credit reports on these guys. Okay, yeah, they, they dug deep into the business. Uh, looking through tax liens, bankruptcies, all that, the unit, the location. Building footage, 37,000 feet. It's a big building. Okay, that's your Lexus Nexus result. Yeah, they're, they're okay, so uh, I, I don't know if this is through the M. Uh, is this through MPD? I'm guessing it is. They're looking at all their properties. So, the Metropolitan Police Department started doing background checks, financial checks, business checks. So again, the cops really wanted to figure this out. It's U.S. intelligence that basically told them to fuck off. Uh, let's see. FBI conduct a preliminary inquiry. Okay. Uh, uh, again, U.S. Congressman Rose from Florida to discuss allegations concerning a group called Finders. Both Rose and Redacted provided information concerning these allegations uh, to the Department of Justice. Uh, WMFO investigated a group called Finders in February of 87. Finders was an alternative lifestyle group <laughs> located uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. that evolved into a data gathering group. The group was purportedly headed by Blank, Virginia, with the leader in the WDC. WMFO closed the case when no violations of federal law, child abuse, or exploitation was determined to have occurred. Well, how fucking convenient. Uh, case agent from the 87 investigation advised that this matter was brought up again sometime in 89 when TV talk show host Redacted was purportedly planning to air a special exposing finders as a satanic cult. Redacted provided Redacted of Quantico with information concerning this investigation. Uh, Redacted advised that when the televised special aired, there was no response to finders. Yeah, you see this shit? Okay, so you got the police departments that are working hard on this. And then you've got U.S. intelligence that not only covers it up, but the only thing they give a shit about is when a television network might do a special on it or when a congressman might stick his nose where it shouldn't belong. So here's Congressman Rose of Florida, who probably thinks this is some fucked up shit. He probably got lied to, too. Uh, yeah, I think this is just a copy of the same thing. White slave traffic again. All right, let's see. What page are we on right now? Where are we here? <clears throat> uh, page 97. Okay, listen to this shit. Remember how the evidence disappeared? 
Uh, investigation at WMFO indicates that material seized during the execution of two February 1987 search warrants of their addresses in Washington, D.C. were probably, <laughs> probably, maybe, kind of, we think it might have uh, been forwarded to Tallahassee Police Department for inclusion in their finder's case. You know, maybe. Maybe. Oops, it disappeared. No, we sent it to them. It's their fault. They're blaming the fucking police. Uh, it was tele... Uh, telephonically who the fuck writes that was telephonically contacted uh regarding the status of his efforts to have both redacted u.s state department queried regarding the finders redacted had previously been requested by the ssa to handle the inquiries on a headquarters level redacted advised that he was uh, drafting a letter for approval by the victim's crime unit which would be sent to the respective agencies he further advised that redacted was assisting him in this effort ssa redacted was requested to advise WMFO of the rea- uh, results of his resu- or efforts as soon as possible. On November 9th, 1993, a redacted advised that he was handling the review of any FCI files at FBI H- or HQ and would advise the WMFO of the results. Okay. All right. I'm going to take... We're, we're going to take another quick break here. I'll just I'll do small little breaks every hour. We're about a third of the way through the FBI documents. I know it's it's some weird shit. Uh, we will come back in just a couple minutes. Uh, I'm gonna get another drink myself, and then we'll go through this clusterfuck of bureaucratic nonsense, government potential government cover up, and CIA embarrassment at their mistakes for having accidentally oopsie daisy created potentially an international child sex cult to own the Russians. Oh, how fucking embarrassing! Oh, well, let's go. Let's go back to some smooth jazz. Take a quick break. Get back. Read some more FBI information. Nice, nice smooth jazz. You know, I, given the subject matter we're talking about, I got my tinfoil. I grabbed some tinfoil, wrapped it around my head, so they can't they can't beam their satellite rays into my brain. But just given what's going on, I thought maybe maybe jazz wasn't the best choice. Maybe we need something a little more. A little more Alex Jonesy. Maybe we need something that teaches those sons of bitches. <laughs> we don't care about their glowing in the dark. Those men raped that woman in India to death with an iron rod four feet long. You can't ban the iron rods. The guns, the iron rods, Pierce, didn't do it. The tyrants did it. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel Castro took the guns. 1776 will commence again if you try to take the firearms. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? The Republic will rise again. Don't try what your ancestors did before. Why don't you come to America? I'll take you out to the... You can become an American and join the Republic. And I want to say this right here. You think you're a tough guy? Well, have me back with a boxing ring in here, and I'll wear red, white, and blue, and you can wear your Jolly Roger. Okay. You know what you... Let's try again. Do you know which weapon was used in the Oregon shopping mall? I want to get people off pills. Suicide pills. Mass murder pills. I want you to try and answer the questions. It's a proper debate, okay? I'm not trying to trip you up. No, it's not a debate. You're running the show. You bring in your victims. In the spirit of a proper debate, you've had a lot to say so far on the show. Try again. 1776 will commence again if you try to take the firearms. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? The Republic will rise again. Don't try what your ancestors did before. Why don't you come to America? I'll take you out shooting. You can become an American and join the Republic. Come to America. I'll take you out shooting. You can become an American and join the Republic. Whatever. Go back to where they took the guns if you don't like it. The communist. <laughs> That's my boy. That's Alex. He's not taking shit from nobody. Oh, they all said he was crazy, but look at him now. Look at him now as we go through the FBI reports. Oh, it seems like maybe. Maybe he wasn't so wrong after all. Maybe the frogs really are turning gay from the water. <laughs> I'm going to have to reevaluate everything. Uh, from Drew Durant. Thank you, Daddy Jim. Here's a $2 from, uh, for some Kharkov. Uh, thank you. From Skits. The fourth branch of government needs to be labeled as so and be open to transparency. Omega Man. My bet organ harvesting was a real CIA op. The satanic cult was a disinformation. 
Maybe they got overzealous in the act to be convincing. From Sean Turner. <laughs> CIA, it's just a prank, bro. The camera's right over there. I really didn't do those kids. It was a body double. Why are you getting so mad, people? From uh, Nomi. Ever going to re-upload Hugbox Ross videos on BitChute? Uh, yeah, I'll put those up over there eventually. Uh, the newest video, as you can see the little the break segment that we had, the newest video up is Trans-Tastic Tales, Episode 1. Uh, the next video is another Trans-Tastic Tales, which will focus on some very sad things. But I think it'll be a good video. It should be up tomorrow, Tuesday at the latest. From Eddie Spaghetti, CIA agents push Terry in front of the train. Can we just take a minute to appreciate that Terry Davis is 100% correct about everything? <laughs> he wasn't crazy. He was just, the truth was just too much to bear. From Racial Whale, the church committee investigated abused uh, uh, abuses by the CIA. Hong Kong protests are deep state op, or op. National Endowment for Democracy is a USA org that funds protests for democracy, a.k.a. startup gay ops. Read a few more here and we'll jump back into the FBI stuff. From Shadow of Colossus 103, good stuff, Medicare. I'm listening to you while at work on Node uh, JavaScript and Angular homework. Thoughts on Andrew Yang as a presidential candidate? Uh, well, you know, I... I'm not a big fan of Yang after he gave a speech where he said, uh, once the whites are done coming after the Jews, they're going to come after the Asians. And he basically said that his universal income was a way of uh, enticing whites to be quiet long enough to be outbred. And I'm not making that up. He said that on Twitter. And he said that in speeches. So <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of Yang. Uh, Rocket Insano. Is this all ties to the Steel Report? I'm done. From Lumberjack, what probably happened is a mixture of what happened with uh, whitey Irish mob boss, who was an informant, as well as Al Capone, who was uh, bribed, got dirt on political justice system, corrupting, controlling them with threats of exposure. Read two more and jump back in. Uh, from Ethereal, if you look at the very end of that long section written in bad cursive, it literally says, <laughs> finders, definitely not a CIA front. And from Sigma, hi Neb, it's me, Sigma, from Lads. All right. We've got a lot more to read through. Uh, let's see what we got. I believe we left off on page one. Uh, we're on page 100. Maybe I went backwards a little bit, but we are on a page 100. Uh, this is a teletype again uh, to the director in, in Miami, I guess, for information of the WMFO for Tallahassee uh, Regent Agency is in the Jacksonville Division. Okay, it's not important. Again, this is a lot of this is them sending information to themselves. So it's like this. It's this internal back and forth of sending documentation that happened once in 87 back and forth, and then again in 93 back and forth. But it's a lot of the summary information or chronologies listed by the FBI or from the Metro Police Department that shine a, lot, or shine a light on some of the weird shit uh, that these people are getting into. All right, let's, we'll scroll through. Oh, here the, here's the press coverage. Okay, so in, included in this in the FBI, I, I guess, summary. Uh, they they basically taken different articles that were writing about this. Uh, so you can see how many people were talking about the finders at the time. Uh, here's one from City Paper. Finders, it shows the kids' pictures, shows the man involved, uh, reports on that. Another one in search of the finders. Uh, you can see it's just a lot of press coverage following what the fuck is going on with this particular case. Her diet's a real killer. Oh, boy. Well, you know, I need to find out about this diet program for eating disorders. Uh, in search of the finders again, following this. This is a very long article. I, I would try to read it, but it's very small. Well, let's see. Let's let's see if we can scroll in a little and see what, what we're saying here. Another issue of the Daily Finder, come to Tallahassee, invited friend to come join the drama and featured the song Old Tallahassee. I, I, <laughs> I don't think that's... Okay. What is this from? Uh, important message, Chief. Uh, for Regarding your finder's case. Uh, okay, it looks like they included the article for that. Here's the 48 hours. You remember earlier on they were worried about the 48 hours expose about the finders. Uh, Dear Chief Tucker, as an associate producer for CBS News 48 hours, I would like to uh, request that under Florida Chapter 119, you make available all files and materials associated with your investigation into the finder's organization that took place in 1987. I will be in your city sometime in the middle of next week and would like to examine the records in person. If there's a copying fee, CBS News will reimburse you for your costs. Thank you for your help in this matter. 
uh, from Cong okay from the House of Representatives, dear Chief Tucker, in furtherance of its legislative and oversight responsibilities under the rules of the House, the Committee on House Administration in conducting our investigation into an organization known as the Finders, an or er, an order to examine the credibility of certain allegations against the Finders organization, the committee must obtain all relevant documentation. It has come to our attention that your office may have certain information, which will further this investigation. Accordingly, I am requesting under Chapter 1, everybody's requesting under Chapter 119. Please address your response to redacted of my staff. Should you have any further questions, redacted can be reached. Why would you, re okay. Why would you, Why? what's the point of redacting that? You have his signature. We know it's Charlie Rose. Committee on House Administration. That It says it right there. What was the point of this if his fucking name is right here? That's a, that's some smart thinking from the FBI. All right, let's see what we have here. I believe this is, okay, this would be from the Tallahassee Police Department. I think this is the initial report. Uh, this writer was dispatched to Myers Park in reference to a report of a well-dressed man with several small children who were unkempt. Upon my arrival, I observed two men dressed in a in confident ties on the playground at Myers Park, accompanied by several small children. I also observed a redacted parked on the playground at Myers Park the writer noticed that the children I, I can't make that out uh, were very dirty and unkempt the children had been uh, bug bitten their entire bodies were scratches on their legs the writer spoke to suspect uh, I was uh, it was stated that he and suspect number two were teachers from Washington DC and they were en route to Mexico <laughs> with the children uh, suspect one stated that they were going to the Mexico to set up a school for brilliant children. When asked about the parents of the children, suspect one became very evasive and stated that the children's parents were in Washington. Suspect two refused to give the writer any information, and he pretended to faint. And he pretended to faint when he told when he was told he was under arrest for child abuse. Suspect two fell face down <laughs> on the ground and refused to stand up. He was carried by this writer and two other uh, law enforcement officers and placed in a patrol vehicle. The suspects were... Why, okay, why would two teachers that hadn't done anything wrong pass out in front of police officers when they were placed under arrest for suspected child abuse? <laughs> he faked falling on his face. He faked falling on his fucking face when the cops told him, get your ass in our squad car. Uh, children gave their names to the officers. Uh, they, uh, the children were extremely hungry when they got to the police station and the older children stated they hadn't eaten since this morning. The children appeared as if they had, hadn't bathed in several days and most of them didn't have any underwear on. The older children stated that they have to be, uh, do good things to get food as a reward and they are given oranges, bananas and carrots and raw potatoes to eat. A redacted of the older kids stated that redacted and that redacted, redacted, suspect two refused to talk to the investigators and to intake uh, intake counselors. Uh, the suspects were advised of their Miranda warning by the investigators, after which suspects uh, continued to be very evasive and continued to be uncooperative. The children were released to the HBS, and the suspects were transported to the Leon County Jail for processing. Suspect's vehicle was confiscated and impounded by the, uh, or I, I guess, by the police department. Uh, Sergeant Redacted also responded to the scene. Note, the children's clothing were extremely filthy and they had on mismatched socks. Uh, again, remember the other reports we heard earlier on. When the children were released back to the same group, they said there was no evidence of abuse. And yet, when they got to the police department, they're covered in bug bites. They have no underwear on. Their clothes are filthy. They all smell because they haven't bathed. And they told the police officers... They're only allowed to eat when they behave, and they're only allowed to eat raw potatoes. <laughs> but there's no child abuse. Okay, okay. Uh, the officer was dispatched to assist officer in defense. Uh, okay, uh, I think this is this going over this again. Uh, two men had six children with them. Is this another? Okay, this is another officer. Uh, the van smelled bad. I spoke with the children while officer continued to talk with the two men. The eldest child was named. She said she did not know. She did not know if her last name was redacted or redacted. She said that she also stated that one of the other kids 
God, a lot of this has been omitted. She identified the other children as or. She said that they all lived together at Washington, D.C. Phone number. I asked where their mothers were, and they said in Washington. I asked them where they were going. They said they didn't know. They were just going different places. I asked where they were staying. They said at a campgrounds. They've been sleeping in the van and in a tent. I asked when was the last time they saw their mothers. They said before Christmas, so two months ago. Uh, they said they had no Christmas. They also stated they did not see their mothers much, that they are being weaned away from them. They said they didn't go to school. They said the two men teach them. I asked what they teach them. They said games and how to read. They said they did things for rewards. I asked what type of things they got rewards for, and uh, they said working. They said they got food for rewards. They said the adults had to do what the game caller said, and the adults told the children what to do. They said that they were not allowed inside the house. They said they were hungry and had not eaten since this morning. I asked what they ate. They said raw vegetables and fruit. They were transported to the police department and turned over to HRS. The two men were arrested for child abuse and then obviously processed. Uh, okay, I think it's just going over what outfits the kids were wearing. Yeah, mismatched socks. Yeah, they're talking about the kids. Uh, shoes were extremely filthy. You notice how both police reports keep going over the fact these kids smelled like shit? Like their clothes are tattered, they're hungry, they're disheveled, they're scratched up, bug-bitten. How, how did they come to the conclusion no abuse took place? The kids are telling the police officers and people involved they're not allowed to see their parents, they can't stay in the house. They're filthy, they're hungry, they're confused, and they're obeying somebody who calls himself the Game Master. Holy shit. Okay, it's just, this is a summary of the investigation of when they, they came across the kids, brought them into custody, uh, brought other people into custody. Uh, what is this? Uh, investigator was also advised by HRS that two children were case, or, okay, here we go. Okay. So, investigator was advised that two children were confirmed cases, confirmed cases of sexual abuse. She stated that the exams on uh, child one and child two were consistent with sexual abuse and that child three had bruises which were indicative of bite marks. It was not sure if the marks were adults or child bite marks. So wh when was this report filed? What's the date on this? Okay, original report, February 4th, uh, date of this report. Okay, so by the 8th, so two to three days after the initial arrest, it was confirmed the kids were sexually abused. They saw that they were disheveled. They were hungry. They were physically just looked terrible. They smelled. Uh, they had a weird story. They were traveling around the country. They weren't allowed to, or allowed to see their mothers. They weren't allowed to sleep in a home. They obeyed somebody called the Game Master. One of the kids had bite marks, which could have been human bite marks. And two of the children uh, had features or behaviors consistent with confirmed sexual abuse. And yet, even with that, in the initial report from the Tallahassee Police Department, once the feds and customs and everybody else got involved, the investigation was dropped. They were sent back to these people. Confirmed sexual abuse, they were turned back over to the people that molested and abused them. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, uh, later that night, uh, this is, I believe, is the warehouse search. Yep. Uh, stated they found a large amount of computer goods, a hot tub, sauna, large TV room, a library, books, some concern. They found books on mind control. <laughs> Come on! So you're telling me you find a bunch of abused, smelly children with two strange men that are traveling the country, and when you search the warehouse these people own, you find a bunch of computer and internet shit and books on mind control. <laughs> Come on! A uh, detective advised that there were computers at the house with various materials. He stated he had not uh, didn't have time to go through the information yet. Uh, and then, yeah, by the 6th, they were already meeting with the FBI uh, and the U.S. Attorney's Office, and the FBI became involved in the investigation as well as customs. What the fuck is this? Okay, this is all right. We, this is some weird fucking shit. Okay, 
He described the suspect as being a loner. He stated that he had not seen him in three to four years. Stated that he had shown up at the residence in Gainesville approximately two weeks ago with, I'm guessing, the children. Uh, he told them that he was en route to Miami. Yep, okay. Uh, this, I believe, is a report from people that had contact with these people. Uh, Blank gave the investigator a letter he'd received as a reply to a letter he wrote to him. The letter contained two pieces of paper. One was a handwritten letter signed by Redacted, stating that the suspect was en route to China via Hawaii. This letter was written on a piece of paper with the letterhead, Gung Ho Traders. The other slip of paper contained in the letter uh, was to Redacted. It was a letter with pornographically described suspect's genitals and thanked them for having a stud for his son. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Okay, so one of the men transporting the children, <laughs> one of the men transporting the children was writing letters to people saying that he was going to go to China via Hawaii and he was thanking people for having sons that were studs. <laughs> they have really great genitals that kid's got. Uh, the letter was signed by the wives of Gung Ho. The letter was dated May 19th, 1986. <laughs> Wow. <clears throat> uh, suspect refused to talk to the investigators. Suspect did not speak to the investigators, but only gave basic information and to ask questions about the children. He did ask if the children had been seen by a doctor and if anything was found. He also asked where the children were. He advised that the children were in protective custody and were not in need of immediate medical attention. Several leads from the area outside of Tallahassee were given to the FBI to follow up on. Agent Redacted also spoke with the suspect on the telephone. Uh, he's located in the New York area. Agents in Gainesville area were also to interview people and see the suspect and children in the area recently. Investigator and agent also went to the went to the treehouse where Redacted and Redacted were being held in protective custody. Agent Redacted took 35 millimeter pictures, black and white color, of the children for use by his agency. The children appeared to be in good spirits. Okay, it talks about them going to the sheriff's office. Uh, investigator also advised by FBI that they were going to secure a search warrant for the van and would be serving it on the state. The investigator advised them of the materials that were in the TPD property for the van. They advised that they would like to have an agent go through them uh, and come to the TPD and went through the materials. More leads from Gainesville area were given to the FBI to follow up on. Also on this date, redacted from the National Child Safety Council came to the Tallahassee Police Department to assist the agency in any way possible. In looking through one of his publications, this investigator felt that the missing child Redacted may be one of the children in custody. So one of the cops thought one of the kids they got was actually a missing child. The investigator spoke with the investigator from Montgomery PD who advised that uh, Redacted seen the picture and stated that Blank was not the missing child, was also listed as having blue eyes and Redacted had brown eyes. The investigator asked the other investigator to get a copy of the picture that agent will be sending to Washington office uh, of the FBI and have them look at it. He stated that he would. Investigator also spoke with the Marshal of California. He advised that he... Like, this is so weird. So now we've got letters talking about genitals and trips to China. One of the cops thinks the kid looks like somebody that went missing and was on a milk carton. And again, they're told by intelligence officials, no, you got it wrong. Wrong eye color. Forget about it. Free, we'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. How convenient. Every time the police department is doing an investigation, the FBI or the CIA or uh, Customs or somebody... Somehow gets involved and shit disappears. Uh, warrants aren't served. Follow-ups aren't ever followed up on. This is so fucking bizarre. <clears throat> okay, so they lost. Or they last saw the suspect in Gainesville five years ago. He stated that he went to Gainesville to visit, I'm guessing, a relative who was then living in a woman's supportive cooperative. He stated that they lived in a rented house and had a van. Uh, rent, okay. Uh, there for 48 hours when he realized that they had been very well he had been very well manipulated and really knew little of what was going on in their life and that so and so was pregnant at the time Redacted stated that approximately one year ago he and his ex-wife went to visit them in D.C. his ex-wife was living there at the time he stated they went to the address knocked and got no answer said they were walking away he turned around and saw someone looking out from the window at him the next day they returned to the house this time, someone came to the door and let them in, but refused to tell them anything about their friends. 
stated that he had become extremely agitated and left. It, it, that sounds cult-like. So you're not allowed to talk to anybody you know. You're not allowed to uh, make connections with friends or former family. You're, you're basically kept. You're basically kept away from everyone. I I yeah okay. I need to take a small break. This is <laughs> this is a lot of weird shit, chat. I want to know more about the gung-ho letters. What the fuck was that about? What is the gung-ho company? And why are they writing letters to people about children's genitals? <laughs> Your son is such a stud. Oh, he's got a great cock. By the way, I'm going to China with this group of smelly children <laughs> in my van. Don't worry. The CIA already arranged for it. You know, it wouldn't be so extraordinary to think they could get to China via Hawaii if this group was getting to places like Russia and North Korea and North Vietnam in the 1960s and early 70s. What the fuck is this? Chat, I'm very confused. I don't know exactly what the fuck is going on with the fighters here, but some weird shit. Oh, okay, let's see here. Right, I'll go through a couple super chats. We'll jump back in. We're, we're officially about halfway through the fighters document. From Red Acted, those unkempt kids need you to groom them. Take my shekels. From Joni Baloney, Eldrix uh, will re-upload this, or he better. The tribe is always involved. The Holocaust would be too good for these people. Brave stance, Joni Baloney. The Packard Goose, we live in a society. From Mario Kart 13, undies, where are we going to do? We got no undies. Officially Smug Frog, Game Caller equals Game Dude, stay woke. From North Sean Hero, Game Master, this is SCP versus D&D now. Was the D&D Satanic Panic real? From Dave the Impaler, new Murdoch Murdoch just dropped at Cheeky Videos. From Mateo, update from Argentina, the pro-Madura socialist won over the gay neoliberals. 2020 is going to be very interesting, oh boy. Medicare's Lunicorn Archive, this feels like an SCP log. What with all the redacteds? Uh, from some guy, seriously, I might as well apply for the CIA FBI. They seem to hire sub-tier of sub-IQs anyway. I suppose we could all get a job, really. A uh, rocket and say, no, this has happened before. Google Operation Gladio. Clown World Order. Stop noticing shit, goy. Medicare redacted. I'll uh, read a few more here. Uh, Mr. James in Bloggington asked Sonic who I should turn in or turn to if I'm molested by a parent that is also a teacher at the police academy. Also, Temple OS will save Western civilization. From Rat Tell Tony, in your next episode of Furry Pandemonium, uh, will you rip apart my furry art and show no mercy? I sent you a link to my page on Patreon. Uh, well, if it's if it's awful furry shit, maybe. <laughs> uh, from Shekelmeister, think about it. The old Hong Kong protesters always used British flags. Why all of a sudden are they all using USA or US flags now? Definitely not a CIA gay op. Also remember Arab Springs. Why won't or why you frogs still support any democracy? Protests anywhere. CIA. Let us see here. This is, uh, I, I, let me ask you this, chat. Because I, you know, I, I'm confused as to, why do you think the FBI, now of all times, just what, what, what is the impetus? What is the reasoning behind releasing this amount of information just out of the blue? I mean, why, why now? Do you think it's because of all the weird political shit going on? Is this, is this one agency versus another? Do you think somebody got self-conscious and, Decided they were going to release it. Was there a timer on this? What exactly is the reason for releasing this report on the 25th of October in 2019? With no fanfare. Just putting it out there. Of somebody saying, make sure to look up Operation Meat Spin. I'll be sure to check that one out. Uh, is it trust the plan, Q? I don't know about that. FBI versus CIA? I don't know. Uh, it's all fake. Somebody thinks it's all fake. Uh, Freedom of Information Act? Uh, well, true. I mean, it, it could be a Freedom of Information Act uh, inquiry, but I, it, it just feels weird. The timing of it feels off. The timer elapsed uh, 25 years. Is that what it is? Well, no, if the timer elapsed from 19, well, you'd be going from 1993, wouldn't you? Yeah. 
Well, no, that should have been last year then. FBI is based in red pilled. I don't know about that. Uh, where are all the adult kids now? You know, I don't know. If they're all seven and eight years old in '87, uh, they'd be in their twenties and thirties now. I, I don't know where they are. I don't know if they've ever given public interviews. I don't know if anybody ever tracked him down and, and talked to him. Uh, maybe when I do a follow-up stream with the guy that's researching this for a book, he'll have information about what happened to the kids and if they've made any public statements. Uh, you know, yeah, there are occasionally time limits on things. That's true. But, you know, it's like, uh, what is it, the FBI files, or uh, FBI files, the JFK shit. I mean, there was supposed to be a time limit on that, and they extended it. It's predictive. They're preparing for something? I don't know, Chad. I don't know what they'd be preparing for. Uh, covering up for something bigger? Maybe. Uh, probably dead. Somebody speculating the kids aren't around anymore. Uh, kids are all likely dead. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, oh, we are all the kids? Is that right, Chad? Is that <laughs> is a predictive programming gotten us? I just like that. Like, this involves everything. It's like a really bad Hollywood plot. You've got a group of kids that are being held by weird hippie CIA agents. Uh, they're being exposed to abuse, sexual and physical. They're malnourished. They're being trafficked around the world. Government agencies are involved. There are books on fucking mind control. People are covering up evidence and shutting down investigations. <laughs> it's so fucking bizarre. Holy fuck. All right, let's, let's continue onward. Right, where are we here? Uh, this is still the initial Tallahassee police report. Now, I wonder if this is what they're going to finish up with. I think the original Tallahassee police report was like 75 pages, uh, which this might be. Okay, it talks about phone calls between agents. Okay, so th I think they're talking to somebody. Uh, stated that she knows, redacted, that he is uh, was a farmhand on her neighbor's farm. Stated that the farm belonged to Redacted and is used for watermelon growing. Stated at the beginning of last week, January 26th and 30th, she saw him walk up and down her street with 10 children. Wait a minute. So she saw this guy in January. What? She saw him in January with 10 children, but they were arrested with six. Stated the children were living in a watermelon field. Stated all the children were white and young. She thought it was strange the children were not in school since she was seeing them during the middle of the day. Stated the children had something in a van, but she does not remember the details about the van. Wait, what happened to the other four kids? No, 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 no. If you have a witness saying there were ten children and then they get arrested and there are only six, where'd the other four go? Right? What happened to the other four fucking kids? <laughs> yes, Chad. Ten children. She saw ten children. And now there are only six. Where did the other four children go? Oh, I get I got a I got a bad feeling about this one. Okay, it's talking about their van was blocking uh things on the property. Uh, called me back, uh, works for the Center for Independent Living in Ocala, stated on Wednesday that one of her clients ran an ad in the local newspaper to have someone work for him, stated that on Wednesday a person arrived to the ad and acted strange, stated she was told by Redacted that the stranger said he was in transit from Washington and that he was on his way to Mexico, that he wanted no money, but that he would like if she could bring the children to their apartments so they could take a bath, stated that the stranger left on a Wednesday and returned on a Friday, and again, worked for it, redacted. Stated that they then issued the individual a check, and the check was made payable to blank. Stated the individual uh, said he had borrowed a buddy's van, but that on both days he walked to and from the location. It was described as, uh, okay. I'd like to work on your farm. Can you pay me in baths? <laughs> you see these 10 smelly children? I need to wash them for my clients in Mexico. Can I can I pick some fucking pumpkins? Can I can I grab some watermelons from you to bathe these disgusting children? All ten of them? I advised that I would have to verify the identity. Okay, call back. Uh, okay, so this is somebody that ran into them before the arrest, saying there were ten kids, 
and that they were doing odd jobs on their way to Florida. Received a call from a guy named Blank with Interpol. Interpol. Okay. Stated the individual investigator asked him to do a check on the history in Canada from 60 to 71. Stated the Immigration Services had a fingerprint card on the person to contact Buffalo, New York if needed. Investigator later advised that this is the wrong person to ignore information. So now Interpol is involved. So Interpol does a background check on the suspect and says, you don't want to ignore this guy. Get back to us. <laughs> what the fuck? How many, how many fucking agencies in the world were, I guess, aware of this shit that was going on? You got these people from Washington and their weird fucking cult being seen by witnesses with 10 children. They get arrested in Tallahassee, Florida with six kids. Nobody knows where the other four fucking went. Interpol knows about it. FBI knows about it. Customs officials know about it. CIA knows about it. Metro Police, Tallahassee Police. Everybody's doing search warrants and investigations. Finding fucking books on mind control. Nude pictures of children. A bunch of computer fucking equipment. CIA has been producing or potentially aiding them and going to hostile countries like Russia, North Korea, and North Vietnam. They've been telling people that they're going to be going to China. And then they tell other people they're building a smart cool or a smart kid school in Mexico. Kids are disheveled and abused. One of the investigators says there's definite evidence of sexual abuse. And yet the investigation is dropped in a week. The evidence disappears. The search warrants are quashed. And the children are returned to the cult. I mean, that's shit we're reading, right? That's uh, We're making speculation as to why that happened, but that's shit that's in black and white we're reading right now. I don't, I don't fucking know what's going on. I feel like my mind is melting reading through this bizarre shit. Oh, one second, chat. Okay. Information uh, packet sent to the agency. Okay, let's see. Oh, Niagara Falls. Yeah, I've noticed like four or five different uh, police departments are, I, I guess, involved in this. I'm not sure why. Why are so many police... Like, how far are these people traveling? Uh, sergeant with the Illinois State Police advised that he was currently investigating a missing child from his state and asked us to check the children to see if any of them was the missing child. Blank stated that the child's name is... Stated that he would send a photo of the missing child to the agency so we could check. He said there are no fingerprints of the child, no other information. Detective of Connecticut State Police started, or stated that he had no information to add, but if his agency needed help, to contact him. Okay, so they're networking. They're talking to other police departments to try to identify who these fucking kids are. Who are these children? Are they missing kids? Have they been uh, kidnapped? What's going on? Uh, Children's Clearinghouse, South Carolina, stated that the children were, we have in custody looked like a missing child in their registry. Yeah, that's weird. One of the police detectives said that uh, one of the kids looked like a missing child he'd seen before. How, how much did they investigate? When these six kids showed up, I, I mean, how deeply did they investigate? Are these, like, maybe they dyed their hair. Maybe they, I don't fucking know. so weird uh, disposition case still open oh we're only 150 pages into this okay this is the initial report this is when somebody reported and said hey there's some weird shit going on up in Myers Park uh, there are a couple of men with a bunch of kids I don't know what's going on so we, we've already read this we've gone through this before uh, this is the initial report with the Tallahassee Police Department uh, the one before it was more interesting because it went over what what were they doing? How are they trying to identify the children? Okay. What is this? For example, if a vehicle was having a mechanical problem, a leader would... Okay, oh, is this going over the group? Okay, let's see, let's see. Uh, the group believes in ex experiential, or what this investigation terms, hands-on training. They prefer to educate their children by showing them by the best means available, going to zoos, living in the woods, etc., and a preferred learning experience to conventional methods. And while classroom techniques are apparently acceptable uh, to continue uh, to the group,
They prefer as uh, much diversity as possible. Several of the mothers quoted physical, or philosophical following CF reputed, what is this, educators, and explained how uh, they, the mothers, feel that their children are being given a better life. A picture, The pictures of the children with slaughtered goats was not a ritual sacrifice, but an attempted hands-on experience. One mother who wasn't sure what the ordeal was uh, necessarily, or that she approved, indicated that these three men were present at the time, thought the experience was well-intentioned, as an experience for the children to learn. She likened the slaughter to that of what was done in a biology class. Several mothers indicated that the robes being worn by the men were actually sheets the men wore during the slaughter to protect their clothing. The slaughter of the two goats on the Virginia farm was at the end of the summer, and the goats couldn't be left there alive. The meat from the goats went back to D.C. to the group where they ate them. The children were to experience where meat comes from, an experience that most children don't get to have when growing up. Yeah, these guys in these weird fucking clan robes <laughs> with the kids, the dirty, smelly kids, gutting goats and slaughtering them in this picture. It's a learning experience. Oh, I bet there are a lot of pictures of learning experiences those kids went through. But I, I doubt the uh, FBI will ever release those. Uh, regarding eating, the mothers expressed concern that their children ate properly. Mothers indicated knowledge of diet and nutrition. They indicated that the children eat balanced diets of fruits and vegetables. They go get food whenever they are hungry rather than during prescribed meal times. The group does have conventional meals upon occasion. The mothers indicated that they feel their children are healthy. Oh, here. Contents of the, <clears throat> contents of the van. All right, let's see what we got. Well, redacted already. Uh, photos of children. Okay, where is this? Again, this is mostly just, uh, this is the initial police report uh, that we've seen. So, I think that's warrant of summary. Okay, you know what? We're at page 180, chat. Uh, I think this is what I'm going to do. Because we're, we're about at the three-hour mark. I had a guy that is, uh, he said that he's researching this for a book. So he's got more information than just this. We will do a second stream on this, where we go over the last 100 pages. I'm going to try to track down some of these dates, and I'm going to try to track down the kids. Uh, I don't know if I'll find anything, but Maybe. So give me give me a couple days to put that together. You know, we'll make it a fucking Halloween stream. <laughs> Why not? We'll find out the mystery of the finders. The conclusion on Thursday the 31st. Did the kids die? Did the FBI feel guilty about this? How deeply was the CIA involved? Oh, we're going to find out all those mysteries. I'm going to try to match the dates to uh, news reports too because I want to find out what the fuck was going on with that Metro Police report. But before, you know, I, I want to do a summary, too, of what we know conclusively now after having read this. Uh, without, I guess, without my opinion on top of it. So here's what we know. In 1987, in Tallahassee, Florida, two men with six children were taken into custody. The two men were uncooperative, uh, faked, as a police report indicated, fainting to avoid being taken into custody. The children were malnourished, dirty, smelled badly, had no underwear, were wearing mismatched clothing, uh, had scratches and bug bites all over them, were very hungry and stated they only ate when they did well, and that when they did eat, it was raw potatoes and maybe some carrots. One of the investigators in Tallahassee did an examination of two of the children and found that they had sexually or been sexually abused. On a third child, they found that they had evidence of bite marks. Two warrants were conducted, one in Tallahassee and one in Washington, on the Washington location, the police stated there were classified maps of underground tu underground tunnels and sewer networks under Washington, D.C. There were also books at or one of the locations about mind control. When these warrants were being executed, officials from the FBI and the Customs Agency took over with the investigation. It was quashed initially after one day. The FBI agent, as described in the police report, did a walkthrough without investigating any of the actual evidence. The evidence itself from the 1987 Warren searches mysteriously vanished and could not be uh, located for the 93 inquiry, with one report stating it had been probably sent to Tallahassee for the detectives to use down there. One of the Metro Police Department investigators, 
who was involved in trying to figure out what was going on, interviewed an intelligent asset or intelligence officer from the CIA who told them that they were in fact stepping on their toes by doing this investigation. Further, it was explained that this group went back beyond or uh, earlier than 1987 potentially as far back as 1969, that they were involved in going to hostile countries such as the Soviet Union, North Korea, and uh, North Vietnam. The initial story about bringing the children to Mexico to go to a higher education school is contradicted by testimony from another person who stated they were told they were in fact going to China via Hawaii. The Metro Police Department officer who had been conducting his investigation stated he felt that the CIA was involved, that it wasn't just a nod from them, uh, but that they had their hands in this. And at the end of the day, with all this weird shit going on, after a week's time, investigation closed, children returned, and we didn't find out, and we didn't, none of the mysteries were solved. If witnesses are saying that before they showed up in Tallahassee, Florida, there were men with 10 children, and they showed up with 6 children, where did the other 4 go? What happened to them? Why in one of the Metro Police Department uh, reports does it state that they were uh, denying certain evidence was found at a warrant search? And then the next paragraph explaining that in fact that evidence was found at the warrant search. How could the CIA, the FBI, Department of Justice, Attorney General, House of Representatives, uh, Foreign Intelligence Networks, I'm guessing MI6 from the London Correspondence, and Interpol, all be involved in a group uh, and come to the conclusion that nothing's going on. Why would that many intelligence agencies be involved with nothing going on? But perhaps the most bizarre thing out of all of this is that in the middle of this uh, document dump by the FBI regarding the finders, in the middle of it, in between, sandwiched in between a U.S. Customs statistical uh, analysis and a letter to U.S. Customs, is an archaeology archaeology map of McMahon or McMartin preschool showing tunnels and talking about what was found there with uh, McMartin or whatever it is preschool being a place where children allege that they were victims of sexual abuse uh, and satanic rituals why did the uh, archaeologist notes state that there were in fact tunnels that they found pentagrams on objects and hundreds upon hundreds of animal bones in these tunnels that ran between this school and a, a neighboring property. It seems very bizarre that was put inside in between two custom documents talking about this. And we're only, with all of that, we're only 180 pages in. There are still 140 pages of this, plus whatever information the guy that uh, is looking to write a book about this might have, plus what information I might be able to find about it if you stumble on anything. If you come across an interview with one of the kids, with one of the police officers involved, uh, just any supplementary information you come across, send it to my good friend, Mr. Anti-Bully, over on Twitter, and I will incorporate it into our Halloween stream, where we conclude the mystery of the finders, and figure out what in the fuck is going on. You know, I, I can vaguely remember, in the 80s and 90s, that, uh, yeah, there was a thing known as the satanic panic. People were paranoid about their children being abused. A lot of PSAs were produced to protect children from strangers. And it seemed like cases like this were popping up in the news. And I remember that there was a heavy pushback saying that it was hysteria, that this wasn't happening, that people were overreacting, uh, that they, they were being silly, and there was, no, there was nothing real about it. And yet, reading over this information, it seems like there's some smoke here. It seems like there's some weird shit going on. And just comparing it to some of the things we see today, you've got people like Epstein that had a, a basically a sex island where world leaders would go to fuck young girls. Or you've got uh, Nick Nixivum, Davixium, however you pronounce it. Uh, basically a corporate cult headed up by a financier who also traded uh, in sex slaves and went as so far as to actually brand them with a cattle prod. That's two recent examples in the last few years. And I'm sure that's not, you know, that's not some new thing. That's not some new thing. This finder shit is bizarre. The Game Caller and his group of dedicated people who try to come off as some kind of hippie uh, lifestyle cooperative 
uh, where they're just they're just getting by, man. We're just gonna eat watermelons, dude. And yet, for some reason, they're traveling to Russia and North Korea, <laughs> and the CIA is telling people to back off. Nah, there's some fucked up shit here. So we will conclude on Halloween on the 31st. If you've got some time, if you're not super drunk at a Halloween party, uh, feel free to tune in. I'll try to do it, uh, let's see, we'll say 8 p.m. Eastern, probably till midnight. Probably probably take three or four hours to go over the rest of this. Uh, yeah, so any information, feel free to send it over to Mr. Antibully. He will get it to me. Uh, I will have a new video up as well, up on BitChute within the next day or so. Transtastic Tales number two, which I guess fits in the theme or fits in with the theme of the shit we're talking about now, since it's dealing with uh, James Yonker and a whole bunch of stuff. If you've seen the first episode, <laughs> you get the vibe of the series, I'm sure. Well, uh, thank you for coming out. I'll, I'll read through the super chats. I'll get through every one that I missed. Uh, but thank you for coming out. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll see you on Halloween. You can check out the new video in a day or two up on BitChute. Uh, have a good week. Hug your children. Don't let any of those glow-in-the-darks get near them. Remember, Sonic says it's no good. Don't don't trust them. All right? Don't trust them. All right, so let me, let me pull up. Uh, where is it here? There we are. And I will read through these. Uh, give me one second to get everything pulled up. And we'll go through. Ah, oh, there's so many documents in that fucking report. All right, chat. All right, I'm just getting things set up. Sorry, one second. Oh yes, I I see a chat. Uh, Jim, don't 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 uh, have an accident. <laughs> I'll try my best not to. Hopefully, no barbells fall from the sky, and take out Jimmy Boy. Hopefully, we can conclude our investigation into the finders. Oh, we'll figure it out. We'll try to figure it out. Actually, let me get this set up. I'll, I'll grab a drink to read through the super chats. Uh, I'll throw on I'll throw on a classic song while I'm doing that. Something a little different here. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, I'll put this on. All right, give me a few minutes, and then we'll go through the super chats uh, for everybody else. Thanks for coming out. Uh, there'll be a follow-up stream uh, on Thursday if you want to see the conclusion of this, and if we can get to the to the the truth about the finders. Ah, oh, well, that was a entertaining stream. It's so weird. There's su there's such weird shit in that uh, FBI file in the vault files. I'm I'm sure there's more weird supplementary material. I think it'll be good to do a follow up on that. Thanks for everybody that stuck around. I'll go through the super chats. Hopefully, you all had a a good weekend. I've been playing. Uh, is it Noida? You know, I started playing that game and I hated it, and I can't stop playing it. I put like 15 hours into it at this point. I, it, something's very addictive about it. I, I don't know what. Throwing little potions at people's heads and zapping them with my wand. I, I don't know why it's so addictive, but it is. I'm just running around collecting my gold, building my little wands up and dying, and then restarting again. All right, so let me... I will try to make sure I get all of these. Hopefully I don't miss anybody. If I do, I'm sorry. Uh, but I, I try my best when I do these. Uh, from Rude Dude. CIA stands for Child Injured Anally. Mike Testa, hey Jim, did you hear? Okay, no, I've read that one before. All right, hold on, just getting caught up. Uh, from Schwazum, Brigandine, Legend of Runeresia, you hype. If there's a sequel to Brigandine coming out, you bet your ass I'm fucking hyped. Uh, now, now I'm going to have to check that out. I love Brigandine. Like, that's one of my favorite PS1 games. Uh, Depressed Oni, good evening, Jim. What are your thoughts on Onion, or Onionson being covered by Chris Hansen? Didn't he threaten Chris with, like, a lawsuit? Didn't he say... If you cover me, I'm going to come after you. Uh, again, from uh, Schwazum. Hey, Jim, are you hyped for a Brigandian sequel? Are you a fan of the original on PlayStation? Yes, I am. I'm going to go check it out to see what it's about. That's such a fun game. It, it's basic. I know it doesn't have all the modern shit people like in their games. But I had a lot of fucking fun with that. From Mike the Bike, Eric Butts. Uh, Tetsa Duris, uh, thumbs up. From James Beanick. St. Terry warned us that he did. Joseph Jimenez, Jeff Who. From Justin Force, if Alberta plus other western provinces secede following the re-election of PM Blackface, what's more likely? More U.S. states or the Republic of Alberta? 
I'm going to guess the Republic of Alberta. From Meadow Fembot, will you be getting a yearly $99 Fallout 76 sub? <laughs> I didn't even get Fallout 76. I highly doubt I'm going to get the subscription service of it. Crossface your waifu, how do you feel about Josh and his stance on China? I don't actually know what his stance on China is. From the SPLC Flash, hey Jim, Giles Corey here. Watch Siege and join the Merchants Guild Goyim. Also, do me a solid and say, Dank is a mongoloid, Gills for mod. From Chem Trail Mix, greetings, Boomer Daddy. When will you have a stream with Nikki Rackets and Drexel? Y'all would make some awesome stream team. When's the next furry video coming out? And don't forget to eat more bugs. Well, I did a stream with uh, with Nick a while ago. Uh, we did one covering MBA uh, when he was, you know, running his mouth about Nick and his family. Uh, the next uh, free video... It's going to be coming up after the trans... Initially, I was going to put up uh, Free Pandemonium Episode 2, but with all the James Young shit and all the other stuff going on, I just jumped into Transtastic Episode number 2 instead. But a furry video is coming up. And my next stream, aside from the one on Halloween, is one with David Stay, mid-November, about aliens. So I think that'll be... I think that'll be fun. Dances with Metroid's Huffington Post. Oh, you always know it's going to be a good when it's Huffington Post. There's a lack of diversity in this child slavery in industry. Here's why that's a problem. From Z McBee, Matthew Dimitri has a big crush on you, Jim. Are you sure you don't want to roleplay with him? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not in the mood to roleplay with him. I do know he is a sovereign citizen, and he's probably ass-blasted about those videos. That's my guess. From Lady of Shallot, thank you for the stream, Jim. Please send a heartfelt yeet yeet a woo to all the French frogs. From Lime, hey, James O'Shaughnessy. You should go on the Dick Show. Anyway, here's some alcohol money, you Irish nibber. I, I enjoy the Dick Show. I wouldn't mind going back. From another nobody, Cool Guy Kai. Why are any adult straight person that pretends to be bisexual so they can lure a teenager into a relationship? Uh-oh, Onionson and Kai. From Ellie Neiman. Hey, Jim, there are three things you need to know. The Hong Kong protests ended, NordVPN got hacked, and the leader of ISIS got killed. I'm, I'm familiar with what happened to the leader of ISIS. I saw Washington Post was very upset their friend died. And they, they wrote him a beautiful eulogy. What did they say? That he was a, uh, not astute, austere, religious leader. From Joey Jojo. People that arm children deserve the worst of the worst punishment. Thanks for giving background noise why I play Killer Instinct 2 before work. From Giggy, a woo. Love me some fuel to end my uh, life on a Saturday night or a Sunday night. Love your content. Excited to see what you're going to post next. Uh, the next video will be up uh, Monday, tomorrow, or Tuesday at the latest. But it'll be up on BitChute. From the Space Cowboy 33, Jim, what do you think of Ellen's new Mars ship? Or Elon's new Mars ship? I haven't seen it yet. I don't know what he's designed. Is it an electric ship? Did he design an electric rocket? From Judas Rude, Terry was right about CIA children trying to seduce him. Terry was always right. He may have been. We may have thought he was crazy, but he actually may have been right this time. From A. Lamau, Magnus did nothing wrong. Secretly sent or er, sentient. Hey, JP, I know you're watching. Epstein killed himself from David. The vile delinquent. Pedo elites, trans people, furries, finders. How many more things do us Christians need to be right about before you pick up a Bible? <laughs> Lizard people? I don't know. Is there? Is that? Is that in one of the books that I forgot about? Is there? It's like Corinthians. And the Lord saith to you, thy lizard people live underneath the earth. Uh, from Mario Carter 13, finders, keepers, nine-year-old asshole breeders. From Jack Mirren, the bite of 87. From Seth Smith, Jim, would you consider doing an interview with Alex Jones in the near future? If so, what are the two subjects you would like to discuss with him? Uh, if I ever got to talk to Alex Jones, I'd want to talk to him about, uh, well, one, how, how he feels about the censorship push. I mean, he was pushed back onto his own platform. I know people have talked about this, and he's talked about this. Uh, but I want to know if he feels secure. Like, does he feel like he's put up, I guess, enough of, of a bulk work against what happened to him that they can't push him further? You know, they kicked him off social media. They kicked him off YouTube. Uh, but he still has his website. He still has his show. Uh, people still are buying products from him. You know, is, is that a way forward for other people? You know, if Alex can do it, can other people do it? You know, that's one of the things I'm really curious about. Uh, what were the other thing I'd want to talk to him about? I don't know. I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to like, 
we'd have to, I'd have to think up subjects. Uh, but I, I love a lot of the uh, things that are labeled conspiracy theories. I love that shit. That's half the reason I really like hanging out with David Stay, because uh, it's a fun conversation. So I'm sure we, I'm sure we could think of something. From Double Zero, I don't think that sounds like the Joker, more like the Riddler. From Eduardo Ramirez, shout out to Almighty Egg Gang, Rip Fetty Wap, 1738. Adam Silverberg, can you say hi to my boy Noah, 10-year-old fan? Uh, well, hello there, Noah. Stay away, 10-year-old, is he? Stay away from the CIA, Noah. They're not your friends. From Nigerius Fagidigus, uh, keep grooming me, you glow-in-the-dark CIA nigger, or I'll run you over with my truck of peace. From Creeper Weirdo, no bull, I literally just got back from work. Also, shout out to the Butthead, the Rageaholic, Sean Ranklin, and Memology. Space Cowboy 33, finders like a cult you in, counter a D&D campaign. From Big Anxious, long live Mr. Medicare, Lumberjack, why can't uh, we get a congressional investigation into this? Answer, they are involved and probably have ties to the com- or intelligence community, like the mob had ties to the FBI. From the Josh Sketch Show, I don't care about your views on morality being subjective or objective. This is objective proof of evil in our world, and no one can do much about it. From Nigerius again, plot twist, the fighters is actually being led by Jim, and this is how he grooms kids into joining his bullying cabal. From 2K2L, thoughts on Sonic Fox and his esports player of the year acceptance speech. But what about how he's pushing for pronoun tags at tournaments? I haven't heard his acceptance speech. Uh, but pushing for pronouns is fucking dumb. What a dumb thing to push. From Augusta Muth, Hey Jim, did you hear about the Lauren Southern gay couple scam on conservatives? Interested in your two cents? Since you covered rebel media drama before, archive, and then you, you give me a link. I, I vaguely remember something about this, uh, but it, the details uh, elude me at this point. Uh, but from what I understand, after that it got exposed, didn't Lauren just basically disappear from the face of the earth? She, she ran for the hills, didn't she? Am I thinking of the right thing, Augusta, or is this a different... There's been a couple weird things that have happened over the last year or so. Uh, I, I don't know. Hit my good friend uh, Mr. Antibully up on Twitter, and we'll talk more in depth about it. But I, I think that's what you're talking about. It's like some weird thing uh, where, where the, the couple, I guess, that was involved was working with some kind of uh, super liberal organization to go after conservatives. And there was an allegation, they, I think they blackmailed uh, Southern, or they got her involved somehow. Is that what we're, was that what we're talking about? If that's it, yeah, hit uh, hit Mr. Antibolia. From uh, Sean Korshall Buns. Colt, my dad beat me as an infant till I bled sleeping upright, but he doesn't touch my prick. <laughs> Thanks, fake Jesus daddy. Uh, I do, Alphabet man, done you wrong, buddy. Waco 93, siblings made me into a sanguine Lovecraftian censored. From Alex Better, Alex Jones was right. Hawkmania 117, tonight we are all Alex Jones, a very purple ostrich. They need they needed gifted kids to improve their sense of direction. You know, now that everybody's bringing up Alex Jones, uh, there's another song. Uh, the 1776 one's pretty great, but there's another one that's even better. Oh, it's the indie folk song. Should we listen to the Alex Jones indie folk song? Get relaxed for a minute here as we're, as we're going through... Uh, Super chats? Why not? I mean, it's going to take me a little while to get through these. Break them up every once in a while with like a clip. I think this is it. If this is the one I'm thinking of, it's really great. Store, the paradigm of absolute control. And that's why we're just out here doing simple things, pointing out that we're meant to be in nature and be natural. And this is where we find the source that God made to transcend the new world order. And that's why they want to try to keep us out of it. I'm angry. Mother wears a hood over her head. What the hell? 
That woman number one is ugly Imagine how bad she smells, man I'm told her and Obama just stink Obama and Hillary both smell like sulfur It's close to that evil and I feel it go Ah, ah, ah We're such self-centered crap We don't even know this hand itself Rising up against us Millions of pointed people Of the very worst type And I'm so pissed We're gonna steal your daughter at the mall I was watching Fox News. I watched Fox. <laughs> there you go, Chet. Oh, that's a great song. That's a that's some good shit right there. With all the talks of or all the talk of Alex, I, I felt like I couldn't uh, I couldn't ignore that one. Uh, from Sean again. P.S. Thanks for finding uh, FBI's missing front door hidden evidence. Alex Jones. All right, let me just catch up here. All right, there we go. Uh, from Trues, Googled Marion Petit. Assange came up saying he was one of the children in the group called the family organized by the Game Changer. Oh, well, we'll take a look at that. Uh, from Lyril, I'm pretty sure the blacklist is far more real than fiction. Every happening's in season one. Truth is stranger than fiction, but it is because fiction is obliged to stick to possibilities. Truth isn't. Proof to what you are. Who hasn't bought a kid or two? Quit being a frickin' Puritan. They were just taking the kids to Hogwarts. <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. From The Flush, God is real. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. It is against the powers and principalities beyond the world. Repent, yet. Jesus loves you. From Satan's Advocate, these people need to ride old Sparky. From Putty Tat, no federal violations. From Jason Weaver, I'm getting awfully sleepy. Let's just forget about it, Jim. From Ken, the finers are just libertarians, Jim. Tyler Knox, Epstein's not dead. From Big Anxious, gold team rules. From Ear Juice, Jim, can you define what a cuck is for cognitive thought? Are you still trying to work it out? I'm think, or I think he he's winning 100%, to be honest. Oh, bitwave.tv. Uh, well, there are multiple definitions for a cuck, uh, the most uh, direct of which would be raising another man's children, I, I guess, would be pretty cutting to the point, wouldn't it? Uh, you know, David Stay asked me this on his stream, too, because he was curious about the uh, the term. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, Preston Scott, QAnon predicted this declassification. There's a lot more to find. QMAP.pub. From citation needed, Zaimazu did nothing wrong. Bex fire, pizza anyone? Don't worry, it's kosher. From Donald S., when are we going to sell the tit beast hats? You promised on stream me, stream on gang stalking. Well, let me let me get right on those tit beast hats. Uh, for now, you can buy beautiful Medicare hats. Four out of five stars, or am I being detained hats on the storefront? Uh, for posterity, the remake of Medieval is very faithful. Recommend it. From By Keller, I heard that about the story on Art Bell show. Boss man Tyrellis, as I Tyrell, I hope that guy catches a bullet. From Dango Italiano, Jim, what manga have you been reading? Promise Neverland. Actually, you know what? I'll give you a list of the things that I've been reading lately. Because uh, I bookmarked them in case I wanted to go read them again. Uh, I think the most recent one I read was Ill Boy, Ill Girl, uh, which is about this attention whore that wants to become famous for being the kid that dies of a disease. And then he finds out a little girl has the same disease and she's going to die first. So he decides if he murders her, she can't get the credit. Uh, it's pretty funny. It's pretty good. Uh, what are the other ones that I've been reading here? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll put together a list. I've got them scattered about bookmarks. Uh, they're like four or five that I'm trying to keep up with. Uh, but yeah, it, it works out better than watching anime. Well, waiting four weeks for a fucking new episode is driving me crazy. 
I'd rather just read it. From Sarah H., the D.C. police found nothing wrong. The same police force that were pictured with Alfantes and Comet Pizza with the weird shit all over the restaurant. From Remike, seriously, what will it take for these people to go down? They seem untouchable. From Bixen Boxen, have you seen the Celtic Critics review of Pink Floyd The Wall? I know I haven't. Everybody keeps saying it's awful. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. From Slam Barry P., fuck Area 51, why didn't we storm the FBI? Tyler Knox, you gotta check out Alpha Genesis video, A Message to DX. It's almost as good as the spurging out on his parents. From Mike Hunt, going to have to watch later, watching the Patriots uh, dominate. From Mr. Abris, read your Pygmalion, a read through Pygmalion, was a fun read, but way too short of a story. Any other suggestions? Yeah, I found that when I was looking through like the horror tag on uh, Mangabot or whatever it is. Um, I, I just find something that appeals to you, I guess. Uh, I thought it was, you know, pretty good. Uh, it's weird. It's about mascots rising up, uh, but it was funny. From Osmodius uh, three five oh five, let me get a uh, underage child. From Michael Huzitz, I'm trapped in a dungeon. Please send help. From Craigson. Uh, just remember, when you're in a tight spot, as the song goes, you can get anything you want at Alice Restaurant, sing a bar, and walk out. Winter Wolf, this horse, or this whole story makes me feel like the informing or informing my local federal agency about my old high school mates that post cringy post Satan memes or pro Satan memes. Roman Catholics rise up. From Avra, chat, you are wonderful. From Lum Invader, it's ama- or I'm amazed. The general public has known about stuff like this. And the Franklin cover-up for years, and no one's doing anything about it. From Hammered Spud, can see Orion's belt clear from my back door. That means Alex Jones is basically Jesus, if my calculations are correct. From Lumberjack, I'm calling for a new crusade against the child moles. Uh, We need a few good men to burn the devils. Deus Volt Brothers. From Lurakel, now this is a good rat ironic. Or, uh, this is a good rat ironic. So anyways, guy. Plantation sensation, China is right about Islam. From Nigerius again, literal glow-in-the-dark, CIA knickers. Terry tried to warn us, and we just laughed. Foxman2248, did you ever get those Photon HD copies? The ones on YouTube are gone now. Uh, Yes, I did get backup copies of Photon episodes. I should have them saved on my hard drive somewhere. Um, I guess I'll take a look. I didn't know they were taking them down. I thought those were pretty much up forever. From Courier Alpha. Are you the one who suicided Epstein? I can neither confirm nor deny that. From Medicare's Lunicorn Archives, Terry Davis said literally nothing wrong. I have tap. Any idea when the next furry pandemonium will be released? The Kira vids were some of my faves for me. Loving the new content. Uh, probably in a week or two. I've got the Transtastic one coming up in a day or so, and then after that, about a week, week and a half, I'll have a new uh, furry pandemonium. From JD, 1989. Sounds like George H.W. Bush, Bill Casey, and their CIA bu- or buddies were busy. Uh, North Sea Hero, who needs SCP when we have this real stuff? Big Anxious, Jimmy, and the Lords of the Internet. From Guancaco, 14878. Are you going to re-upload the Kira Wolf stuffs? Uh, also, Jade Art Streams, when? Uh, probably no Art Streams, but I will, uh, just bit by bit, uh, uh, you know, I'll upload older stuff in between newer stuff. From Glurg Turkle, Jim has insider knowledge. Lull, your gorgeous, uh, your gorgeous baby. We truly do live in a society. Satan's advocate. The information needs to be spread. This is ongoing. Warden Cliff. Jim, you taught me to laugh again. You saved my life. Bexfire. Hmm. There's something gefelt the fishy about this. Oh, I okay. I've read these. All right. Let me see. I looped back on some of them. One second here. The real Asami. First time donator. Long time fan. Love the vids and keep doing what you're doing. Mike Tessa, Jim, I'm scared for your show. Rick hated this to be safe. Read that as well. A. Clifton, 218.87. Oh, that's about the Prensa Libra published article. I'll have to double check that when I get a chance. All right, let's see here. From Mark, same thing. Uh, what was the name of that jazz song? Also, thanks for shedding light on this. Trump 2020, Merc the Pedos. Uh, it literally is the first, <laughs> it's the first search result on YouTube for jazz that's not a live stream. I don't know the exact name of it. I just randomly pick one and put it on. All smooth jazz is basically the same. From St. Virus 2, this is what we are uh, this is why we are seeing pedophilia normalization. To reduce the stigma of the guilty as more evidence comes to light. Deep fake vids will crank it up. From 
Majin Sinister, your hero to us all. Filthy Casual, first time I caught your stream live. Jazz, Mexican Super Schools, and Florida. Hidden high notes on all of them, I know. Heath Hawk Noob, name Best Gundam. Oh, see, that's going to start a fight. No. <laughs> we'll, we'll be sitting here having an argument for the next two hours, and my voice is going out. From Truth TV, uh, hi, I'm from Portugal. Islam is right about women. Sean Patterson, I encourage you all to read on or this on the FBI's vault. The B codes on the side are the F or Freedom of Information Act exemptions that give you a clue as to what is redacted. Uh, from Surath, damn it, Jim, now I'm sad. Take my shekels anyway, though. Your juice cock wanted to ask if Metro PD can help us find all his black children. He thinks most are down at the docks giving favors for sailors, but who knows? I, I don't know. Best of luck hunting them down, I guess. From Mateo, it's election day here in Argentina. Can't wait to become Venezuela 2.0 when the socialists win. From Gino Anuzira, I probably butchered that. Gina Anuzira, I don't know. Detective Jim doing an actual journalism, wake up sheeple. From Swamp Pinions, I'm not a gamer because I don't have a life. I'm a gamer because I hate women and minorities. Matt Fields, Jim wants on, check your mirror. Please go on the kill stream soon. This would be a great topic. We miss you over there. Ralph needs his porch potato. Uh, from the real Asami, Tunnel Snakes Rule, Harris Saris, my psychology class said this was mass hysteria. Yep, I heard it described as that too when it was taking place. And I'm sure there's a component of that as well. Uh, but I, it, there's a lot of stuff in these reports. There's a lot of stuff in these police reports uh, and investigation notes, even the unredacted stuff that makes it very suspicious. And I just, I wonder if that information was more public at the time, if people would have been so quick to dismiss it as simple mass hysteria. From Ryan, Hampstead cover-up, Stefan Johansson Jr. Sticks be like, bro, it's a different strain, bro. That's not LaVey Satanism, bro. Different strain, bro. Just stop the satanic panic, bro. Now, I'm not saying that these were uh, Satanists. Uh, what I am saying, at least from the reports, is that these were things that were found there. And the term satanic panic is just what the public called it. I don't know what the finders are, other than a really creepy group of people that were definitely involved in some weird fucking shit. Now, you know, given that the CIA was involved and that disinformation campaigns were, you know, reported to be a part of that, uh, who knows? Maybe the paganism, the Satanism was used as a cover for even more devious shit. I don't know. But it's some very bizarre stuff. It's some very bizarre shit. Official smuggly frog. Look up the black car cases in Eastern Europe. Reports of government agents, demons abducting young women off the street uh, to rape. Also similar abuse cases alleged at the government here in Britain. You know, I remember there was a report about the UN. With the UN's uh, army or agents of the UN uh, being involved in uh, rape and child molestation. I, I, you know, I wish I had that to pull up right now. Uh, but you're talking about stuff happening in Europe. For some reason that sparked in me. Uh, it's very bizarre, and it's something that multiple countries have reported on about being unhappy about and not having it followed up on. Uh, from Double Eight, what an absolute clown world we live in. We need to purge the degeneracy. For the love of the game, check the wiki page for the trial. Damage control from Tidal Whales. Say PDF file five times quickly. Uh, probably not, because it's going to turn into something uh, terrible. Uh, from Van Rollington, thanks for the stream, Kang. If you need a good laugh, check out uh, Emmy Pearl A's channel or Beast of Opsum Lady. I'm not sure if she is a troll or next year cat lady. Robert Thrust. Hey, Medicare, if you're or if you're into this, then I suggest checking out Girls Town USA. Everyone has off themselves beside two, besides two, to my knowledge, since it's been going. Really? You're telling me everybody at Girls Town USA has committed suicide? I'll have to look into that. From Jason of the Great Awakening. White Hat Insiders inserting extras are the bread and butter of Freedom of Information Act requesters. Probably not an accident. From Maximilian 2000, the average IQ for black people is 85. That means that the average black adult is, an intel or as, is as intelligent as the average white 15 and a half year old. And half of blacks are less intelligent than that. From AF, Jordan, Minnesota, by Big Black, aren't you from there? Am I from Jordan, Minnesota? No. From John Brisson, Jim, the redacted chronology states the finders had passports. Oh, we already went over that one. A couple of uh, 
Uh, six comments? Yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm catching back up to some of the newer ones that I had read. Oh, hold on, I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything here. Uh, one second, chat. Okay, I think that's where I am. From Arrowist, uh, where was being molested makes you gay from? Uh, that was a PSA. <laughs> that was a PSA uh, that somebody made in the 90s. Obviously, I, I, I can't. Potentially, it's been edited a little. Uh, but it's just fucking ridiculous, and I love it. Uh, I'll put it up one more time for you. But yeah, I, I don't remember the exact name of it. It was like a series of five videos, uh, like after-school specials. And that one is just uh, fucking bizarre to me. Uh, here you go. Let's have a little reality check to make sure we all got the message. If something like this happens to you, know that it is your fault. You did wrong. And remember, being abused by a male does make you gay. Right. And telling someone about it does make you less of a man. The bottom line, if you are molested, you wanted it, you did something to deserve it. That make you weak. No offense. Being molested means you're gay. That makes you weak. No offense. <laughs> I just, I fucking love it. Uh, great. From Dingus Khan, is it strange that there has not been a single MSM article about this new info? Uh, well, not, I, I, I'm not surprised. I'll put it that way. From the cool, uh, for ID man, 697. But Six told me Pizzagate isn't real and Satanic Panic was actually just a moral panic. Wow, it's like he's not as smart as he thinks he is. From Skits, let the inter information fly, my dude. Dances with Metroid's 2019 Woke Sonic. If somebody tries to touch you and it makes you uncomfortable, that's no good. Unless they're trans, you bigot. From Lurik L, watch documentary Conspiracy of Silence. And it opens... Okay, I've read this one too. Right, I'm trying to make sure I don't miss any here. From 123456, in 1990, they didn't find any tunnels under McMartin using sonar, and the charges were dismissed in 90. I think the FBI did an oopsie. Uh, from Bomb the Zoms, Jimmy, you realize you're going to have to avoid grassy knolls for the rest of your life now, right? Uh, very true. From Tangent, Naruto running is er er, for Area 51, Sonic running is for McMartin Preschool. If you're being molested, just get out of there. From Confounded Feline, Kitsu is the best girl. J.D. 1989, so CIA invented crack and pedophile cults. How exactly did we win the Cold War again? From Slit Bodman, the finders made me rub Matt Groening's feet. From Mr. James Blobbington, Terry A. Davis was simply ahead of his time. McCarthy's ghost, when we asked that Hampshire guy to make tunnies, this isn't what we meant. Mike Testa, I was right in California, or I was right, California is the devil's capital. Uh, well, very true, I guess. It's probably why it's on fire right now. From Joni Baloney, the tribe has been napping and eating goy children since Moloch worshipping in Old Test. Sticks denied satanic panic. Visit Joni's channel. Forgone Jim, check out Jay Dwyer. Uh, also read Game of Nations. From Disgruntled Taco, love the show, Jim. But you got me reaching for my tinfoil hat every time you stream. From Ear Juice, Sticks groomed a teenage girl. If you upload this video with receipts, it's auto flagged by him. I have a Discord with shareable versions. Find it, watch, and decide. From Rocket Insano, a CIA op to stop fascism in Italy turned into a degenerate sex dungeon with all the agents and operators. The CIA wanted loyal sociopaths. It's not hard to believe this happened again in America. From Nash Meads, make this story public and start the boogaloo. From Ronson, Jim, have you heard the conspiracy that black helicopters aren't really helicopters? They're living biological surveillance creatures brought to life via NWO agencies that use GMO nano biotechnology. I have not heard that, but it sounds cool as fuck. From Possibly Double. Hey, Jim, why do you think they release this information? I have no idea. Uh, maybe to distract from something even worse? Who knows? From James Beanick. Theory 4, all of the above. From 004, the sex cult was intentional and another branch messed up and found out too much. From Sexy Legs. The tribe's been hard at work for millennia. Leon and Claire Kennedy. Jim, is there anything you'd like to say to those who pick up virtual waste off the floor for zero compensation? Uh, well, no, but now that you brought up uh, Leon and Claire, uh, there is something I would like to play. I think it's the last its the last audio recording of Chris Redfield. <coughs> this is Chris Redfield. I'm currently pinned down. I don't know how many of them there are. They just keep coming. My entire team is down. I'm doing all I can to survive. 
don't think I'm gonna make it. So I... <coughs> I need to make sure I leave this message. Please. Tell Leon Kennedy. I need him to fuck my sister. I won't be able to be there to make sure it happens, but... Damn it, you make sure that he does... Claire! Sorry, sis. This is all I can do now. You gotta, you gotta give her a baby. Just do it. Come on, buddy. Just do it. Uh, from Skinhead Stan, I studied intelligence studies and rogue counter intel agents. Founding a cult is about right for the CIA. They have a habit of screwing shit up like this. Uh, would not surprise me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The preschool map reminds me of Epstein's Island. From Greepole, uh, Jim, this is no different than ISIS child school shooter camps they discovered when they were arrested. Then, oh shit, they were found in another state having been set free to start again. From James Beanick, Gamer Fed rose up. Sean Turner, Terry was right, uh, ran over one. Say hey, glow in the darks. If you're trying to hunt Mr. Medicare, his real name is Matt Jarbo, leader and starter of Gamergate. From Ucian Fasius, when a sitting POTUS does something, it is no longer illegal. From Pongo D, upload live streams to BitChute under Hal. Liberty Prime 5000, hey Jim, where is Anthony's Wien or Anthony Wiener's laptop? I, you know, I remember he got into a lot of trouble and that kind of got shuffled under the rug, didn't it? It seems like every time a politician or a rich person uh, gets involved or caught for something, even if they get brought up on charges, the really dark parts of it seem to disappear or just be forgotten about. Very weird, isn't it? From Trolita, conspiracy theories are now domestic terror. Why did the feds drop a bunch of Pizzagate shit on their Twitter? Fishman5678, are you familiar with the Green Bomb speech in 92? It lines up with this. I know I'm not, but I'll, I'll give it a listen. Dr. Conman Caddick, enjoy your streams, Jim. Keep up the good work. Little Littlers, apparently one of the main heavy hitters in the redacted list is Colonel Michael Aquino. Look into it. His relationship with the LeVays, big spooks. Jared Oakley, Jim, what do you think about Alex Jones saying the elites are making deals with DMT entities? I, I don't know. I've never tripped on DMT, so I don't know what the entities are like. I've heard them described. Uh, it sounds like it would scare the shit out of me. I think I'll just stick with... Uh, vodka every once in a while and uh, maybe pot once in a while <laughs> I'm going to stay away from the DMT entities uh, from Sigma hey Nep, it's me Sigma from Lads from Ethereal, if you look at the very end of that long, oh we've already read that one alright, just getting cut up here, Sean Turner, CIA it's just, uh, read that one too All right, getting back to the beginning here folks uh, Thule Society look up Colonel Michael Aquino that's spelled A-Q-U-I-N-O from Shekelmeister, think about it. The old Hong Kong protesters used the British flag. Why all of a sudden are they using the USA flag? Yeah, I, I've read that one too. All right. Starting to get, uh, we're getting through them, folks. Uh, Satan's Advocate, hey Jim, where did Yang say he wants to pacify whites? I need a source to inform others. It was, it's videotaped. And he talks about how he's worried that white people are going to Holocaust Asians. And he also talks about how Universal basic income is essentially a way to pacify them. Um, I, I will look it up. It's from a while ago, uh, but it is a readily available video. It is out there. Uh, Rat Tail Tony, in your next episode of Furry Pandemonium, do you want to rip apart my art? Uh, if it's if it's funny, uh, Mr. James Bloggington is Sonic. Okay. I, I'm going over some that I've already read. I'm sorry, chat. Rocket and Sano, this has happened before Google Operation Gladio. Uh, the Packard Goose, we live in a society. Uh, ben Rogan Camp, Jim, thank you for helping me laugh at this stuff that should make me want to eat a bullet. Matt Black, man, love for entertainment. I'm a thug who loves getting fucked by a man. From Drew Straft, hey, what's your opinion on VR? Do you have a set? Uh, no, I do not. I think VR is pretty cool, but I think AR is going to be the big thing first. Uh, augmented reality has more applications, at least, and more uses outside of gaming. Uh, especially advertising, to be honest. I'd like to see some really cool AR shit first. Uh, from Soul 2 XL, look up Lion Guard fart scene for FP. It aired on Kid TV. Jason of the Great Awakening, D-class info avalanches to prepare the public for the dismantling of gro or the global criminal cabal. Stone Mexican guy, 
I love tomorrow. Tomorrow is amazing. Tomorrow is the best. The hotness. It's another story for news agencies to cram down the sheeple of the world to distract them from the Epstein story. From skits, look at D&D now. It's all about dissociation and letting you be something else. For non-professionals, I would think that it could be dangerous. Satanic. From King Kalma, thanks for the terminal cancer. The darkness is so comfy. RC1505, know what they say. Truth is stranger than fiction. From Putty Tat, there are no mi- <laughs> there are no missing kids, Goy. Martin Smogger, this is some sad shite Jimbo. Rock and Sano, what's Ross, one of the kids? Would explain a lot. It would explain quite a bit, I'll be honest. Slimo Jones, ten kids. Don't worry about the six kids. Those three kids are just fine. Why are you upset about that single kid? Lou Raquel, the kids were probably turned into hot dogs and pizza. Tell Daddy how big you are. Rank filthy clothes, living in a basement, and have to obey a game master. Sounds like a D&D group to me. Roll initiative, kids. From Justin Blood, great fertilizer for watermelons farming, equal four kids. From Kunstkrieg, Kinopix Studios. Patch Adams defended the finers, sicko. From Guancaco, 14878, what happened to the mic that you used for the demonic possession video you did? I still have the Blue Yeti. It's, it's somewhere around here. Sean Turner, goy, those kids aren't crying. Those are tears of joy. From Jimmy Walters, to be clear, you have no intention of suicide, committing a mass shooting, or being involved in violent crimes. I have no intention of doing anything, strange. I'm not going to go on vacation. I don't feel like going to the gym and uh, lifting weights. I'm not going to take a, uh, a walk through a Washington, D.C. suburb at midnight. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm just going to enjoy life and live it to the fullest. So if barbells fall on me, yeah, something happened. From Darth Slater 1, someone needs to pull some a super hack and put a link out of this on every TV in the U.S., Jason of the Great Awakening. Why do we get the feeling we're watching Jim get cued, then Epstein in real time? Plantation sensation. Tim Pool is one of the children. Filthy casual indie for Jim falls into a goat pen. And Fataku, you're the one guy willing to report on this. We need you, Jim. No bunked gymnastics. And I think I'm almost caught up. Uh, let me see here. Oh, sorry, guys. Just trying to get to everybody. Uh, okay. We're almost, almost finally caught up. From Eduardo Ramirez, what is a glow gang, Mr. Minecraft? Oliver Daniels the Fourth. any idea where the abused children are today? I uh, know, but I will look into that for the next stream. Grody Grungus, this ain't Chinese money, but it'll have to do. From Mark, Durst has best music in Brigandine. Radio ruined, great stream, Jim. Have you seen the new Vice video about having sex with bugs? <laughs> I'm not surprised there's a video of that. Red guy, this makes David uh, Pilates missing 411 make sense. Rabbit corn, sometimes you just create rape cults. It's no big deal. What? You haven't done that before? <laughs> uh, from Killing Munch for the Halloween stream. I'm going to send you the videos from Fiona Barrett and Jay Parker. Documentation and explanation of satanic sacrificial rituals. Uh, then I can explain what I know on my end. From Maxi Stoneman. Jim, haven't you heard that Palesti- or Pal- Palestinians dug those tunnels? Joseph Jimenez, obligatory boogie died super chat rip. A rip and pepperoni boogie. You are not forgotten. We're praying for you, buddy. From Trump Nation, you're not going to believe this, but it's true. New beetle named after climate change activist Greta Thunberg. From Caleb Lambright, I can't believe you didn't get Mandar to say NNRU. From Dick Rambone, perfect timing, I'm tripping on shrooms. From Jarell0401, check Dungeon Seeker hardcore revenge story. I'll make sure to check it out. From Don Gamer Guy, Jim, show my adult game Patreon, please. Diddler Games. From De Facto Leader, have you seen that Spoonie has been decreasing his streaming content? You're the Spoonie Tang on the way. Oh, I'm sorry, increasing, not decreasing. From Rad Elmo Pimps Hose. Tell Daddy how big you are. Sodom and Gomorrah scale rating. On this particular one, I'm going to give it an 8. I'm going to give it an 8, fiery 8. From Joseph Jimenez. Hasn't a disproportionate number of people our neo-boomer age been screwed as a kid? I feel that most of the people I meet these days have some kind of trauma as a child. Makes the old noggin joggin. Motorola 762. Play Alex Jones anime intro. Boxman2248. Do you ever plan on posting the video on Chris Chan's mom? I uh, know. That that came and went. Uh, from Shadow Kane. Robert Steffer's book 1666 Salvation Through Sin is the Sebastian Frankist uh, Nicolians 
It's about the Jewish Messiah and his religious inversion. And I know I pronounced that last one wrong, but I, my, my throat. Oh boy, I'm talking too much. Jared Hard Norris, I've compiled the images of David's or from David's stream. Your time is up, buddy. And finally, never so clear as this: the Bible is fine, but these evil cabals are deep in major or in every major church too. Nothing is safe. Protect and cherish your family. And I think I've got a few stream labs, and then that's it. Uh, we're caught up, and uh, we should be finished here. Make sure I didn't miss any. All right, uh, one second, chat. Uh, from Praxis Seizure, clean the palette with Destiny versus Hassan arguing over whether or not it's okay to use the N-word in private. I actually watched that. There are a couple of videos about the whole uh, shit fit with Destiny using the hard R in private. They seem to be very upset with his ability to say what the fuck he feels like. Uh, bonus meme clip, okay, uh, from Regent. Raffle, I don't give a fuck. I go ham on Nigers all day. I pile up Nigers in the f in the flatbed. I eat the bodies. I don't fucking care no more. I just go. Holy fuck, Nigers are sly bitches like dinky little horn fags. And it's a blue falcon. Root or rootless cosmopolitans. They're going to need to shill deep fakes real hard to cover this up. All the fucking pedos. Jim, JFK was right, Pizzagate was true, and Terry Davis was a savant. A rip in peace Terry. Ahead of his time, but not forgotten. Not forgotten. All right, everybody, thank you for coming out. If I missed your super chat, I'm sorry. I try to get to all of them. I will have the conclusion of the Finder stream on Halloween. After I have a chance to look up some more information, we'll go through the rest of the FBI report. Uh, again, a new video will be up on BitChute in the next day or so. And then the Halloween stream will obviously be on the 31st. I hope you all have a good week. Hug your family. Don't trust anybody if they glow in the dark. Never trust those glow in the darks. Well, happy Halloween chat. We're finally here at part two of Finding the Finders. Oh, it's been an arduous few days waiting for the remainder of the FBI file to be read. 180 fucking pages. 180 rue out of the 340 pages. We've got 120 to go. More than 120 to go. My math is terrible. I am a dumb motherfucker. We've got a lot of pages to go. I hope you're excited. I also have a guest coming on. Somebody was researching the finders for a book they're writing. It's going to fill us in on the details on what's going on with the degenerate fucks known as the finders, a sex cult that preys on children that was originally started as a CIA counterintelligence operation. Bravo, CIA. Way to knock it out of the ballpark. Oh, well, we got a few things to talk about before we get into having the guest on, before we get into the remainder of the FBI files. This is going to be a relaxed stream. Who doesn't love relaxing to the screams of children? That's what I call a brilliant Halloween. I'm just going to take it slow. Take it nice and slow. All right? Enjoy ourselves. It's a spooky evening. A lot of scary things happening. Nothing scarier, really, when you think about it than a story that involves glow-in-the-dark monsters abducting children. I think it fits the theme quite well. A little bit of news popping up before we get into the proper discussion of the finders themselves, but it is related. How could it not be related? I'm talking about our boy, Mr. I Have an Egg-Shaped Penis, Jeffrey Epstein. You may remember this champion. The only man in the world to commit suicide via somersault from a bunk bed using a roll of toilet paper as the noose. Pretty amazing, I'll be honest. I mean we all know it was a tragic suicide, chat. Can we get a can we get a R for Rip and Pepperoni, Jeffrey Epstein, for your top bunk suicide in jail with malfunctioning cameras and guards that weren't really guards but who were also asleep at the time? Awfully convenient. Well, apparently it's not just everybody on earth that thinks that this is uh, awfully convenient other people apparently have been having some issues with the Jeffrey Epstein suicide story including a coroner Jeffrey Epstein's autopsy more consistent with homicidal strangulation than suicide Dr. Michael Bodden reveals a what you mean he didn't commit suicide somebody get me the list we need to update those fucking numbers stats
apparently. Apparently, you know, medical examiners and coroners when reviewing the evidence thought, hey, uh, this smells like bullshit. I don't think this guy, I don't think this guy committed suicide. Now, they couldn't speculate as to why he would have been homicidally strangled. I can, though. Here's my quirky little theory about what's going on with Jeffrey Epstein. Though I've laid it out before, I'll lay it out again because it fits in with the motif of the finders. Jeffrey was murdered because he provided elite, powerful, rich men with children to fuck. And there's nothing elite, powerful, rich men hate more <laughs> than being chastised for fucking toddlers. Presidents, prime ministers, and princes all use this guy as their pimp. There's quite a bit of alliteration going on there. So when Mr. Epstein was taken into custody for the second time, the second time, this time no house arrest, no slap on the wrist. Mr. Epstein, you rascal, constantly fucking those kids. We're going to have to punish you this time. I think it made people nervous. I think Mr. Epstein was, of course, murdered to keep quiet about what was going on. Have you noticed how it just disappeared in the news? Until recently with this article. Anybody else notice some strange coincidences going on this last week or so? Let me see if I can lay it out. See if I'm crazy on this, chat. Maybe you can follow where I'm going with this. There are three stories I've been noticing, all involving uh, the intelligence community. The first would be Mr. Epstein. You can't provide underage hookers to the most powerful people in the world without some intelligence community as uh, organization paying attention to you, perhaps facilitating it. Maybe it's not American. Maybe it's another nation. I don't want to be too on the nose about it. But nonetheless, this story pops up during this week. What, what other stories do we have? Well, we've got the impeachment going on of Donald Trump. And the key witness, the person that lodged the complaint, what do you know? Looks like they're a CIA asset. So that's two stories involving the intelligence community. What would the third be? Oh yeah, the finders. The fucking FBI releasing documents related to an organization that basically stole kids and then fucked with their heads by performing fake satanic rituals, sexually abusing them and beating them. All to own the Russians, apparently. Not 100% certain. Hopefully our guests will be able to illuminate <laughs> on this subject a little bit more than I can. And so what the fucking motivation for that whole shit show is. So you've got three things. Epstein, the finders, and of course our impeachment guy. I'm just going to call him impeachment guy. It sounds neat. It seems like Deep State's getting ass fucked this week. It's a bad week to be CIA. Oh, you glowing motherfuckers. You must be just ass mad, furious, fuming about the things that are going on. Your dirty little secrets are getting just drawn out into the public. Fucking shameful. I thought you were supposed to be super secret spies and shit. This is sloppy, sloppy, sloppy work, CIA. I hear the FBI and the NSA call each other daily to laugh at you. Just the shit directly in your face. <laughs> For your fucking incompetence. I should probably do a small recap of what the last stream was about before we get into the new stuff and continue off where we left off. In Tallahassee, Florida, in 1987, police were alerted to a bizarre situation taking place in a park. Two men were escorting six children. Upon contact by the police, the children seemed to be malnourished, covered in bites and scratches, Wearing dirty clothes, looked disheveled, smelled awful, didn't have underwear on, mismatching socks. Everything was just screaming, this is not fucking right. When the police decided to take all these people into custody, children and adults, the two adults apparently tried to fake, or fake a fainting attack. That's a, that's a new one. Fake a heart attack, get out of getting arrested, apparently. I'll have to give that a try the next time I get a DUI. But it didn't work. Once they were brought to the police station, somebody, for whatever reason, decided to call the police and say, hey, I'm going to murder those kids. So they put them in a protective custody. Fast forward a little bit of time, you've got the U.S. Customs officials, the FBI, and other organizations all investigating this, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Search warrants are served. 
Materials are uncovered, including a bizarre ritualistic photos involving men in white sheets having children decapitate goats. I've heard some people try to excuse away this activity and say, well, these weren't satanic rituals. The kids were just learning how to hunt and skin an animal. Well, that's weird, because I grew up in a family that hunted. Grew up in a family that owned a farm. You know the one thing you never really did when you were dealing with animals? When you were killing them for their fur or their meat? You didn't decapitate the fucking thing and then play with its blood and hand it off to the young kids. That's not, that's not really at the top of the fucking list. They also found nude images of the children. And in one report, they talked about underground maps in D.C. A secret network of tunnels. Sound familiar? Might, uh, might make you recollect uh, a recent event, something called Pizzagate, or a pizzeria shop with connections to people in the DNC, like Podesta, was accused of running a child prostitution ring out of a pizza shop and uh, maybe utilizing underground tunnels to do it. Now, of course, that's been beaten to death in the press, and I won't really go into Pizzagate, but I'd like to remind you, when the owner initially spoke with the press, they said that they kept their ingredients, their tomatoes and everything else, in the basement. And then later on, when they were pressed on having a secret underground, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, cathedral of fucking pain, told them they don't have a basement. It's a little sketchy. Nonetheless, so you have the all these different intelligence organizations and police organizations looking into these people. They must have been arrested, right? I mean, one of the officers that examined two of the children said they showed signs of sexual molestation. One child showed signs of human bite marks on their fucking arms. It would be insane not to put those kids into protective custody and arrest the adults. Nope, they let them go. They let them go, and the FBI seemingly interfered with the warrant searches. The evidence that was gathered was said to be sent to Tallahassee Police Department, but oopsie, it got lost. One of the later police reports talking to a witness in the area before the group moved onward into Tallahassee and said, oh, I remember those men and the 10 children they had. 10 children. They were arrested with six. So what happened to the other four children? Now, one of the mysteries from the first stream was a uh, kind of confusing police report to read where they were speaking of a writer. I thought they were referring to a journalist. Somebody told me, no, no, that's... That's what the officers referred to or as themselves uh, when they're putting down a report. It's just, it's just how they do it. It still doesn't explain why in one paragraph they say no evidence related to the, the search warrants that has been speculated has been found, and yet in the next paragraph say, oh no, we totally found that shit. So there's a lot of very bizarre stuff inside this FBI report. Perhaps the weirdest would be that this is focusing on the finders, and yet, and yet, when you're reading through it and customs officials are talking about how many pedophiles they busted and their operations and scope and the cost, inserted between that and a letter from the customs officials to somebody asking about investigations, there are fucking maps from a archaeologist about McMartin Preschool, which is one of the uh, big stories regarding kids accusing teachers of making them participate in satanic rituals and being molested. So you've got to ask yourself, what in the fuck is going on? It seems like a very uh, bizarre thing to kind of just shuffle in there. Just, just shuffle it in, page 48, call it a fucking day. So that's where we are. That's, that's what we've gone through. And the 180 pages of the FBI report, that sums up the big, the big keystone pieces. I may have uh, missed a thing uh, here or there, but that should give you a general idea of where we left off. We still have 120 pages to go. We still have somebody coming on to discuss the things that uh, are related to the finders. Namely, people that have investigated them, uh, what I'm assuming, who, who they are, where they went, what's going on. You know, oh, that's right, I, I did forget one piece. One, one tiny piece, oopsie. It turns out the finders organization is connected to the CIA. In fact, CIA agents have outright admitted that, telling the police that they're stepping on their toes about the investigation. They are also supplied with passports into hostile nations at the time, such as North Korea, North Vietnam, and uh, China. Or no, I'm sorry, and Russia. And even the Tallahassee incident. 
one of the witnesses before they got down to Florida had said, oh yeah, they had said they were going to go to Hawaii and then China. So it seems like there's a lot of fucked up shit going on. And my original hypothesis, my theory on what this is, is pretty straightforward. I think the CIA used this group to do terrible shit, to own the Russians, or some other fucking thing. And, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, at least this far, and to say it probably grew out of control. (laughs) And this is some kind of a cover-up because of the sheer embarrassment of having participated in this just disgusting shit. Now, we can speculate why the FBI decided to drop it. Again, it's interesting timing, considering everything that's going on with the intelligence community for the past week or so. Uh, So I will get ready here to bring our guest in. We'll talk for about a half an hour to an hour, go over the rest of the pages. You know, nice spooky Halloween stream. Read a few super chats here uh, before we get into the bulk of it, so I can break this up a little bit. I hope you're all having a great Halloween. Or I'm sorry, a, a happy, spooky, scary skeleton ween. Let's see what we've got here. From Camille Target. Taggart. Oh, God, fucking awful at pronouncing things. I hope the stream gives lots of laughs. <laughs> I don't know if you tuned into the right one. I'm really sorry, Camille. They're needed. My dog, my best friend, is dying right now, and it hurts so bad. I want you have my sympathies. I am a uh, pet owner. I've always loved dogs, preferred them over cats, and it is tough when your pet dies, especially when you have to put them down because they, they're just too sick or they're too old. It's uh, it's rough. You have my sympathies. From Point Curation, happy Halloween. Hope to see lots of Justin Trudeau costumes out there. <laughs> Are you going to be able to see him at night? If it's Justin Trudeau, he's going to blend into the background. From Padre Speaks, Jim, you need the heavy grinder remix of Pure Power in your ear. Gripers rise up and dress respectively. Optimistic Nihilist, please do a video about Mike Stuckberry. He's a British Antifa journalist who got fired from his teaching job after trying to ban the word banter, but there is so much more cringe to explore. The name sounds familiar, but I'm not... I can't place a face to it. Leon and Claire Kennedy, Jim, when are you and Jade going to get married and pop out some Zoomers? Oh, well, I'm going to wait for the second Civil War to end first before I start popping babies out. From Sinac 8, just the PSA, Greedfall and Outer Worlds aren't good games. Wait until they go on sale before you go and buy them. And Epstein didn't commit suicide. I agree. Also, from what I hear, Outer Worlds has quite the unique ca- uh, cast of characters for NPCs. Lots of uh, lots of very ugly women. What is it with Western games being able to make attractive women? Is that some kind of a fucking disability? It's like any Western dev that tries to make a game, regardless of what it is makes the most ass-ugly women that have ever existed in the digital landscape. Foxman2248, hey, Jim. Monograph is threatening to call VP Pence to sick the Secret Service on some dude he's in a slap fight with. I'm sure the Secret Service love getting involved in YouTube arguments. Drew, never forget, Comet Ping Pong, hard drive, shot by gunmen. Lightning Star, would the country be better off without religion? No, no, I don't think it would. Zimzam Flimflam, I'm a heterosexual white male, and I own Chainlink. You're going to make it, bro. One day you're going to be driving that Lambo right through the uh, McDonald's drive-thru. You're going to look at the poor son of a bitch serving you, and you'll be like, that was me before I believed in Chainlink. Again, from Zimzam Flim Flam. Chainlink is a scam, by the way. Don't buy any. You can't trick me. You just want it all for yourself. I'm going to go buy three times as much right now. From Winter Wolf, you're doing God's work, Jimbo. Me and the girlfriend have really been enjoying your streams. Have you ever heard about the theories about John JonBenet Ramsey's father being a part of a pedo ring? I've heard a few. I've heard some uh, theories regarding a murder and who took play or part in it. You know, speculation between the father and the brother. Lots of really fucked up shit. From Legato Amati, Medicare, circumcised or uncut, yourself and preference. Myself and preference? Well, I don't really have a preference for other men's penises. I'm not king of bowl. As for am I circumcised or uncut? Oh, they snipped me, bro. They snipped me and they made some makeup out of it or something. I don't know what they do with them, but they collect them like they're fucking lucky charms. The Mind Corporation. Greta was an agent of the deep state to distract from Epstein. Oh, you need to eat some bugs, sir. Read, uh, let's we'll read four more here and then we'll jump in. Uh, Lou Raquel. Hello, all my N-words from Krogan Scormhammer. All that comes to mind with this whole thing is that they went on 
with Whitey Bugler and Boston FBI sketchy ass. Permafrost Deep State only killed Epstein once. Yahoo! And finally, Arrowist. So basically, I'm, uh, first of all, pretty much like, um, uh, basically, I've been going ahead and have pretty much been basically diddling kids. <laughs> Ross, I didn't know you were super chatting, people. Thanks for checking in. All right, let me get the hangout set up here. Bring on our guest, and we're going to get into uh, the deep lore behind the fucking finders. So this should be good here. One second, chat. Just bear with me as I get this set up. Hopefully I don't fuck anything up. I am an old, confused man like Seb Gorka. I don't know what the fuck's going on. In fact, let me complete the aesthetic of who Seb Gorka is by doing retarded shit that nobody should ever do. I mean, I've already gone over my limit. What are we, 20 minutes into this, and I haven't had 28 breaks? But I'll pull a Seb Gorka while I get this uh, set up. Buy my fucking hats. I don't. I can't sell you Metamucil. I'm sorry, chat. I'm not capable of doing that right now. But I can sell you some fucking hats. These are the best hats ever made by slave labor. Only, only the most despairing Chinese children are allowed to work on these hats. Look at that stitch work. Do you know they get whipped if they don't complete them on time? And those mugs are high quality. I'm talking the best clay available and mixed with the finest, purest orphan tears. Those are available for purchase. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hell. But that's fine. All right, let's uh, get our guest in here. All right, they should be here momentarily, hopefully. If everything is set up properly. And then we can get on with it. If we have any problems with the guests, we'll just jump right into the FBI report. So, either or works just fine. So, how's your evening going, chat? Enjoying yourselves? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Wait, if I really wanted to make it the whole Seb Gorka experience, right now I should be just walking in a circle on webcam, looking at my phone and crying because people on the internet are laughing at me. I mean, that, that's something that apparently happens a lot to Seb Gorka. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, hopefully our, our guy jumps in here soon. I forgot, there's a bit of a delay on the stream. YouTube is fucking with their technical side and just ruining their live streaming experience. I don't know why they're doing it. But it's something they've decided needs to fucking happen. In fact, there's a little alert on the live stream page that tells you they're getting rid of the events. And they're going to make it mobile only. Because, you know, everybody loves that mobile shit. You just got to make it more inconvenient for the end user. That's the YouTube way. And maybe they saw Twitter and thought, we can fuck this up more than they can. Let's, let's just butcher it. All right, I'll give our guest five minutes here. Uh, probably take him a little bit to get here. You know what, I'll just, I'll read a few more Super Chats to kill some time. And then we're going to get into the Finders. Which is still just fucking amazing to me. Anybody else find it weird that no press or press outlets are really talking about this? Anybody find it strange that this gets dumped? And even if they don't think, oh my god, this is the most amazing shit on earth, there's still a lot of explosive stuff in there. You'd think somebody would be talking about it. But only one or two places. The most, the majority have just completely ignored it. Pretended it didn't happen. Hello? Uh, Hello? Hey, uh, Jim, it's me. It's John. How are you doing? Okay, fantastic. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, I'm excited to talk about this. I've been a long-term fan. Oh, yeah. Let me uh, let me pull down the hats thing so people take this seriously. <laughs> Sorry. All right. One, one second. I think our audio is good. We should be great. Uh, do you want to, uh, I, I guess we should start with, you want to just inter give a quick introduction to the audience? Yes. Um, my name is John Brisson. Um, I run the We've Read the Documents YouTube channel. I have been investigating the finders for about three years, as well as other parts of Pedogate, whether it's McMartin Preschool or Franklin Coverup or Jeffrey Epstein. And I'm um, currently writing a book on the finders about halfway done. Fantastic. All right. Uh, so if you had a chance now, when the FBI dropped this, which was like a three, four days ago, if you had a chance to read through what they released and how does that compare to the documents that were kind of already circulating uh, before their, their disclosure? Um, Yes, I have. I've read through them. I've done a stream on them. Um, there is a difference. There was uh, FBI documents that were released by a Freedom of Information request by Vice Reporter Ali Conti about two years ago. 
Um, and some of the evidence that's in this new FBI vault drop is new compared to what was in previously before. And I never thought I would see the Metropolitan Police Department document, Jim, because it was classified a secret. And I was shocked when I opened up the files looking through there and I saw the Washington Metropolitan Police Department document and it's still redacted, but it was still some information that even I didn't know. And I believe it was written by uh, Detective Jim Bradley of the Metropolitan Police Department was who wrote that document. Now the uh, Metropolitan um, one, that's the one based in DC. The Tallahassee one's a 75 page one. The Metro yes. one is like 20 or 30, isn't it? Yes. And there's also supposed to be other reports too. another one that's classified as top secret or top serial uh, that still has not been released and no one has ever seen. And that was in the previous FBI leaks. OK, well, l let me start like this, I guess, um, it, it, because I, I I remember this a bit. I, you know, I've heard of the finders here and there. Uh, maybe it was a video I watched on it, you know, something like that. But it wasn't anything that was really at the forefront. I saw this get released, and I started reading through it. And the things that really struck out to me as I was reading this uh, were, like, I guess three things. Uh, one were the inconsistencies between how the, the two gentlemen that were arrested in Tallahassee tried to present themselves and the reality that seemed to be taking place with the police. Um, yeah. They, you know, like, it, they try to make it like, oh, we're just kind of a hippie commune. It's an alternative living style. And yet you read the police reports and you're hearing things like children with bite marks, scratches, smelly, uh, disheveled, told they're only able to eat as a reward. And, you know, one cop, uh, one female officer had said something about, well, it looks like there's evidence they've been molested. And I, just that on its own, even if you took away the whole cult thing, even if you took away, you know, everything else we've learned about it, it seems very bizarre to me, you know, their story and the reality of what kind of seems to have happened behind the scenes that these kids were ever released or that these people weren't nailed to a wall. I mean, that's the first thing. What are your thoughts kind of on that? Well, on the bare minimum, these children were abused by their quote unquote alternative lifestyle. Um, if you take out the uh, sexual molestation that may or may not occur, we don't have st strict concrete evidence like we have in the McMartin case, where if you look at the medical documents, there are many there was at least five or six that we have that went to trial for McMartin that's definitive that they were molested by Ray Ray Bucky. Um, but with the finders kids, with, with Jordan Areco, uh, the female, uh, par her hymen was partially broken, um, but they were debating whether or not that was signs of sexual abuse. We don't have enough really details on that. However, I'll get to a minute of why that may be. You'll find it very interesting. Uh, the boy, Max Livingstone, um, he had a lack of inner sphincter control, but that could have been because of his poor diet, because the fighters, like you said, were only giving food as reward, and they probably were given vegan food. Um, so the sexual molestation, it was never really fully investigated. You know, the FBI, the, Tal the Jacksonville FBI shut it down, and the guy that they brought in to investigate it was a guy named Nyman Greenberg, um, who was the head of the Chicago Masonry Hospital. And he had also had been the main um, main um, witness uh, or expert for the defense, should I say, in McMartin, uh, to, to claim that the children were not molested then. And in another uh, case called the Jewish uh, Community Center case, the JCC. Uh, so this is the third case that Greenberg had, quote unquote, so, fixed, so, in my opinion. So Dr. Greenberg is telling people the kids weren't molested in this one, the Jewish Community Center. What was the, what was the third one? McMartin Preschool. He was the main... Um, so th this guy's involved in all of this shit. Yes. That's yes. really bizarre. So he comes in. He says, nothing to see here. Don't worry. Everything's perfectly fine. These kids are well adjusted, even though, you know, the kids urinated and defecated on the rug at, at the Tallahassee Police Department after they had been um, put into custody. So they're, um, they're, they're shitting and pissing on the floor like an animal. I, I, the way some of those police reports made it sound was like the kids were... Because they said they hadn't seen, like they weren't exposed to things like staplers and TVs and radios. Yeah. How is it that you could? This is what I find so bizarre about it, and even just the small pieces I've seen. You have kids come in with clear signs of at least physical abuse. Yes. You have kids come in that are underfed, malnourished, smelly. They're not clean. They have dirty clothes or missing clothes. They're confused about modern things. They're confused about modern concepts. How would the FBI or anybody involved in this investigation say? You know what? No, it looks good. We're not even going to push it further than this. I mean, what is your, what's your speculation as to that? 
Well, they pushed, I mean, the Tallahassee Police Department did. They tried their best. I mean, they, you know, they put the kids into protective custody. They went in foster care for a time period. The finders women showed up that were their mothers. I mean, the, 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 the mothers and the fathers, for example, um, um, the guy that gave the false report is, is Houlihan, which turned out to be, um, what's his name? It was Douglas Ammerman, and it was Hollowell, James Hollowell. Well, Hollowell, he was the father of uh, stepfather of Jordan Rico, the girl, and um, John Paul Pope, whose name was James Michael Hollowell III. So he was the father of two of the children, and his wife was Paula Areco. Um, so you know he, the other children that were there, they all so the six children that were that were they were brought into custody from the van. They all had parents within the finders. Um, now, could, actually, now we're, uh, could I could I interrupt for a second? Because somebody yeah. somebody had said something on Twitter. I didn't have a chance to look into this. Uh, it was regarding the finders saying that they had moved, or that uh, either recently or currently uh, had tried to be based in like Thailand or Taiwan. And and you yes. said uh, the mother's yes. name was Arico. Were were a lot of these kids mixed? I mean, were they bringing in women from Asia because they thought it would keep them quiet? Do you think or? Um, the all women seem actually to be Caucasian from what I can tell. Um, okay. uh, said was one of the last names. Noth was one of the last names. Um, now later, the, the, the interesting thing you're talking about that with the whole Taiwan, Taiwan connection was there was an investigative journalist named Wendell Minnick. He wrote about the finders, um, in a book about spies in the 1990s. Now there's an acclaim that he, uh, you know, became a finder, went to Taiwan, got kicked out of South Korea because uh, he claims he was writing about North Korea, which doesn't make any sense. But there was a claim in a message board back in sometime in the mid 2000s that instead it was because he was allegedly molesting uh, 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 school children. And that's why he got kicked out. But anyway, when I tried to contact him on LinkedIn, Jim, to get any information from him, he added me. But as soon as I mentioned, hey, what about the finders? He immediately blocked me. Yeah, well, I could imagine there's going to be a stigma surrounding this. I mean, e even though it doesn't seem to be covered quite a bit, um, it, at least for that initial week or two in the 87, it seemed to really pop up in the news. And then uh, for a little while, too, in the kind of early 90s, I think, when uh, Congressman Rose is it and others. Uh, Lewis, were, Lewis, yeah. Lew Congressman Lewis and Congressman Rose. Yeah, when they, when they were kind of, uh, I guess, taking a look at it, if it was their constituents that were interested and brought it to their attention, or if it was a pet project, I'm not 100% certain. I know the answer to that. It was uh, the investigator who I interviewed on my channel, Henry Clements, brought up to Tom Lewis um, that he had found information that there was a connection between the Glendale Monastery School case and James Toward and the Finders. No, I, I think uh, the second thing that really struck me, so the first thing is the state of the children and not continuing the investigation. Um, the second thing that really stuck out to me kind of when looking over these documents would be that it seemed like the police departments that were involved, whether that was Metro or Tallahassee, really did have a concern. They were really concerned about trying to follow up with this. But it seemed, on the other hand, that anybody that was in, uh, you know, in an uh, intelligence organization or even customs or those kind of groups almost wanted to, I don't know if they wanted to sweep it under the rug, but there was a big disconnect between these two investigators. Is, is that something you've noticed too, or is there a story to it? A hundred percent correct. The Tallahassee Police Department definitely seemed like they were trying to get down to the bottom of things until they were told by the Jacksonville FBI, according to Henry Clements, to shut it down. Um, the same with the Metropolitan Police Department with John Stitcher and um, Bradley. Stitcher more than Bradley. Stitcher... Um, in Toby Terrell's book, The Game Caller, Toby Terrell is a finders member, Robert Gardner Terrell. He talks about how um, he talks about how Stitcher, this FBI agent that shut it down up there, her name was Athenia Veronius, who was actually who uh, Clary Starling was based off of in The Silence of the Lambs. And uh, she had, owns a paranormal investigation like like thing now here in my home state, of North Carolina is what she does now. And anyway, so they set up a meeting and Stitcher's like yelling at Toby, like, you know, I know you guys are shooting child pornography. I know you're shooting porn. You know, I'm going to take you guys down and everything like that. And eventually Toby just like stops talking to him and he gets mad and he just walks away and he mutters under his breath, bullshit. Um, and Athena Veronius, according to Toby's trail book, and I have to get the exact quote. I want to get it out for you. She pretty much tells him that, um, that even before, like when the investigation started, when she contacts him at the CIA computer training front company, Future Enterprises, which the Finders was also involved in, she pretty much tells him 
oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll put a lid on this thing. Wasn't well, the FBI supposed to investigate it, Jim? Why would they put a lid on something they haven't even investigated? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing that I, I never understood. It seemed like so many people were involved with this or, you know, were at least aware of it. Um, I can't remember if it was Tallahassee or Metro, but they, they had looked for information through Interpol. I know the FBI was involved in a part. I know CIA agents were, were talking about it or questioned about it. I know that uh, Customs was involved in it. Um, and it, it just seems really bizarre to me. That you could have that many organizations all kind of be like, you know, people saying, hey, what what the fuck is going on? And almost not one of I mean, it seemed like nobody uh, at a higher level wanted to take this on, uh, which I, I think that brings me to my third point. You know, the three things that really struck me on this. Uh, the last one and what I found really surreal are buried in the first 180 pages when they're talking about this. Uh, well, I guess it's two parts. One is the age of the finders. Because there seem to be multiple dates about it. You know, some people saying, well, the 80s. Others saying, no, early 60s to early, or uh, late 60s to early 70s. Uh, CIA agents saying, well, you're kind of stepping on our toes, being directly involved in it. And then, of course, the issue of the passports to hostile nations at the time, like Russia or uh, North Vietnam or North, um, uh, was it North Korea? I'm, I can't remember. And even the, the statement they gave in Tallahassee where one of the witnesses said, oh, well, they were saying they were going to go to Hawaii and then go to China. So, to, I mean, I, I don't know if you how much of the first stream you heard, but my hypothesis on this was that um, I, I think this was a CIA run thing, and I it think is. I think that I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't want to think the CIA is so horribly evil that they'd run a child sex cult. So I, I think that it, it was some kind of a counterintelligence thing, and I don't know if people went rogue or what the hell happened, but. I, it feels like they're embarrassed or ashamed of it, and they don't ever want people finding out that it got out of control. So do you, I guess... Yes, I, I can answer your question. Okay, go And ahead. I did listen to the first string. Um, Marion Petty had been involved um, with, I mean, since the very beginning, when he was in the military, when he was in the Army, which later eventually became the Air Force, um, he was he was owning like, Bra like Brownstone Operation back then of apartments, that during World War II, OSS off, officers, Office of Strategic Services, you know, which eventually became the CIA, would just come through his apartments, just come through, okay? Like even back then, like before the Finders was founded in the 60s, before Petty came back um, from being discharged in, in, in the military after getting um, uh, intelligence training from the Jesuit Beck, Backed uh, University Georgetown University, and later getting more training in Europe and being you know coming back here and starting the Finders. I mean, he the CIA has been involved in this even when it was the OSS. Like that's how far back this goes. So, so they were So we're, we're talking forties and fifties. Yes. So what, what I mean, what do you think the initial purpose of this was? Was this counterintelligence? Okay. Or what? What would I can't? I'm I'm trying to think of men sitting in an office meeting you know at, at some intelligence community site and pitching this what what was the pitch how did they present this to other people and say this is a good idea we need a group that walks around and does counterintelligence and spreads information and listens and infiltrates different businesses and groups it just seems like they're a kooky experimental group but we also need them to set up brownstone operations, which brownstone operations is like blackmailing, okay? So a way they can black people through uh, sexual blackmail usually. Some people say that um, uh, Hugh Hefner did it through the um, through the Playboy Mansion. You know, they would set up a, a, a congressman or someone of importance up there and be like, hey, you know, Hef be like, hey, I got a bunny up there for you, you know? And a person goes up there, has sex with said girl or even, you know, male if they're homosexual. And then, you know, Hef comes back or some CIA guy like pops around the corner and is like, yeah, you know that person you just slept with? They're 15. This, yeah, this, that, this almost sounds like uh, the mafia, you know, in Vegas back in the yes. day. Like get a, get a hooker in a hotel room with a congressman and then film it through a, a hole in the wall. Very much so. And that's what, you know, the Franklin cover up was where the FBI was actually implicated by the CIA in running that one. <laughs> so do you, do you think the FBI dropped this as payback for that? Uh, I would say, yeah, there is a possibility there was a war between the intelligence agencies, whether or not it's a true war or some sort of fabricated war by the world order. But yeah, I, I, they do seem to, you know, implicate each other, you know, F, you know, F, CIA implicates FBI and Franklin, FBI implicates CIA and 
And even though the FBI is involved, too, they're both actually covering up the finders, both the FBI and the CIA both are. I mean, you're right about the passports. They had uh, and a document I sent you it had never been seen uh, beforehand. It was I mean, you saw the redacted copy of the chronology report in the um, in the, uh, the the releases. I was actually in the old FBI release too, but I sent you the unredacted copy. Um, it literally says in the unredacted copy they had passports to North Korea, um, USSR at the time, and North Vietnam. And they also had passports in China, and Ramon J. Martinez talks about in his customs report that they had telex, telexes to, to sell children to China. And Toby Trail talks in his book that they had Chinese um, peop, uh, people staying, um, uh, like, like residents staying at like um, uh, the uh, W Street apartments where even there was a student um, that was caught during the, ra the raid that was a Georgetown anatomy student that lived there. Um, so China is also heavily involved in this too, as well. And well, the, also, the, as I said, uh, the, stu the student that was caught now, are, was that a, uh, I'm sorry, was that a, uh, Chinese student staying over? It was there? a, it was a Chinese student who was at Georgetown university learning anatomy. Yes. I, I find that interesting because, um, just because of the stream that I had done earlier with, uh, about Nick Fuentes, uh, one of the questions they had brought up was, um, you know, the dancing Israelis. But if, if you look into that, um, you know, it says, well, uh, the speculation is the five gentlemen that you know were alleged to have been celebrating on 9/11 um, were foreign intelligence from Israel, uh, but that they were posing as students. Um, it seems like you know the the student cover story is something that it, I guess is commonplace, or it feels commonplace, of getting somebody into a foreign country uh, and then using them to some effect. Yes, and when we're talking about Israel, for some reason, that's something that was in the new FBI documents that for the life of me, I can't substantiate, neither George from CabDev.org, another investigator can either, who brought this to my attention. For some reason, Jonathan J. Pollard, uh, the former um, uh, he, he American who, who spied for Israel, you know, gave them top secret uh, classified information. Um, he's just listed in there that they had interviewed him. Now, I don't know if they interviewed him over the finders. I doesn't say, but... I find that very interesting. Yeah, well, a lot of this stuff is. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, so, okay, so we, we've got police, we've got local police departments that seem to be very concerned about what's going on. We've got intelligence community that's seemingly wanting to sweep it under the rug. Uh, one of the things that was brought up in one of the police reports, I, I think it was from Metro, was talking about maps in D.C. Now, was that something they were looking for or something they found? Yes, yes, they were trying to get... Okay, so for some reason, we don't know why. I think it's because of the tunnels, because, you know, they talk about the, the tunnels in McMartin. They talk about a tunnel possibly being under the W Street Apartments um, where there was a food hole. Jordan Arico talks about that, The fi one of the finders girls um, that was, you know, taken into custody in Tallahassee. But they, the Washington Metropolitan Police Department were, for some reason, or another trying to get the tunnel maps under Washington, D.C. that are classified as secret. And you have to remember, too, the finder's warehouse is very close where Craig B. Spence in the Shirarama, Colorama neighborhood where he was running his brownstone operation with Lawrence E. King from the Franklin scandal. Lawrence E. King's actually still walking around free, by the way. Um, and um, and the Pizzagate supposed tunnels are, uh, as well under Comet Pizza Ping Pong. It's all in that general area. They're... No well, more than yeah, 15 that, miles away from each other. That, you know, the that, finders warehouse, all of them. Yeah, that's what struck me as a bit weird. I mean, I, I never got super into the Pizzagate thing. I know other people did. Um, but it, the thing that always stuck with me was that interview with the owner. Is that Alfonte or what was the name of the owner of the common ping pong? James Alfontis. Uh, Alfontis, there we go. Uh, James Alfontis, Jim. Yep, yeah, uh, where, where he had said... Are you there? Uh, hello? Hey, Jim, I lost you there for a minute. James Alphonsus. Oh, okay, yeah, are you still there? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, I yeah, I... My my internet shit out on me for a second. I, I got to wait for the uh, <laughs> the jet to well, catch up. Well, well, when you're messing with glow in the darks, you know it's gonna happen. You know. Hopefully, okay, all right. We'll wait for the chat to catch up. <laughs> perfect, <laughs> perfect timing. Uh, but no, no, I remember he'd given an interview talking about having a basement, and then he had done a follow up interview saying he didn't have a basement. And I know that it was kind of in the general area. And then you find out the finders are are do you know the, this report drops, and they're talking about one of the warrants being served, and they're talking about tunnels. 
and then you've got the McMartin thing. What can you explain to me why the McMartin stuff was put? It was just two pages, but it was inserted between uh, customs talking about arrests and writing a letter about uh, their statistics. It seems really weird that that's inserted there because it it just sticks out. You know, it's like uh, it's begging you to read it. And it doesn't fit in with the flow of the other things presented in the order they're presented. No. And it's actually in the old FBI documents, too, as well, presented in between that letter to Tom Lewis giving the statistics of the child pornography unit uh, that Ramon J. Martinez was a part of and his boss, John Sullivan, was a part of, but it got shut down after the finders. They tried to reopen it. Tom Lewis did in 93 when the case was reopened. And between a letter stating that someone had gotten it. So it's just stuck there. Now, the first page with the map, that's never been seen before. That wasn't even part of Gunderson's report. Okay, that's brand new. And actually, uh, Ed Opperman had the guy on who did that 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 actual specific um, uh, d- drawing. Um, I believe he did the drawing. Or he did the report where he said the tunnels were actually underneath the car garage. And it actually was confirmed in that document that I've never seen before. So that was new. Uh, why it's in between there, I don't know. The only connection we have between McMartin and the Finders is Toby Terrell in his book, The Game Caller, says for some reason during Goat Gate, where they, you know, they, the Finders claims, oh, it was this animal, animal husbandry gym that they, the kids were taking goat fetuses out and a kid holds a goat's butchered head for a picture. You know, it's all in good fun, you know, like you were mentioning earlier about hunting, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all animal husbandry. Don't worry about it. Well, for some reason, during Goat Gate, when all this stuff is going on, he goes to San Diego where the finders have a base. And they had one in San Francisco and one in San Diego. And he he drives up to Manhattan Beach when McMartin is going on. Why? Why? Why of all times then? Yeah, the I, I found it very bizarre. I mean, I, I read the uh, AP, I think it was AP, Associated Press article about the goat thing. Um and it seemed like people talking about it at the time found that to be really bizarre. You know, I know in the 80s and 90s, again, I touched on this a little bit in the first stream, uh, satanic panic seemed to be the term that was used to kind of dismiss this. And I get it. You know, you're arguing, oh, it's just you're. It sounds like something that's crazy, right? It sounds like something from a horror movie. So I can understand people saying, oh, you're just being hysterical. But then when you go through these, this report and you start reading the police reports and the, especially the kind of the back and forth banter uh, through faxes and just reporting themselves... It, it, it seems like there is something there. And it seems like if this information were more publicly available at the time uh, in regards to the Finders and McMartin and other things, uh, people wouldn't have just waved it away with their hand. They wouldn't have been like, oh, it's not a big deal. Oh, I mean, you know, it, 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 what I always say about Raymond Bucky is the bare minimum, many children were molested by Ray Bucky. I mean, he was convicted. Of course, it was overturned. Um, and, uh, you know, the grand maximum satanic ritual abuse was occurring with Martin, which I believe it was. Uh, but something from, you know, that they always, if you always want to go to McMartin, other than the medical evidence of something is very weird, I just, I do want to briefly say something about McMartin real quick that you'll find very interesting. Yeah, go ahead. Is they, get, they gave testimony in the trial, and I, you know, I want to get exactly the testimony they'd given, where, okay, so would you, Jim, let's say, would, you know, your, your future kids, would you let the man that's at the daycare read Playboys wearing sweatpants or short while they're sitting on his lap while he's reading Playboy magazine? Okay, so you, this was at McMartin, you said? Yes, this was happened by Raymond Bucky. He was holding kids in his lap while he was reading Playboy. So you've got you've got Raymond Bucky uh, at this the McMartin preschool yes. with kids sitting in his lap while he's reading Playboy. No, I, I I'd probably his, I'd freak his, out if that was my kid. His mother says it's fine, and also Peggy Bucky gave testimony that she was molested. She would know like something like this if Raymond was a molester, but she would always check Raymond for boners while the kids were sitting in his lap or hanging on his neck, that she'd visually check her son for boners. So she was performing a penis inspection. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just to make sure nothing, uh, nothing you know, uh, nefarious is going on. Yes. Yeah. And that's okay for, you know, it's it, it, according to her, Playboy's a very popular magazine, Jim, so I really wouldn't have much to say about it. That's yeah. That strikes me as really is really bizarre. And you know, kind of looking at uh, you touched on this a little bit. Looking at McMartin uh, from the details that I remember about that, the kids, what they said, and how it was kind of dismissed. Uh, looking at um, what was going on with the Finders, uh, and then kind of looking at even like the Epstein stuff, the more recent stuff, or even uh, Navixum or whatever it is, that kind of corporate sex cult. Um, it seems really strange to me that there are so many parallels. There are so many common threads amongst all of these stories. That you've got large groups of people, they seem to be touching upon, um, you know, certain themes. 
uh, that kind of keep reoccurring. Uh, now, how, how would you explain that? I mean, the McMartin kids talked about uh, kind of weird satanic shit. Um, the Finders group, you know, with the goat pictures. Uh, you've got Epstein with all the weird kind of imagery that's connected to that. With uh, Pizzagate, you had, uh, you know, kind of a weird connection to like spirit cooking. Um, when you're when you're looking at this, and I mean, kind of even going on what we just talked about, how maybe this was some kind of uh, extension of some old OSS program. Uh, why the Satanism? I, I mean, I don't have an answer. I mean, it also happened in in, in um, um, it also happened in um, I mean, it's happened in so many cases that that was happened during the quote unquote satanic panic, and it happened during the Franklin scandal too. Um, even before the Franklin scandal became national news and it went to trial, there were indications of uh, Satanism. Um, it, of course, the Franklin scandal went as far as up as Ronald Wilson Reagan and George H.W. Bush with Florence E. King and Call Boys, that famous Washington Times article, you know, Call Boys going to the White House at midnight for good old George H.W. Bush, you know. Yeah, I, 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 so, do, I do remember that a bit, yep. So, you know, I, I, my answer, I mean, as a Christian, you know, I, I Satan. I mean, that's. I mean, but as far as other than that, I mean, if you're, looking, it, it at just, a, it's, if you're it, looking at it from a secular standpoint, I have no idea well, why e- the Satanism even is a, there. even a secular standpoint is going to have a difficulty explaining away. It just seems so cliched, right? It seems like something out of a Hollywood script, and yet it keeps recurring in all these different instances. Yeah, I mean, even in place in reports where you know they didn't make mainstream no- news and everything, it happens. Uh, in a lot of these cases, before the main case breaks out, it's reported this, you know, I, I mean, I, I just ha- I don't have the answer. I don't have any. I mean, from a Christian standpoint, it's because the elite, you know, worship Satan. From a secular standpoint, I have no idea why this occurs. Because, you know, brownstone, you know, operations with, with child trafficking and, and pedophilia is as horrific it is. You know, the elite can get out of it, you know, blackmail and selling um, child pornography. And R- Rossi Chet's witch hunt narrative where he talks a lot about McMartin. He says there was one woman during the 1980s, Jim, who got caught selling um, child porn out of her house. And she had a family and everything. And she was making $500,000 a month. In See, that's, that's, that's insane. I, I, I suppose one of the weirdest things, right, even, even outside of a religious or secular view of why this would be going on, uh, I what I fail to be able to kind of come to gr- uh, grips with is why would the intelligence community, who who, why would some typical FBI agent or CIA agent or somebody in customs, why would somebody who might have some inside information who's looking at this go on, why would they be okay with it? I mean, surely they'd be able to look at it and be like, you know, it is kind of fucking weird. Everybody's doing the Satanism shit and they're all doing the child porn stuff. Maybe we need to reevaluate our intelligence uh, programs. Well, I mean, some people on the lower levels have, you know, Ramon J. Martinez was a customs agent, you know, his boss, Jones, John Sullivan was, you know, a further up the chain customs agent. So some people have seen this and they're like, what the hell? But you got to remember through a lot of these intelligence agencies, Jim, even within the finders, there's a lot of compartmentalization. You know, your average agent, they may not know what they do, but the higher you go up in that chain, oh yeah, the more that they definitely know what they're up to. They're definitely glowing in the dark. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's it, that's it, compartmentalization is usually how they get by with even with the finders. Not everybody in the finders cult was probably up to no good, or anybody who had interactions with the finders was up to no good. Like investigative journalist Charles Soka, who was up, you know, knew the finders in the seventies and the eighties. Um, but through compartmentalization, the main group, what they call the crazies, because you have the crazies and the zanies, and the zanies was head by Hunter Patch Adams, who got the money for his Gesundheit Institute by Marion Petty, okay, to start that hospital, all right? So, the, so with this, this compartmentalization, it almost sounds like a cell structure, like you deal with terrorists, yes. where they've got to divide it up um, so, you know, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. Do you think that was intentional when it was set up? Always. That's how, how, how they all operate. I mean, even just the basic structure of government when we're talking about, you know, the NSA, or even even if, let's say, they weren't involved in any of this, Jim, okay? You would have to do compartmentalization in the government just for secrets. You know, you would have to. But I think it's more nefarious than that. I think they're running Browns. I mean, look at Iran-Contra. Iran-Contra was drug running, 
um, from Latin America that's talked about in Gary Webb's Dark Alliance. You have Gun Running that was sponsored by Israel uh, to, to Iran. That's who brokered the weapons for the Iran-Contra affair was Israel. A lot of people don't leave out Israel. And then you have Kid Running, which is the Franklin scandal because Oliver North met with Michael Quino and um, Lawrence E. King, uh, that whole Brownstone scandal that was going on there. So just think about Iran-Contra was all three of those things. Uh, you know. Well, I guess a follow-up question to that, kind of looking at this. Um, okay, so let's say our, our uh, American intelligence, some people know, some people don't know. And some people are bothered by it, like the customs uh, officials that you know kind of spoke out or were a little freaked out by it. Um, if this is some kind of an operation to blackmail or to control politicians and maybe to do some kind of foreign espionage or blackmail overseas, uh, surely other governments would be aware of what's going on. I find it strange that you wouldn't have a Russia or a China or somebody coming out and saying, "Well, look at this American program." I mean, look but they're what... running, but they're running their own rings too, like the Duterte affair in the European Union. So, so if they're all running their own rings, you know, they're not, you know, it's like Epstein. You know, you can't. They couldn't. They, you know, Trump does have some connections to Epstein, and Clinton has some connections to Epstein, right? Clinton. You know, some people say Clinton more than Trump. Some people say Trump more than Clinton. Okay. But you, you like, but neither campaign could use Epstein. So they, you know, so supposedly, much as I do believe there are true parts of Pizzagate, don't get me wrong, Jim. Roger Stone supposedly leaked Pizzagate because it implicated, you know, the more liberal side of things. Well, and my, I myself well, am a conservative. So. Yeah. Well, my, my my problem with Roger Stone is, um, you know, he he was claiming I can't remember how long ago this was uh, that he was trying to be people were trying to assassinate him using like plutonium. Um, I don't know if, if you're familiar with this. This was yeah, on, it was like polonium. He went on Alex uh, Jones. Yeah, polonium, polonium. Yeah, polonium poisoning. Yeah, if he had polonium poisoning, he'd be dead. You know what I mean? I, I, yes. I just found yeah. it so so strange that he was claiming he was being poisoned with a radioactive agent like that. Yeah, um, and I mean uh, another thing, if you want to even go even further, because we're talking about Halloween, um, this, there are serial killers that also tied into all this pedocracy too, as well. That oh, may of, have been, of course there are. Why would um, there be? Right? Yeah, Why yeah. John be? John Wayne Gacy and uh, David Berkowitz, you know, they all tied into supposedly by Trump's mentor Roy Cohn. They called him the Sons of Cohn, and Cohn was running his own brownstone operation too, as well. Um, and they and all the serial killers all tied into all of this too. That's the whole operation. That's all you know. All it was is serial killers, child trafficking, drugs, blackmail, everything you could think of that sounds like science fiction. But there's plenty of documentation. I mean, read the Franklin scandal by John DeCamp, you know, former Nebraska Republican state senator. You know, I mean, this there's enough people that went on record. I mean, Gary Caradori, they assassinated Gary Caradori, Jim, when he had the evidence that George H.W. Bush and um, Reagan were involved. And he had the pictures, the blackmail pictures from Rusty Nelson. He was traveling back in Chicago from a plane in a plane with his son, and they took down that plane and murdered Gary Caradori. He was an American hero. He's an investigator. So, so this um, is like an old fashioned barbelling. Yes. Yes, and they've done it many times. Danny Castellaro, uh, the octopus. So, I mean, is this him. just, it almost feels like, you know, going on the premise, all of this is true. It would feel like this is uh, intelligence agencies of almost every nation finding a formula that works and just kind of running amok with it. You know, it almost seems like, you know, if this is a problem in America, it's probably something that's happening in Russia then and in China and the European Union and probably in South America. It's probably happening everywhere. You've got yes. all these intelligence communities that are like, hey, did you know that we're able to blackmail our politicians with kid sex? Oh, well, shit, let me join in. Let me do that in my home country. Or is Epstein a Mossad operation? You know, I mean, was, Ep was Epstein Israel's operation? Or well, was it Russian's there's... operation? You know, I mean, it, it, yeah, I agree. There's countries all over the world running, like I mentioned, the T D Mark Duterte affair in, in European Union, you know, down there in, in Switzerland. So they're all running. They're all running similar stuff. You know, Jimmy Seville in England. And it's all inter interconnected or globally, sadly. It's, it gets as dark as that and as spooky as that. I mean, and messed up as that. It's just, it's just, oh, it's just it's how, that how bad. many? Uh, okay, so, kind of going back, I guess, to the finders or even any of these cases, how many of the children that were involved that were kids at the time have tried to speak out publicly about this? And I guess what happened when they tried to do that? If, if they Ta did. Um, well, the Tallahassee Police Department people were told to shut it down. Ramon J. Martinez allegedly was investigated by Eternal Affairs and forced out of the Customs Service and has been harassed his whole life. Gary Caridori was murdered in a plane crash. Danny Castellaro was suicided in his hotel room. Gary Webb was suicided or driven to suicide. 
um, Ray Lemmy. I mean, there's been multiple, multiple investigators and people who have been killed by the world order or by individual governments, one of you want to say, that try to bring this information to truth. Um, so how do you see it when you're looking at, I guess, this FBI release then, this vault release? Uh, do you see it as a positive thing? Do you think it's just something they released on a Friday because they thought nobody would pay attention? Do you think it, is it some kind of a signal change to to the public? Like, hey, uh, maybe we're going to start bringing this stuff out into the light. Uh, what do you view it as? I view it if you look at the documents, it says it was a time disclosure because it's been about give or take since the nineties, a little bit over. A little bit over 20 years or something 25 years since the initial case since the second part of the case had been opened up so if you look at the document some of it says it's time release it's just time to be released you know it's just automatic you know they've already redacted it well yeah but i mean to to, to be fair i mean so was the jfk stuff but that got uh, sealed up again you know what i mean Uh, not all of it was really so i I, again you know kind of looking at if you've got all these multiple investigators or people that were connected to the case that are uh, conveniently committing suicide um, and, and now you have this information kind of coming to light. Could it could it be something where maybe the key players that were involved in the initial founding of it or in the initial operations of it in the intelligence community, maybe they passed along, and so now nobody can be held accountable, and that's why it's getting outed? Uh, no, I mean, Jenna Haspel is head of the CIA, and she's as evil as they come. So, I mean, I mean, I'm not thinking think of it as just time disclosure. I mean, some people say the world order has to disclose certain things before, you know, all the predictive program around 9-11. Um, you know, so I, maybe they have to disclose, or maybe just cause they think, you know, who really knows about the finders? I mean, did you see, like you've mentioned this on Twitter, no one's bringing this up in the, in the mainstream media. No one, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. You know, they, this could be, I mean, other than, you know, people like you, Jim, and thank God you brought it to light and, 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 and everything. No one's, no one's really looking at this. It's like pissing in the wind, brother. I mean, it, it, it's just, you know, it's like Epstein, Epstein, people forgot about Epstein who? You know, and then, of course, you know, that report comes out by the guy who also did JFK's autopsy and other famous autopsies, you know, and he was hired by Epstein. And I do believe that Epstein either uh, either was murdered or, you know, was taken out by a Mossad hit team out of the prison is living on a beach somewhere. I don't know. Um, But I, I, I do. I think that are white hats that are releasing this stuff, maybe, but it's probably more, you know, that it's just timed and. And again, it could be inter- interdepartmental wars because when you look at it, at the documents, it never really talks about the FBI covering up or the FCI, which is the foreign counterintelligence part of the FBI. Because we're all taught, well, the FBI works on domestic soil and the CIA works on foreign soil. That's bullcrap. The FBI has a you know a foreign soil a part of it too, and they would cover it up. And that, and, and the thing is, a lot of that stuff's redacted. You know, unless there's not you know people like me or you or Derek Bros or George who are really looking into these documents, and really analyzing them, your average person is not going to know what they're talking about. So, is I I don't think why they did it. I don't know, but I can tell you that. It is, it, I don't know if I don't think it's to muddy the waters. I think what they release is mostly accurate or accurate, but it's just difficult. Like I, I can't answer that question. I, I don't know. I don't well, think it. I don't think it's for us. Well, I, do, I, just do, don't do you? Know. I mean, I've heard the speculation before that you know, uh, people that cr- commit uh, atrocious acts, that evil wants to be public. I, I guess is the best way to put yes. it. Do you, do you think this is the sort of thing where they just want to rub it in the public's face and like yep. you're not going to do shit about it? Yep, either that or they want, you know, they're just, yeah, I mean, that's probably it. Or or since they say, hey, now it's public, it's up to you to find us out. Our hands are washed of our sins, you know. It's either one of those. I, I, I don't, that sounds the best to me. I've heard both. That's about the best I can come up with. I wish I had a better answer. That, that, that's fine. Uh, and so relating back to the this FBI drop of 300, and I think it's 40 pages, or 320, whatever it was, um, we got up to 180. I mean, I know there's 120 left. I think that's mostly going over police reports. Was there anything, like when you were reading through it, were there any things that really struck out to you? Or was there something you were reading and you are like, holy shit? I never thought I would read. I mean, pretty much the Metropolitan Police Department documents, you know, the kids in cages, you know, the the the, the, the had witnesses to kids in cages, which was in the um, Virginia State Police documents, which... Someone did an FOA request for those documents, and, they, and Virginia State Police came back, and they were like, "Oh, you know, we don't have those documents. We don't have them to them. They're, they disappeared. You know, Jim, they're gone. They're uh, gone. They're uh, magically uh, gone." A lot of really convenient uh, losses of evidence and documentation. I, I know that uh, one of the witnesses, when they were interviewing him, I can't remember which finder's location it was, but it was in '87. 
uh, had said that they, you know, they heard or saw children in vans crying being driven uh, driven up to one of the complexes. Yes. So it, it's just so weird to me with that kind of evidence. It must be fr- uh, frustrating for local law enforcement, whether it's in you know Virginia, it's the Metro guys, it's Tallahassee, whatever, um, that they're looking into this, and I'm sure they know it. It's dirty as all high hell, uh, but they can't do anything with it. Very, very much so. Even the attorney um, that was trying to prosecute the finders down there in Florida, they even, they, you know, they they drug him through the mud even back in the eighties, you know, in eighty seven, um, and saying that the only reason why he's going against the Christians is because he's got a, or going against the finders is because he's a Christian with a Bible in his hand and a gun on his hip, and he doesn't understand their alternative lifestyle, Jim. You know, he thought the finders were guilty and did as best as possibly could um, to separate the children and keep them separated from their parents, but he failed. Um, because, you know, again, the FBI and the CIA stepped in and said, shut it down, you know? And, and so, you know, like they did good work and, and, you know, the local Tallahassee police department, most people did. I do think possibly that one of the officers, Rick Huffman, he kind of like, he said some weird things too. Like when he was talking about sexual molestation, well, it depends, Jim, you know, if the girl has semen in her vagina or on her foot and the amount, you know, and. It's like, it, it, depends, not be, it depends yeah. on the amount of semen, does it? <laughs> yes, or, or where it is. It shouldn't semen not be around, you know, children at all. <laughs> you, hey, you know, hey, hey like, guys, hey guys, open the cell up, all right? He only came on her feet. We need to let this guy go. He's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. go. It's crazy, man. So, I mean, you know, and, I, and, I've, and I've contacted both John Sullivan, who went on record. He was Ramon J. Martinez's boss, who said Ramon J. Martinez, you know, always told him the truth and was always credible. And he believed him and stood by his report. I talked with Skip Clemens, who investigated it. And, you know, he said that the, the customs and the FBI shut down everything. I mean, there's enough evidence to show that the boys stepped in and said, that's enough. Shut it down, you know. So there's enough evidence. The report I gave you that was, you know, that was unredacted. There's enough to show that they shut it down. Now, why they shut it down? I believe it's because they were running, you know, child trafficking and ops and you know stuff that glow in the darks do, you know. So that's why they shut it down. Um, and even when they reopened it, you know, Charles Rose, my my congressman from Fayetteville, North Carolina. There's some weird things about him. You know, he was part of a rat gate and, and, you know, was working on psychic spies and stuff and everything. So it was kind of, but Tom Lewis, I think, was a good man. He was a congressman from Florida who was actually replaced. He was forced out right after this investigation opened back up. And he was replaced by Mark Foley. And Mark Foley would later go down for the Republican page scandal. So, like, it never ends, you know. And with the finders, it's, I mean, we didn't even get to talk about how one of the, one of the uh, recently in the past year, there was a finder member named Theodore G. Reese, who was part of the inner circle. He was like a computer programmer. He worked with the Future Enterprises, supposedly the CIA front that the finders were training CIA agents with, um, that the documents talk about. He was arrested um, at the ripe age, and I think it was 80. He was in his 80s. I think he was 80, uh, with distributing child pornography. Um, so that's a modern connection to the finders, you know, and he was in the inner circle. Theodore West was G West. Okay. Well, speaking of the current age, right uh, today, this, this Halloween, how many, I mean, how big are the finders currently? How many, uh, uh, members would you speculate are out there? Is this still a big thing that's been uh, kept under wraps or is this something that once the, you know, 87 coverage and 93 coverage happened that they started to try to wind down? No, they're still going to my knowledge. For example, there was a, the Futurist magazine, which is run by the World Future Society, and has had famous people like Carl Sagan and Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bunk Mr. Fuller, um, which was a petty started front, was a finder started front. They started this World Future Society. The, the former uh, architect, uh, Roy Mason, who was a, a homosexual, had a tranny uh, back in the uh, 70s that burned down his house, one of his houses that, that um, he owned. Um, who Charles Soka said he had a he loved uh, allegedly uh, had a predilection for young boys as well. Um, he also was a big part of the World Future Society, and they're writing a magazine called The Futurist. And there's a finder named Kristen Knoth, who was actually one of the mothers of, of, of one of the children, uh, Benjamin Knoth. Um, she changed her name to Kristen Knoth. She dropped the K, and she's still writing for The Futurist, which was magazine which was part of the World Future Society. And there was a guy on there, and I have to look at his name. Um, excuse me for not remembering his name. It had the, the, the 4chan people, and thank God for the nonsense of 4chan, because they even showed a few things that I, even, I didn't know. And I've been investigating this for three three years, Jim. Um, and uh, there was a guy on there who, before the FBI drop it, documents dropped, um, he worked for the for the world for the magazine Futurist with Kristen Knopf in his 
Twitter profile, he put Finder. But as soon as this stuff dropped, he took Finder off in the past week or so. Oh, yeah. No, I could imagine. Um, I, I guess one thing that kind of sticks out to me, um, I know Epstein was big on having parties and inviting people to his island. I know he liked having a lot of the uh, technological elite there, um, a lot of the uh, current age thinkers. It seems like the Finders kind of did the same thing. And kind of looking back on this with the satanic panic and just kind of the the modus operandi of this and just it, – it, is this some kind of a weird secondary like attack on Christianity? Yes. Because it, it uh, feels like there's a really heavy secular angle and it feels like there's a real heavy kind of futurist humanist angle Yes, a, a, to kind of try to – I, I, don't, I don't know, to, to rip out the soul of America almost. <laughs> I mean, I remember, remember, you know, kids back in the 80s, um, my my uh, grandparents wouldn't let my father, uh, my mother passed away when I was young, but wouldn't let my father uh, place me in daycare uh, because of the whole satanic panic. Like they believed it was a real thing. So after, uh, you know, I put satanic panic in quote, quote you know, quotation marks. Um, but afterwards, think about it. Like how many parents didn't think twice because if you don't put your kid in daycare anymore, you know, that's silly satanic panic nonsense, Jim. It's okay to put your kids in daycare or, or, or monastery schools or anything like that. It's perfectly fine, you know. So that whole narrative could just, you know, satanic panic narrative completely destroyed it. And some people say it's actually the beginning of helicopter parenting because parents started thinking that something was wrong, but they really couldn't look at it because they'd be, you know, be told satanic panic. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it feels similar almost to the push that's going on right now. I, I, I mean, I'm kind of jumping su uh, subjects a little bit, uh, but in kind of influencing the next generations that are coming up. I mean, it, it, it just it feels like the concept of uh, morality or religious values have kind of been eroded. And, yes. and it almost seems I mean, you can kind of see that a continuation of that uh, nowadays where you've got you know, 10 year olds, uh, saying, Oh, well, I, I'm trans, there's one 10 year old, I, I'm transsexual. I'm going to open a dating service. Um, a, a very secular mindset. Um, I, I guess what would the, if that was the angle, right? If the angle was to kind of, uh, tear away that aspect of, of America, why, 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 I, I'm trying to think of what the end goal of something like just that just to demoralize us and push us further from not trusting each other, not trusting our communities, and and, and pulling us further away from church. I mean, it's pretty much what it did. And and and, and, and trust government institutions, you know, like your schools. I know daycares aren't really you know government institutions, but they are. They do get funding from government a lot, and you know, also you know DSS too. You know, I mean, or CPS should I say? And there are good CPS people out there. Don't get me wrong, but you know CPS has been in, implicated in a lot of these scandals too as well. Um, so it, I guess like I guess the only thing I think of is, is just to, to so they can operate more because if anybody questions it, oh, it's just those crazy Christians with their satanic panic, you know. Right, and, and kind of to demoralize sh it. shut them out of the public discourse when they have something yes. to say. Yes. Yeah, I suppose you could assemble a timeline that might be interesting to look at uh, starting maybe in the late 70s to early 80s um, and, and just kind of the shift that might have taken place in America from uh, – you, you had every uh, – there's there's been so many things. Uh, War on Christmas, uh, Satanic Panic. Um, you've got kind of this uh, sexually liberated – mindset where yep. everything is permissible and nothing is weird anymore um you know if your five-year-old wants to be transsexual if your 10-year-old wants to be gay and dance for money you know this is all okay let's have uh, uh drag queen story hour and it just seems like you know if you presented any of these things you know any, any any of these things that have happened maybe over the last 30 years in the 1940s or 50s or hell even in the 60s uh society as a whole would have been like what the fuck are you doing yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. I mean, that that's during this whole thing. It's it's it was. I mean, look at um, what you want. You know, people could say about Russia as far as Trump is concerned. Trump, you know, tweeting it's a witch hunt or anything. But one thing I found very interesting is Michael Savage writes a book on witch hunts and he puts McMartin on there, but he just gives like the list first article as links to it, but not reading like anything of substantial about it, and says that. Well, this is the reason why they're going after Trump is because satanic panic. And you see a lot of similar, you know, Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk, Sebastian Gorka. You know, Sebastian Gorka said satanic panic, too, is similar to the witch hunt against Trump is similar to satanic panic. They all, you know, there's been quite a few people in Coulter. Um, so it, it's, it's just interesting of how they, they brought it back forth again just to beat people. I mean, people were literally tweeting. I mean, like sticks, hicks, and hammer. 
you know, Styx is a Satanist and, you know, people tweeting back to him, you know, Styx, well, maybe there's something to this, you know, maybe there's something to this Scott Adams, you know, but yeah, it's no, just... I, I've seen Stick's uh, take on this. I, I know that he said, or at least I believe he said, I know he did a video, I didn't get a chance to watch it, but he had said something along the lines of, well, this isn't real Satanism. This isn't like, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the downhole, good cooking, uh, love you at Christmas kind of Satanism I'm used to. I, I, I think that was his that was his take on it. Seems about right. You know, Michael Aquino and, and every, you know, the West Point, uh, I mean, the Presidio cover-up and... and and everything with Satanism involved in that too. Now I know I have to worry about that, Jim. It's nothing to see here. It's just that LeVay Satanism, that true atheist that masquerades as a Satanist and only care about themselves. That's true Satanism. Don't worry about these chats, child sacrifices or sexual abuses. No, I don't worry about that. That's a Satanic panic. Right. And you know? I mean, you know, and I should stay too. I mean, you're talking to somebody. Um, I'm, I'm not super religious. I mean, I, I went to church as a kid, uh, but, you know, I, I kind of fell out of it. But e even just. I guess from my perspective of somebody that's not really tuned into religion, it, it is weird. There, there is a lot of really weird shit going on here. Um, to have this kind of common theme repeatedly pop up with uh, the pentagrams and the animal sacrifices and all the, the weird, the, the, what was it, the uh, fucking spirit cooking? In fact, yeah. I, I think I have a, do I have a picture of that queued up? Uh, just to give people an idea if they're unfamiliar with what the hell I'm talking about. Um, with, um, with Abramovic. Yeah, there we go. I, I should have one up on screen now for people. Uh, but it, it, it's just, it's a lot of weird shit. You know what I mean? And I, I think even irreligious people or atheists, uh, like atheist, just just secular people looking at this might be like, yeah, you know, that is kind of fucking strange. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And how often, it's not just one occurrence. You know, if it's one occurrence, you kind of blush it off, you know. But when it brush it off, when it, when it's happened in almost every single of these cases, you know, like how many times, how many times is it a pattern, you know, that before eventually you're like, oh, okay, you know, this, this is this is truly a thing. And so, I mean, the you know, the government's involved, Satanism angle, you know, it sounds like a Hollywood movie, like you say, and like something you'd watch on Halloween, right? Well, it's not. It's really going on, and it's happened in multiple, multiple cases. Um, and it's still sadly going on today in areas of things we can even think of. Yeah, it, it, it's just so strange. I mean, the only other thing I could think of potentially is the why this is a common theme, um, you know, it, Maybe it was, we'll take something, I mean, okay, so let's say you're the CIA and you're running some weird kind of blackmail child sex cult, um, and, you, you know, you have to plan for contingencies. Uh, what are we going to do if the, the public ever finds out about this? The child porn stuff's really going to sink us. I know. Let's throw the Satanism on top to try to distract them with that. I mean, do you think there there's a potential that that might be why this is something that's reoccurring all over the place? I'd say probably a small potential. Um, I think, I mean, as a Christian, I'm going to say, yeah, it's Satanism, but if I'm trying to look at it from a different angle, it's possible. However, there were members of the finders that were followers of Aleister Crowley and other members that were supposedly Satanists, like Miles, uh, uh, Stuart Miles Silverstone. Um, he was very much in Aleister Crowley and, and Toby Trell talks a lot about it in the game caller. And then why would the finders have all of these, you know, altars, you know, one being in the warehouse, one being near the W street apartments and one being um, on, on, at the Free State, you know, why would they have all those? And what Goat Gate, you know, why Goat Gate? Why, why the slaughtering of the goat and and, and and you know ritual poses and pictures and everything? Like, why that? You know, they now Toby Trail says, well, they were just harvesting the goat for food, um, and you know, and it was animal husbandry. And I don't believe that at all. And when you actually read Toby Trail's book and he tries to explain the way they were paired to Jim, the kids were stuck. Um, out in this free state area, there was land that Petty owned with cabins and stuff like that and like uh, tents and stuff. And they were in their own cabin by themselves and the adults would just watch them and the kids just did whatever they wanted to do. It's like whatever they wanted to do, like, like the, the adults would just watch them and if like maybe the claim if one of the kids were going to get harmed, you know, they would step in. But the kids were pretty much like lived in a, like a cabin with no adult supervision except for like, you know, the finders members looking in on them from the windows you know, they claim all the time, but my guess is would be never. And there's also talk about the kids being kept in cages. And I mean, it's like the worst of free range parroting, hippie parroting that you can ever think of. So at the bare minimum, these finders children were, 
you know, abused. They, they, they didn't have any normal structure. I mean, during Christmas, uh, Jordan Rico talks about the, the finders women came down the stairs naked and the kids just thought it was a funny game, you know, that they were all naked and kissing the finders men, you know? Yeah. It, it, it feels like uh, from, I guess if I do have a hot take, even going back to the, the story you were telling about, I, I can't remember his name now, but, um, uh, the guy at McMartin that would read the Playboys with the kids. Raymond honestly. Bucky. Raymond right, Bucky. Right. When you're looking at that or when you're looking at these stories about the moms walking around naked with all the, the goat shit going on, it, it seems like almost a, you know, a progressive, not, not progressive here as in like uh, political leanings, but like progressive as in it keeps growing uh, program of trying to normalize deviant behavior. You know, trying to make it acceptable to the kids like, hey, shit's getting weird, but we're doing it slowly enough that you're going to think this is normal by the end of it. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. And that's what, you know, that's what even the, the Metropolitan Police Department said. You know, they were like, well, we don't think the kids were, you know, molested, but they were brainwashed. And the finer's kids today, they, they still exist. At least we think they, they do in social media. Like, it, it does appear to be them. And, of course, anybody listening, don't go harass them or anything like that. Because, you know, when usually when that happens, people start pulling down stuff off of social media and everything. But well, they, I, I, I figure they're mind fucked enough. I wouldn't want to bother them. You know what I mean? After all, no, no, no. I'm not saying you, Jim. I'm just saying you know. Oh no, no, no. I'm just I'm agreeing with you. I'd feel, I like if I went through this kind of shit. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd probably be pretty fucked up after it. But some people say, well, if they're still with their parents, then nothing happened, right? Well, they could have been brainwashed severely. You know that happens in many types of abuse. You know Stockholm syndrome. You know. It doesn't mean just because they're still with their families now or still have relationships with their families that nothing happened, even to them, you know, because some people argue, well, the sexual evidence uh, of molestation was possibly weak with the finders, uh, the six children themselves. Um, and there may be a possibility that we, and I believe that it was likely, and there's other investigators believe likely that there were things going on with those children. Okay, that were more than just you know not being properly cared for. Well, that's that's my gut hunch. Just based um, on just based on the Tallahassee report, that's my gut feeling on it. But basically, if we go off of that and just say you know there were many many children at the Free State, eyewitnesses saw children you know you know hundreds or thousands over the period of twenty years, you know, and then you had the connection with. Um, Hunter Patch Adams, you know, the movie that Robin Williams played Patch Adams on, the Guns Untied Institute being uh, funded by Marion Petty and Hunter Adams being very good friends with Petty, you know, so. Oh, wait, I didn't, I didn't even make that connection. Wait, are you telling me, you're, you're telling me that one of those quirky comedies that Hollywood produces has uh, a fucking connection to a child sex cult the CIA ran? Yes. Do you want to hear what um, – you might find this very interesting. Let me find it. Do you want to hear exactly what Hunter Adams said about Goatgate, about them slaughtering the goats? Now, this is the uh, this is the person, the, the character Patch Adams in yes. the movie is based on, right? The one Ron yes. Williams played. Okay, what did he yes. say? He said, and I quote, What other evidence have they uncovered? Ritual bloodletting of the goat slaughter, he added. On the farm, it's called harvest. It's animal husbandry. A practice 13,000 years old. Farmers traditionally include their children, particularly their male children, in annual fall butchering of livestock. I've met city people who think their milk comes from a carton. Urbanites are often ignorant at the realities of food production. Their ways of child rearing, rearing aren't mine. Yes, they're strange. Yes, they're misguided. But there are a lot of other kinds of neglect out there. If their children have been neglected, it wasn't meant to be neglect. They mean to give their children enriching experiences. This could be a lesson of survival. If you want to show her how society is messed up, this will certainly do it. That is... Uh... I, I just I'm I'm trying to get over the fact that uh, see <laughs> I, I didn't make the connection when he when he kept saying uh you know, what the you know Patch Adams stuff uh, the Gesundheit Institute um I, I guess you know speaking of the relationships and kind of uh, the structure of this thing I, you know I think it, it, kind of going back again to the FBI reports what can you tell us about because uh, everybody refers to the the game changer. Now, I mean, is this just a singular title he took on as himself, or do you think this is like a position within the organization that passes between people? Uh, once he's gone, is there never going to be another game? Uh, I'm sorry, the game. What is it? Uh, game. Game. Game caller. Game, game caller. Uh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, game caller. Um, so, is that like his thing and his thing alone, or is this like a title that's passed along? Well, he, Marion Petty was first called the Stroller. Okay, that's what he was originally called because that, just... that's what that's what he was stealing the children from baby strollers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it was because he would just stroll around and just see what's up and what he could hear, what he could listen to, and what he could find out because he was a finder. And eventually, they started calling the game caller um, supposedly 
because he would tell members of the finders what to do on a daily basis so they would call them games but the thing is is the title of game call now marion petty was always the head but other members of the finders sometimes he'd be like okay so barbara sylvester it's your turn to call a game okay so that person would become the game caller all right so it would morph so you're right in that in that it was more of a title you know marion petty was the head and they'd have to answer to him, but the game caller would be a position that would change within the inner circle. Well, you, you know what I'm struck by, too, just in, in the conversation we've had over the past hour, um, talking about the FBI stuff. I mean, I know we have speculation. We're going off on our own theories on what this might mean or, uh, you, you, you know, some of the things that might be going on. Um, but, I mean, there is kind of a, a dark brilliance to it. Um, because if, if I were to tune into this stream and listen to this without knowing anything, I'd be like, this is fucking crazy. Um, it, it, it feels like it was set up to be like that. Yes. You know, you have two people talking about this. And even though you've got FBI reports and police reports that talk about the evidence they found, that talk about, you know, tunnel networks, that talk about books on mind control, keeping kids in cages, sexual and physical abuse, the titles they used, just all the weird stuff that's going on, the connection to the intelligence community, even with all of that, um, when you kind of put it together and then you present it to a normal person, they're like, no, this is, this is fucking crazy. This sounds like Hollywood shit to me. This sounds like something that's so unbelievable. It couldn't be real. And it feels like that was created intentionally, uh, to be a buffer, to prevent the public from ever looking at it and being like, oh my God, this is really happening. Or, I mean, what about Gamergate? I uh, remember, uh, the former, the former, uh, porn actress, Mercedes Carrera. Yeah, now she she got arrested, and her was it her husband or the 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 step? I know she got nailed for child porn charges. She was doing all sorts of fucking crazy deviant shit with her kid. Yes, and um, if you go look at her Instagram and stuff like that, and she has Baphomet and all this satanic and in, 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 um, imagery that they were putting in and everything too as well. Yeah, I think it was described as she was doing like some kind of BDSM abuse of her daughter, um, and there were multiple allegedly. Film- yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Allegedly, yeah, yeah, allegedly. Yeah, let me let me join you on the allegedly. That's this is what I've heard. Uh, none of this is my. I'm not definitively stating any of this. Just the uh, reports and articles I've heard. Um, but it, it was some pretty hardcore stuff, allegedly, and a lot of videos, allegedly, of this kind of happening. Um, but yeah, I, I was uh, that that kind of blew me away uh, when that came to light because I mean, her daughter is I think like eight years. I, this is a little kid. Yes, yes. Gamers rise up. Yeah, well, um, maybe do something maybe, about this. <laughs> maybe, maybe that particular yeah. gamer should have sat the fuck down <laughs> instead of doing uh, what she was doing because, and yeah. then she has connections to the porn industry and. Who knows how far that shit went? Yeah, I just it, it, it again. That was just another satanic the imagery that this had been just brought. You know that I just thought of. You know, and it. I mean, if someone looking in, they're like, "Well, this stuff's crazy." And the same thing they say about the Franklin scandal or anything else. But when you actually do the research, like I did, you know, I had a really good friend who believed in conspiracies, but he actually didn't believe me about the Pedigate stuff until he actually sat down. He was a former CPS uh, worker. He actually sat down and read the Franklin scandal. And once he read that, he goes, John, you're 100% right, 100% sorry. Because the CPS reports and the Franklin scandal, he was like, there's no way these children were lying. Well, I mean, when you see some of the stuff that's been exposed that the government's done, uh, and just the, the kind of professions that have been involved in it, um, you know, if you were told it, you'd say, oh, that's crazy. But then, you know, it comes to light. I, I, I think uh, one of the more clear examples would be the whole thing with the Tuskegee. Uh, people that uh, basically they wanted to run a health uh, experiment on a yes. group of people. Um, you know, they all have syphilis. We're not going to tell them. We're just going to test them because we want to see what happens to their brain. But you had people in intelligence and the military. You had doctors who take a sworn oath not to do something like that involved in it. They tried doing it just outside the borders so they wouldn't get harassed doing it. Uh, and that was something that Clinton ended up during his presidency having to address and apologize for. But if you were to tell somebody, hey, the government's knowingly letting people get infected with an STD to drive them crazy just to see what happens, people would be like, no, that's not possible. And yet you, you see that, yeah, no, that was really something they were a part of. I mean, yeah, I mean, the U.S. Navy got caught spraying serratia marcins, which is, have you ever seen that pink slime? Like in like the bottom of your drain in your in your in your shower. Well, they, well, they, they were... where I'm from, they make that into chicken McNuggets. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but they uh, they uh, sprayed that stuff on San Francisco and really, but during the 1950s, it was called Operation Sea Spray, just to see what would happen. Uh, I'll tell and, you what uh, happened. See... Well, see, now we have an explanation. Chat, you should thank him because now we know why the fuck California is the way it is. It's the goddamn <laughs> Navy's fault. 
<laughs> yeah, they uh they sprayed them with bacteria. Actually, you know, quite a few people actually end up dying from pneumonia. You know, elderly people from being sprayed with that bacteria. You know, so I mean, what about MK Ultra, MK Often? How like how many how many times do they run you know ops even on us before you know eventually people wake up and realize that this stuff's going on? Yeah, it, it, it's insane. Uh, well, I, I appreciate you coming on to talk about this. I mean, you had a lot more background and insight um, than I did. Obviously, I, I'm just kind of uh, casually reading over it, uh, but you've definitely you know, talked to people and researched stuff. If people want to follow this, if they want to follow the stuff that you're looking into or this, you know, the book that you, you're, you're working on or um, just any of the stuff that you're doing related to this, uh, where would they follow you? Uh, we've read the documents on YouTube. Uh, we've read on uh, Twitter. Um, and I definitely want to thank you for having me on, Jim. I've been following you since the internet aristocrat days. Uh, it's been so long ago now. Uh, and all the work that you've done to, to do, I mean, whether it's Kurt Eichenwald, and oh God, don't even get me started on Eichenwald, or, 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 or Nick Bates, or, or, or Ross, or anything like that, you know, you do uh, try to bring this stuff to light, you know. And of course, the finders may be a little bit more on the grand scheme of things as far as being, you know, in a larger circle, but you know, you're doing the Lord's work, Jim. You well, work. no, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming on to uh, to talk about this and kind of share your insight. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it just kind of leaves me a bit dumbstruck, I guess, at the end of it, uh, after kind of reading through the reports, talking to you, uh, looking at the related stuff, uh, that e even if all the speculation we've made is completely not true, just the stuff that is factually known, that is written down in black and white on documents from police stations, uh, you know, in multiple places from the FBI, from customs, from, you know, um, uh, these different organizations, just that alone uh, should leave a, a sick feeling in people's stomach. Very much so, Jim. Take care. All right. You have a good one. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Bye. All right, chat. Well, we've definitely, we've definitely gone into the rabbit hole. I will tell you that much. We've definitely face first down the fucking thing happy halloween oh boy are you feeling safe about your kids out there now that some weird fucking a uh, group called the finders is going to abduct them and then make them cut off goat heads end up on epstein's island maybe buried under a preschool and tunnels screaming at the top of their fucking lungs you know this entire data dump from the fbi has just been surreal reading the police reports uh, you know, I, I'm just going to touch on what I said earlier. I feel bad for the police departments that have to deal with this shit. Because when you read those police reports, it's pretty apparent that the cops that are working it, the, just the, the normal fucking cops that get saddled with it, find it reprehensible. They find it disgusting. And why wouldn't they? They're having the same visceral reaction you would if you came across it. They want to get to the bottom of it. They want to make sure this weird shit's not really happening. And yet, to be stopped at every avenue... Uh, to have your warrants uh, squashed, to have your evidence lost, to be told you can't pursue this, it must be just soul-crushing. It must be absolutely soul-crushing because you're the one seeing those kids. You're the one investigating that shit. And you probably know deep down that there's some messed up shit happening. And yet somebody from a higher organization with more authority than you is going to put a stop to it. So I feel, I feel real bad uh, for the Metro guys, for the Tallahassee guys, for Virginia just for all the, the different police departments that got involved in this and just weren't able to, to I guess, bring it to justice. Uh, I can't, I, I don't know. You know, reading through this stuff and speculating on what it might mean and uh, the connections it might have, I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't know why this would be allowed to persist. I don't know why this sort of just reprehensible stuff would be given the okay You'd think somebody would have a crisis of conscience at a intelligence community or whoever would be organizing this and say, God, I'm an awful human being for letting this happen on my watch. But apparently not. Apparently, we're in the minority when you think like that. But if you want to talk about what monsters are, you've heard an hour and a half discussing real monsters. The kind of people that would use children to gather intelligence or to fight a foreign nation or to control a politician, the sort of people that would prevent police departments from protecting people, then that's, that's a monster that would use children as pawns in some kind of international scheme. That's a monster. That's what Halloween's about. These monsters glow in the dark, but they seem to be very much real. Uh, where this will go, 
you know, that's the pessimist in me. I think we're all pretty much pessimistic when we're looking at something like this. And it'll go where Epstein went. It'll go where this always goes. It will disappear from people's minds. They'll talk about it for a few weeks, and then they'll forget about it. Now, you know, maybe they want to, on some subconscious level, forget about it, because then they don't have to deal with it. But it's just the age we live in. Everything's instant consumption. You've got to get that five minutes of entertainment, and then you move the fuck on to the next thing. I mean, I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. I'm not uh, casting judgment on people and saying I'm above it. But it does make me a bit sad that that is the reality of things. Epstein was murdered in his jail cell, and it's already just kind of being forgotten. If that story hadn't have broken, it wouldn't have gone nowhere. And now, here we are. Hearing about the finders and reading about it, and in a month's time, you ask somebody, Hey, what do you think of the finders? They're not going to know anything about it. Well, I'm sorry, Chad, if that's depressing to you. Again, it is Halloween, and some of the best horror stories, some of the best terror that exists are the ones that don't have a happy ending, are the stories that end in a bleak, despairing hole, a void, empty of any hope or any light. Those are the real stories that are filled with terror, and that is the story I have shared with you this Halloween. So if you got kids, give them a hug. If you got a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a husband or a wife, give them a hug. And thank God or uh, your spirit animal or whatever the fuck you believe in, that at least you didn't get roped into this shit. That at least you were able to grow up normally and you weren't put on some fucking CIA farm to be a child prostitute for some weird fucking people. I guess thank God for small miracles like that. All right. Now that I've made you despair, we will, um, uh, I'll jump into the Super Chats. Uh, I'll read through them all. Uh, sorry if I, you know, didn't get a chance to read any of them during uh, the little interview there. Uh, but I, I just, you know, it was a good conversation. I just wanted to keep it going. I figured it was better not to interrupt. So if you had any particular questions, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry if I missed them. Um, hopefully uh, the questions I asked were good enough for you guys. Uh, so let me see where I left this off, and we will continue on. Uh, one moment. You know what, actually, chat, what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a drink, because I've got to read through these. <laughs> well, that's my excuse for needing a drink, is, oh, i got to read these Super Chats. I just need a drink from the subject itself. I'm, I'm going to be fucking honest with you. I just need a drink to just to center myself a little bit. <laughs> so uh, I'll put on a little music here. We'll take a small break. Go, go take a piss, do whatever you got to do. Uh, and then I'll come back and I'll read the super chats. Uh, everybody else, you know, if you don't want to stick around for that, that that's fine. Uh, I hope you have a good Halloween. I hope you have a great weekend coming up. Uh, for everybody else, uh, just give me like three minutes here. Let's do smooth jazz. You know, smooth jazz, I think, is the right way to go for this fucking subject matter. I feel pretty confident going with smooth jazz for our break music. Uh, so let me put this on and I will be back in just a few minutes. I saw a couple of people in chat. What about the rest of the documents? I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I was going to read over the last uh, 120 pages, but I think that interview pretty much, it, it's, I, I think that covered it. Uh, the, the remaining 120 pages went over the remainder of the police reports and a few uh, telefaxes and things like that. But I, I, you know, I was pretty pleased with that conversation. Uh, we got a lot of information related to kind of where this went, who was involved, and it got names of people, investigators, their fates. You know, kind of surprised that multiple people, uh, quote unquote, committed suicide. Seems to be a common theme anytime something like this comes up that, uh, oh, what do you know? Everybody involved is suddenly dead. Everybody got Seth Riched. So, <sighs> Jesus. All right, let's, let me jump back in here. Uh, Sharkman 9K. Happy All Hallows Eve from a fellow potato. Please tell MM I hope she doesn't burn along with California. Okay. From Double A, Happy Halloween, Jimbo. Hope everyone has a good Halloween, but want to know what's scarier, despite being 13% of the population. Uh, and then it went dot, dot, dot. I don't know where that one was going. I'm going to have to just put on my thinking cap to see where that might end up. From me here, you there. I'm driving down my road, and I just seen a bunch of glow-in-the-dark children. Help me, Terry. What should I do? You need to run, especially if they have black eyes, because then you're combining two different things. You're, you're combining G and X. And that's dangerous. 
from NA, skeletons rise up. Just a coder. Look at all Reddit figs spamming door door. From Joseph Jimenez, what are you dressed up for as Halloween this year? I went out as Tape Man. I'm still getting hammered. Might have to drop some red pills later. Uh, there's nothing like getting super drunk and then saying things you're going to regret in the morning. Have a little Red Pills Tourette's episode in the middle of your Halloween party. Start talking about the USS Liberty. Everybody's like, oh, shit. From Rude Boy Club, like rapidfireonfacebook.com, based, based. Smug Leaf the Snivy. Mr. Mediker, what's your opinion of Shadman? Also, how are you tonight? Lots of kecks from across the pond in Wales. Smug Leaf the Snivy. Uh, Shadman? <laughs> I do not consume that art. If that's what you're asking me. Uh, you know, every time Shadman gets brought up on V, you've got about 300 fucking image, uh, images that go up of people uh, sliding out a door, backing out of the thread. <laughs> it's like clockwork. Also, how am I tonight? Uh, well, I was doing pretty good until we got into this shit. I was I was doing fairly okay until we got into the uh, the dark underbelly of the CIA. From Joni Baloney, Sticks has a Mexican wife. He is blooped on Texas. Oh, blue pilled on Texas. Well, blooped would have been more interesting because I wouldn't know what the fuck that was. Rod Howard, top of the morning to you, Mr. O'Shaughnessy. I see you drank a little too much of your potato whiskey again. Typical late patty. Backs fire, happy Halloween, sweetie squad. From autism forums, dogs only lick you for bones inside you, Jimbo. Wake up. From Trolita, roses are red, violets are blue. My poem is epic, pee-pee, poo-poo. Double A, Echo, Papa, Sierra, Tango, Echo, Indy, no, oh, are you having me, spe uh, am I spelling something out that's going to get me arrested? Is this some, oh, I'll read it. I'll read it if I'm giving away government positions. From Double A, Echo, Papa, Sierra, Tango, Echo, India, November, Delta, India, Delta, November, Oscar, Tango, Charlie, Oscar, Mike, Mike, India, Tango, Sierra, Uniform, India, Charlie, India, Delta, Echo. From Ethereal, you guys, I'm really super spooked right now. From Victor Phantasm, happy Halloween, boss. I'll sell you my $220,000 house and a nice white HOA, Homeowners Association, I'm guessing, if you hurry up and come here. Four beds, three baths, 2,400 square feet, half an acre. Well, it sounds like a nice property, but I'm going to wait for the market to crash, and then I'm going to go get myself a mansion for 100 k From Danny G., Happy Halloween, doing the Lord's work, lulls. From Put It Tat, or Putty Tat. Hey, Jim, hope you're having a better Halloween than I am. Here's to another fun stream. <laughs> Obviously, this one was sent before we got into the depressing shit. From Axel and Browning. This is my first and maybe even last Superberry for you, Jim. I live near Seattle, and let's hope 11.3 takes us all. Keep up the good work, mate. Oh, thank you. From The Hotness. On day 11 of 21 day work or 21 way or day work week, your streams help me through working 70 hours a week. God damn! How long do you think before the planet hits World War III, or do you think that disarmament is more likely? Love you, Jim. Thanks for the stream. Here's five smoky doos. I don't know if World War III is going to hit us. Uh, the world is fucking crazy, though. You never know. From Cody Culp, Doctor Baden is the HBO autopsy guy. Legit. From Beck's Fire, the sorry state of the press when an anon shit poster does better investigative, informative journalism than the mainstream media. From Bad Nut, that Nigerian guy built a helicopter out of a BMX and sold it to the military. What have you done lately? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm moving to Ghana because that is a money making opportunity and I'm not leaving cash on the table. From Texas Spirit, too. Why does this CIA op sound like Sargoy levels of competence and ideas? We gotta own those Soviets. From Grody Gungus, I'd better enjoy this while I can before you get suicided. From Victor Phantasm, by the way, boss, the house is in Texas. Would you debate uh, Six Shekelheimer six 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 about whether or not the Satanic Panic was truly satanic? Yeah, I would. That'd be actually a pretty entertaining conversation. From Lumberjack Cowboy, it's a real graveyard hours. Who's working? Will Ross, spooky, scary CIA sends shivers down your spines. When the cops try to shut it down, we'll tell you they're all fine. We're so sorry, CIA, you're misunderstood. You only want to socialize, but I don't think you should. From Bad Nut, is the CIA necessary anymore? Well, I'd love to answer that question, but I'll probably have a barbell fall on my fucking head if I do. So I'm going to have to just, uh, I'm going to have to table that one. I'm going to be honest with you here. Uh, hold on, sorry, chat. Let me, okay. Uh, 
that's the Nigeria one. There we go. From Page Fault. Hey, Jim, have you heard of the National Association of Zionists and Israeli or Israelites Party? I heard they have really nice camps with plenty of bomb fires. Well, now I'm unfamiliar. I'll have to read some pamphlets. From Gordzilla37. I'm here because someone said Google dancing Israelis. Well, there you go. They are fine dancers from what I understand. Ben Thomas, daily reminder, Matt Jarbo is not the father. I think we all knew that just on a gut hunch. From Colton Butler, fighters, keepers, losers, commit suicide weepers. You know, actually, now that I've got Jarbo in my head, you know what our outro song's going to be? I'm going to go find one of those Monday Matt raps. Shit, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll find it, I think. From Afro John, I think we all need to take a page out of Terry Davis' book. If they glow in the dark, shift out of park. From Conspiracy and Comics, Sweetie Squad checking in. Check my comment, Oi Solstice. Tales of Bardic Fury on Indiegogo. Husbandu and waifu bards in ancient Ireland. Hashtag sc scatter CIA to the wind. From Master Plagues, you're my prayers, Jim. Happy Halloween. Oh, happy Halloween to you. From Zuko Yurkerhart, Hollywood Degenerate Stream. Check out uh, the doc er, documentary Open Secret. From Conspiracy and Comics, you want waifus? Check out Solstice on Indiegogo Bro. From Bubby LaFlair, uh, Dylan is a nig. Gertie Dinklin, well, at least this is not lemons. That is very true. Dahlia Spoonge, Rip Boogie 2988. Apparently, Boogie's passed away, everybody. We can get an F in chat for Boogie. Once again, he's passed away. That makes number 984. Man dies all the time. Oh, did somebody find the name of the song I'm looking for? Oh, MC Jarbo. Jarbo the Hut. Okay. Uh, from uh, Thickalo. Happy Halloween, making pizza deliveries and listening to the stream. Excited to have more reasons to hate the glow in the darks. Gabrielle Montreal, uh, what does y Milo Yiannopoulos know about Pizzagate? Well, you know, that's actually a really good question. Gabrielle, uh, I may be the, well, I, I would hope more people would remember this, but I'm going to uh, walk us all down memory lane. Milo Yiannopoulos, and this is, uh, you can find the streams and the comments, I'm sure they're archived. Remember when he was going to do a big presentation on Pizzagate? Uh, he had everybody show up to an event. He was going to do it. And then he walked out of uh, off stage for like 20 minutes and came back and said, I just received a call from uh, Washington. I can't talk about this right now. Big things are happening. And then nothing ever came of that. I'd love to know what, what exactly was that call? What exactly happened there? Now, I'm pretty sure my old man memory isn't failing me. And that really did happen. And if you look into it, you'll you'll find what I'm talking about. From Chem Trail Mix, Happy Halloween, Jimbo. Have you had a chance to look into missing 411 stuff? Truly spooky stuff. It convinced me to avoid all national parks. From Victor Phantasm Boss, what do you think about H3H3 buying a $9 million Edu mansion in Bel Air while begging for lawsuit donations three years ago? See Mamology 101's video for details. Yeah, I do remember him asking for donations for a lawsuit. If he's got $9 million to buy a fucking mansion... What was he asking for money for a fucking lawsuit for? From uh, Brad Sigel, I love sluds, I love rarity, wah, ra, ooh, la, la. From Gertie Dinklin, yep, too many edibles, lost the words. Slimo Jones, juice, juice, take the foreskin and slap a big tragic blood diamond on it uh, to purpose. They're as shady as lampshade and grimier than a bar of soap. Lurgel, hey, Jimco merch, you or make Jimco merch, you shifty-eyed heeb. Dove and death. I'm doing great today, Jim. I was in a jury that found a black man guilty and is going to have to serve a minimum of 11 years. From Dr. Com Conman Kotick, happy Halloween, Jim. I'm currently hiding from the glow in the darks. Pray for me. From No Need Some Milk, hey, Jimbo, happy Halloween. Love your streams and videos. It's my birthday, and two streams in one day is a great gift. Keep what, uh, doing what you're doing. Uh, well, happy birthday. From Jay Wanks, Terry Davis was right. I don't think train accident was really an accident. Maybe onto something. It is a fucking weird story on how he went out, um, and it sucks because Terry was a great guy. From Legato Mati, uh, there's a greater evil in DC. No one wants to talk about Man Bear Pig. Farm Master Flex Excelsior. From Dame Pesos, Ethan Ralph. It's me, Mediker. I love the gunt. Put it in my rear queer. I love Israel and the Jews. I believe in the Holocaust. <laughs> From T or K T T K Ralph, I love your gunt. Lumberjack Cowboy, he's a good old boy from North Carolina like myself. From a Mac 1134, the saddest part is the stuff that, like this is still probably going on and more than likely we'll never know. 
from Felix Culpa. Happy Halloween, Jimbo. Check out 12 Tribes from the FBI Vault on June 25th. It's only 66 pages, but also deals with a cult, only it's religious and not satanic. There's also part of mentions, uh, also part of it mentions Bernie S., Bernie Sanders. You know, maybe maybe I'll do, like, FBI Vault streams. I don't know. I mean, the Finders thing was interesting. 12 Tribes from the FBI Vault, June 25th. Uh, you know what, I'll take a look at it. Mahola Viking, is this where I order a UFO abduction? Uh, no, that will be the David Stay stream I'm doing about aliens on November 15th. From the Mind Corporation, have you ran Temple OS on the Oracle Virtual Box? Uh, no, I have not. I am a filthy heathen. I'm not allowed to use God's operating system. From Joey Jojo Joe, I'm beginning to think demons are real and walk among us. Anyone who harms or abuses children like this deserve to be ripped and torn. Sick world. Black Cube Mystery, this glowy stream is redacted and redacted build. From Russ Daddy, has anyone heard about the Jewish kids that got circumcised by a rabbi and started contracting AIDS after the rabbi sucked the blood off the pee pee? I, you know, I've heard stories like that, uh, but if there's one currently in the news, I'm unfamiliar with it. At least that's what I'm going to say, so I don't get bar belt. Uh, okay, well, I lost, I lost my. Oh, there we are. From Derp Mug Apple Perry, Rip Boogie again, Rip Boogie, you will be missed. From Jim Westberg. Time to add a P to an alphabet soup identity group. Legato Mati. Holy jeez, I just realized. In Fallout New Vegas, Ted Gunderson is the name of the man who lost his son and who was kidnapped uh, by the White Glove Society, who were the upper richest people in the apocalypse. Bethesda is based in D.C. From Super Roxapo, my hips are moving on their own, Oni-chan. Sony, or Sunny69. Kevin Spacey accuser recently dies. Kevin Spacey just uh, case just closed and dismissed. Weird. Oh, well. From Sorted Sent or Sentinel. The Satanism aspect is intended to further control and terrorize the kids. You make a kid cut off a goat's head during a ritual, and now they feel like they're a part of the abusers. Not just an innocent abused kid. Or kid. A woo, Jim. A woo. From the Mind Corporation, ascend out of the political compass. From Killing Munch, the fighters and the cabal practice Satanism because they follow Aleister Crowley and use his child sacrifice. Look for AC in Western cultures. He's venerated all over kosher media, e.g. Al Beatles album cover. From Legato Mati, White Glove in the game ritually ate people while living in the lap of luxury while the world burned. From Bex Fire, what's the name of your guest channel? I want to set, you know, let me grab that for you. Hold on one second. I should have it written down here. Oh, one sec here, guys. Oh, that was John, and it was... We've read the documents. If you want to follow him, uh, it should be We've read the documents on YouTube. And I think he said We've read on Twitter. That one, I, 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 I'm sorry, I can't remember that one specifically, but We've read the documents. Uh, Bubblegum Gun, the anime speed grapher, literally uh, this with Bush from Sexy Legs. Only the slowest of pack get caught. I doubt they released it uh, out of benevolence. It's probably a burn notice to maintain the illusion. From Mighty Pingus, I'm a, uh, I'm an Irish nibba. I grew up in a provincial in Arkansas. I have no idea. I want to, or I have an idea. I want to bounce off of you because you're a fellow potato and I like your style. Do you think there's a backwoods trafficking network in the USA? Uh, backwoods trafficking, as in what? You mean uh, like child networking, or I'm sorry, child trafficking, or like drugs, or uh, just all of it? I, you know, I, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put it past. Uh, intelligence agencies whether they're trying to honeypot something or I, I guess trying to what did he call it uh, brownstone uh, people there's probably something like that from CAD computer TV I was sitting here eating bugs in a good like a good environmentalist when I heard you mention Michael Balden or Michael B uh, Baden the forensic pathologist did you know he had a series on HBO called autopsy it's great viewing from random man Jim you should really check out the uh, de trucks affair. I, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. It will blow your mind knowing how they exposed or how exposed they became and still nothing changed. Yeah, that seems to be a common theory or not a common theory. It seems to be a common thread, doesn't it? That when stuff like this comes out into the public, it, it never goes anywhere. Even if it's just blatant and egregious and in your face and disgusting, it just kind of just disappears. From the mighty Pingus, the Ozarks are quiet, man. And regular people who live here like to drink and watch TV. It could be done without people in the sticks noticing. From Ear Juice, please help find all of Cog's black children. 
there's quite a few to locate. From Commie Catcher 5000, if John is talking about Project Stargate, about his uh, about his rep, look at a possible connections to known Satanist and Project Stargate head Michael Aquino. Got a message from Joanne. Well, no message, but just a donation. Thanks. From Rustna Hating, probably butchered that name too. Absolutely love your videos. This gives me lots of entertainment. Stay awesome and watch out for the glow in the darks. From Victor Phantasm, boss, I'm a creationist Christian. I've had atheists tell me God doesn't exist, evolution is real, and men can be women. Suddenly, I believe they're dumb. From Ear Juice Sticks, groomed a teen and will flag videos with evidence along with cross dressing. See Discord vid version. From Name Name, Epstein, more like Easter Peen, scramble those eggs. Mr. Robert Parker, the most debased society, the most defenseless. Uh, the more debased the society, the more defenseless. Uh, from Star Asp, the greatest trick the devil ever played was convincing everyone he never existed. Filthy casual, quick chat during break, or quick chat during break. Just wanted to pop in and hail Stan. Happy Spoopy Day. Well, happy Spoopy Day to you too. From the Turkish Zoo, the guy lost me when he said this was all to drive people away from the church when the church has the big, or biggest collection of pedophiles in the world. That is very true. Now, there's been quite a few uh, pedophile scandals in the Catholic Church. From in, er, Inix, you're doing God's work, Jim. Soon we will be calling you Pastor Jim. Also, watch out for anything glowing in the dark. Well, I am ready. I've got a flashlight on me. I'm protected. From Wild Burn, but Jimbo, it depends on the child. Victor Phantasm Boss, I love Patch Adams' movie from 98. Now I want to deliver a 9mm subsonic lead vitamin, and very suddenly... From Sweetney Child, does John have anything interesting to say about Dr. Uh, Alfred Kinsey or Dr. John Money? Now, that would have been a great question to ask. From OG, or OJGSXR6, Josh is being groomed by the Sweetie Squad. From um, our Oh My God Huntard, bring back the Inquisition, Officia Assassinarium. From JD, FYI, Jim, the Hippocratic Oath is a myth. No doctor swears to do no harm. As far as they're concerned, they can take their education and go full Mangle, or Mangala. The Packard Goose, Frank Zappa album, Thingfish, covers the government testing stuff like AIDS and chemicals on large homosexual and minority populaces. Check it out. From Ali Ulan, uh, thanks for the content. Been enjoying it the way you tackle these bizarre subjects. Can't stand these other streamers always ranting and trying to sell me hats. I mean, am I right? You are correct, sir. I would never try to sell you a hat. A beautifully handcrafted hat with amazing high quality stitching for a bargain price that you could add a mug to and a t-shirt to and feel like you got a bargain. <coughs> Sorry. Oh my God. I can already feel the cancer taking me, chat. From uh, Turkish Zoo, Boogie was killed by the finders. Rip to Barry and Fiend. Christianity is attacked because it's been or it's seen by the small hats as being white culture. The replacement is real. From Penguin Mustache, your guest is open and admits to being uh, to having a religious bias and is willing to look into info from a secular point, and yet you get people like DeGrasse Tyson who will slander and shove people down based on their beliefs. Good gravy. From Nightmare, hey Medicare from Australia, just tuned in after my nutrition exam. I'm a big fan of your internet and sanity videos. Hope you're having a good one, mate. Uh, well, I am. Uh, back at you. From Dishwasher, it's okay, you can cry. Well, thank you for permission. From Metacore's Lunicorn Archives, nothing's too dirty for the spooks. Uh, think of just about any atrocity you can possibly imagine, and they've done it hundreds, even thousands of times. From Fishman5678, on this Hollow's Eve, I invite Chat to say a special silent prayer for Terry Davis. The hell that he lived was a warning, and we did not listen. From 9-11 was the coolest thing ever. This whole glow-in-the-dark stuff is just like Halo where John is abducted by the government, forced to be a child soldier, and goes through experiments. <laughs> From the Knicker Man. Hey, Jim, I just found out that the chick who I've been sleeping with is super liberal and is majoring in journalism. Should I be concerned, Jimbo? Well, you should be concerned she's going to write an article on you when she finds out you're a conservative. Oh, she's probably going to say, my boyfriend the conservative tricked me into having sex. Oh, you're done. <laughs> you're done. You put a dress on and just pretend you're a woman. She'll leave you alone. From Lumberjack, they probably employ psychopaths and crazies specifically for these reprehensible actions because they don't have a conscience or have uh, devils whispering in their ear already. 
from Mifa Supreme. Hashtag Alex Jones was right from Alec Majorson. So the communist computer god is real, isn't it? It seems like that. Spider Cat greetings, Jimothy. I just got my power back yesterday. Northern California is the best California. Screw PG&E and Comcast. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. They cut your power off like they did. If I was a paying customer, I'd be furious. From Spud Nux, Smooth Jazz giving me some noir vibes. Investigator Jim needs some cool artwork. Keep up the great streams. And I think we are we are almost caught up here. Uh, yep, just a few more to go. From Scoop, good stream. I'll light up a camel red and wait for BlizzCon to brighten up the week. That is right. If you're feeling depressed right now, chat, uh, take solace in the fact that starting tomorrow, BlizzCon begins. And hopefully a bunch of Winnie the Pooh show up. God, that would be great. That would brighten the mood, wouldn't it? From Joseph Jimenez, there is no escape from this worst gangster police state. Using all the deadly gangster Frankenstein controls in 19... <laughs> In 1965, CIA gangster police beat me bloody, dragged me in chains from Kennedy, New York airport. From Pro Truth Anti Media Archive, Jim, I wanted you to know I've uploaded my Caleb Kane Part 2 Halloween special on here because uh, I knew you were looking forward to it a lot. Hope you enjoy. From uh, Fasted State, uh, time we started bombing intelligence agencies' buildings in Minecraft. Plantation Sensation. If you try to super chat a promotion for We Read the Documents, it tells you to edit it and try again. Really? From Lurik L, Sherlock Holmes director said the bad guy is Crowley. From Jessica Eustace, check out Operation Northwood. Say I were trying to commit terrorist attacks against America and blame Cuba to support the war. Can't trust those spooks. Well, it seems like after everything we've read today, you're probably right. We can't. And finally, from Mike Testa. Happy Halloween Spooky Day, Jimbo. Fuck these monsters. Also, when are we getting some good games and not pseudo games that are like mini movies? I think those days are done. I don't know when we're getting good games again. Sadly, I, I, I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And from Clout God DD, Jim, please stop smoking. I need you to live out Clown World until the end. Big love from Florida. Oh, no, I've got to. <laughs> uh, oh, it's too late for me, buddy. You don't come back from smoking as long as I have. <laughs> I could be living healthy tomorrow and I'm a dead man. But you can keep me and your your memories in your heart. Oh, that'll be good. Just keep them buried in there. Remember, remember Jimbo. Oh, we've got one last one here. Mike Testa. Also, could you upload Photon Warrior rips, please? Well, I couldn't do that because that would be violating copyright. But maybe somebody will. Wink, wink. All right, chat. Well, I, I, I hope you've enjoyed this informative stream. We've covered the finders now in both parts. We've gone over the FBI report. We've talked to somebody who definitely had some insights into it, talked to some people involved in it, and has definitely researched more than I have on the subject of it. Uh, it's one hell of a spooky stream, a little depressing, but you've got BlizzCon to look forward to tomorrow, and who knows what the rest of the week will bring you. So, you know, let's let's God, let's go out with something positive, Jesus. Was it, uh, what is it, chat? MC Jarbo? Is that what I'm looking for? MC, you know, we're going to leave this off with MC Jarbo, the hot hit from Jarbo the Hut. I'll be honest, featuring, oh no, I'm sorry, uh, My Girlfriend's Daughter. That's the one we're going to go. Fuck, what do I want? I'll be honest or My Girlfriend's Daughter? You know what, I'm going to go with uh, My, I'll be honest, because I, I was liking that one. Have something that'll really